Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who has watched so many seasons of Survivor this year that he's basically a badass. I am Rob Sister. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our top 40 season countdown. Tonight, we talk about the 16th best season of all time. That is Survivor San Juan del Sur. And we could not stick to the plan. We are in turbo mode right now as we are covering a couple of seasons over these uh, next couple of weeks as uh, we get ready for Big Brother coming up in the first week of July. So here we are tonight on a Monday night. We'll talk about the 15th best season on Saturday of this week and then the 14th season next Wednesday night. So we are getting through a bunch of seasons in a short amount of time. But very excited to talk about San Juan del Sur with an amazing panel back with us. It's been a minute since we talked about the 39th best season of Survivor, <laughs> Survivor Thailand. The woman who has been taking over Instagram, our HAP Instagram all day today. Here is Sasha Joseph. Sasha, how are you? Hi everyone. Oh, I'm so happy. I am Why so are you so happy? Because I this is the best season. First of all, I'm mad that y'all voted it so low. So not that. I'm not happy about that, but I'm so happy that I get to talk about it and talk about this amazing, amazing winner. A woman that looks like me. It's crazy. And I love it. And I'm still mad that it's 16. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna talk about all things. San Juan del Sur tonight. Very happy to have uh, Sasha back here with us and making his debut in the top 40 countdown. Very excited to have with us tonight, Josh Williams. Josh, how are you? Hello, everybody. I'm doing a wonderful. I just like Sasha. I am so mad that it's ranked this low. Let's be real. San Juan del Sur, you guys, is the best season. SJDS. Best, I stand for it. Best mm -hmm. season. Number one. Absolutely. No, this is a, this season has brought me back to my old days. Um, and because of it, I'm glad I get to talk about it okay, and well, rant on Twitter. <laughs> all right. Well, we got a lot to talk about here tonight. Uh, this is a season that I always look back at fondly. This was a very fun season in the real time on the podcast. Uh, I think that 2014 is the best year of Survivor that there was as far as the podcast was concerned between Cagillan and San Juan del Sur back to back so very excited to get into san juan del sur with you here tonight on the podcast but we're just getting the conversation started tonight uh we will get into uh more of your feedback questions this weekend on our patron feedback show that we do every single week we talk with the patrons about we get so many feedback questions every week we get to some of them here tonight but sometimes uh we're a little gassed at the end of a three hour four hour uh, sometimes five hour conversation so we get to a lot of your feedback questions and then have any reactions to the podcast on our patron podcast feed that we do for rob's the podcast this weekend sophie hovis and george wise are going to join us on the patron feedback show uh this friday at four eastern of course you can listen to that in our patron podcast feed with that and much more at rob is a website.com slash patron okay josh uh you said number one season. Uh, that yeah. tell us about your origin story with San Juan del Sur. Why why so high on uh, season twenty nine? So I was a uh, fifteen when San Juan del Sur first aired on uh, on television, and I was coming from like being a Big Brother fan and being a, a, a brand new rap fan. Actually, I I kind of like subscribed to you, Rob, watching your podcast as you uh, recapped Big Brother fifteen. You were the only highlight of that season for me. Yeah, <laughs> so thank you. right after that season ended, I actually had got a video that said that uh, you're covering Sur Survivor. And I said, I want to join you on this watch. And I watched the season and was very upset <laughs> about the first two weeks of this uh, this show. But I kept going on because it was just something that was very captivating. I really did like Jeremy as a person. And I liked the duo that Jeremy and Nadia, uh, uh, Natalie was. Sorry. <laughs> and then after seeing her win, it kind of like really put everything together, especially since Big Brother 15 was a very, uh, very different season. And Survivor kind of did everything that Big Brother should have done. And honestly, just seeing uh, somebody of like a darker skin color win was very exciting. And it got me into Survivor. I started watching every single season of since Survivor, uh, since that one to Camboa, uh, Cambodia, Camboa. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time pronouncing but was Jer Jeremy ended up winning that season too? It yeah. just was like a whirlwind of like, I love Survivor. 
Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it is always fun to go back and watch this because uh, then you have Jeremy coming back and playing again uh, so quickly. Uh, two seasons later, we still have not gotten to Survivor Cambodia on the countdown yet. So we will see Jeremy again on the countdown. Jeremy making his uh, debut in the countdown here at number 16. Sasha, uh, you mentioned uh, you love Natalie Anderson. Had you been following Natalie on The Amazing Race with Nadia? Oh, you know I have. The Amazing Race is my like number one show, or at least it's like my the my favorite show. So I saw the twenties and I was like, I'm loving them. And then all of a sudden I see that they're in a cast. So you know I'm watching. And I think this is about when I started also watching Survivor, um, because I was watching Big Brother and Amazing Race before, but this was like my in. And then I was like, South Asians, they have accents. What? Like uh, for people that don't know, I'm Indian, they're Sri Lankan, but you know, we sound pretty similar. Uh, I assimilated because I grew up in Oklahoma, but you know, it was just so beautiful to hear someone, you know, with an accent, but that, you know, was brown and that had all these like beautiful story and just like dominate. I am definitely one that likes to see domination. I am not into the underdog story. Mm -hmm. So I loved it overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say, though, that this is an underdog story where that Natalie comes from all the way back after Jeremy gets blindsided? Yes and no, right? I think she's so brilliant that, like, I don't know that she ever let herself get there. Maybe you're right in that her circumstances, right? Like, Nadia is out and then everyone else is together. Then Jeremy is, you know, out after that. So I can really see those moments, but she is so smart and was able to just always position her. She's never got voted. Like, the only time people wrote down her name is to give her the check. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> why I feel like she's not an underdog in that way. Yeah. I don't know. It's such an interesting and unique season in that Natalie just goes on this revenge tour. And I'm trying to think of another season where the winner really takes this path to get to the end. Like there are other seasons where you have like um Survivor Guatemala or Survivor Vanuatu, where the you know there's one person that's sort of like left for dead from the alliance and they end up persevering. But you know, she ends up where that her closest ally basically like her adopted loved one in the game and Jeremy that, you know, both she and Jeremy have their loved ones taken out back to back and they sort of become each that for each other. That's their pair. And then when Jeremy gets taken out, she just goes on. Okay. I, I hate these people. I'm going <laughs> to get them back. Yeah. And they're, I'm, but I'm not going to do it yet. Like I have to like pull them into my web and then we go on this journey, this revenge tour with her for the back half of the season. Amen. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. I don't think there's another season that's like this. Absolutely. Natalie literally played uh, the underdog story, but like the, the savage underdog. Like she was not getting attacked. All her people fell amongst her. And all she had to do was slay, like a queen she was. And she is slayed that she did. She did it with a smile. And I think that was the most exciting part about this. Like you saw her, she lost somebody in the beginning of the game and then lose somebody again. During the merge, it was almost as if she kept taking blows, but it never really affected her, especially since she had no votes against her the entire Sasha, game. Going through this season, that uh, watching it, um, I feel like that, you know, Natalie, we don't see a ton of her in the first half of the season, but we see so much Jeremy. And it's almost like I feel like that in a lot of ways, like this season, I feel like was like a relay race where we're with Jeremy through the first half of the season until he gets taken out and then like the baton is passed to Natalie and then she brings home the second half of the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I very much agree because I also thought about this, right? Like the first two people that got voted out were Jeremy and Natalie's loved ones. Yes. And then does that equal, you know, them just being such great characters because they actually just didn't have anyone on the other side that they needed to worry about. So they're like, let me do whatever I want. And then the fact that they're both now winners also, I think yeah. it's just, I know it's like a happy coincidence at that time, but wow, right? Like what yeah. a coincidence. And like Survivor probably knew that they had something good here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's a wild season, very colorful characters uh, <laughs> all along the way here in uh, San Juan del Sur. And 
it's not necessarily, I would say, the season of the highest caliber of players. I think that because of the way that they recruited the season, Josh, to get these loved ones, they had to find pairs of people. And I think in some ways, I think that they might have sold out on casting for looking for, oh, these are interesting pairs as opposed to these are the people who really know the game of Survivor. Yes, it could, you can tell that they definitely picked people who watch Survivor and then they needed their loved one in the game as well. And I think that just adds to the, the level of messiness that this season was because you had these people who were very much like into Survivor as a strategy game, but working with people who did not know much about Survivor at all. And it was almost like you, it had an extra level of um like strategy for these players because you're working with, what's harder, it's like Jeremy said, he said it in one of the quotes, he said, it, what's hard about this game is that I'm working with people who don't know it. And I'd rather play with a bunch of me than a bunch of, uh, of Keats. Keats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it ended up making it, it just added more to this game as um like, you know, even though this is not like necessarily the highest level of like gameplay and sorts, it still is a very strategic, like it's a very hard game to play. Um, thinking about it, that these who know about Survivor have to work against, like, uh, uh, work around people who don't really know much about the game at all. Yeah, I, Sasha, I don't think it's as bad as Gabon, where we've talked about like, uh, is there a top fifty player on the season? But <laughs> I think that there's like some top heaviness certainly to this cast, where there's like uh, probably like five or six people who are really good players, and there's a lot of people that are just sort of uh, that, uh, as Natalie says uh, in. One of the, the episodes, uh, actually, is, is it Naughty in the first episode? It says uh, that we're a hot mess. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they both say it all the time. So, yeah, that's very mm -hmm. much there. Like, even in The Amazing Race, they used to say that a lot. Like, this is a hot mess or we're a hot mess. And then, like, this is bloody hard. But, yeah. no, I very much agree. And I wonder, is that why, you know, that's this is Josh and my, like, favorite season? Because yeah. this is why we like Big Brother, right? Like, these are the yes. characteristics that we want in Big Brother other that we're like we want people that play the game but we want people that are going to play hard and they're you know going to be messy and i think finally it transferred over to survivor which yep. is why i think it's a perfect because there there are people that know the game don't get me wrong but the messiness is it for me yeah absolutely yeah it is a very messy season especially the the pre-merge also i mean you have uh two pretty dysfunctional tribes in uh Hunapu and Koyopa. And we spend a lot of time with Koyopa in the beginning of the season and they're a disaster. But Hunapu, <laughs> for the tribe that is being very dominant, uh, they're also like making a ton of mistakes between uh, making all these deals with Jeff Probst that they lost the flint and they want to trade the flint back. They end up, uh, because they're eating so much rice, uh, they need to trade their car for their, their, and all the rewards uh, back to Jeff. Uh, Josh, how many uh, different times did, was Jeff involved in transactions for the tribes? Yeah. It's unheard of. It was um, it's a survivor or the survivor market. I don't. <laughs> that was another one of these quotes here. Survivor yeah. auction. This, honestly, you guys, I was saying to myself, like neither of these tribes are winning <laughs> at all. Like they're both going through their own battles and their own troubles, and you can just see Jeff is coming, especially after Kageon. He just saying to himself, like, "Wow, <laughs> this is going to be a hard season to edit." Um, <laughs> But I, I just thought it was so. I, I knew he was having fun with this cast, just because he's sitting there like, "Wow, they're really, they're really deciding to do this." I'm getting so many first times ever with this season, and I, I just, I loved it. I, I it was kind of nice because you know, usually you see a, a season where like one side is dominating the entire time. You're usually rooting against them, but even, I was rooting for them sometimes. Be like, I think they need some food, man. They look hungry. <laughs> Can Jeff please feed them? I'm like rooting. I'm looking at. I'm watching this right now live, y'all. Saying to myself like, Oh no, are they going to get the food? Is Jeff going to laugh at them? <laughs> what is what he's going to yeah. do? It was it was a mess. Well, you had the one tribe in Hunapu where they just like ate all their rice. Like nobody's <laughs> ever done this before. Where it's like, all right, we're here. We're just going to eat all the rice. Uh, and then they were like better in the challenges. Uh, but and it comes up quite a bit with Missy, especially when she swaps where uh, they're like, wait, you, you can't cook all the rice. Uh, they went through like the entire rice in 10 days, Sasha. 
Yeah. The, again, hilarious because I will say I personally felt like whenever we went to Hunapu, they were always better to watch. Like I was like, this is a fun, silly, hot mess situation. Whereas at Koyopa, I was like, oh my God, get them off my TV. You yeah. know? And I don't know. Again, Wendell said it best, right? Like orange is not a good, like it's just, it's bad luck. And I felt like the better half, no shade to anyone, but we're on uh, Hunapu. Sorry. I keep calling. Like mm-hmm. merging them together. Um, and yeah, so that's why I feel like well, that was again, the merge tribe. Yeah. 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 And that's why I keep doing that because I was on <laughs> with Mike and Shannon. But either way, I think that they shouldn't. Jeremy was right. They did not need to trade anything because I because I made a special note that after they traded it, they got they won the reward. And then I think they got, the merge was like basically right after. So they took it now. Like they should yeah. not be doing bartering this much. Yeah. It, it, you know. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, was, I was just gonna say it was very entertaining just seeing like the the division of that tribe because you would think that they were like they're dominating that they were just gonna be these cocky people who had gave us born TV. No, they were a mess there, <laughs> a very huge mess, and it just goes back to what they said, hot mess. Yeah, you know, Jeff says to the, everybody at the start of the game, okay, grab a buff, that's your tribe. But do we think that this was random? Um. I I'd assume wait was it because they were split already by pairs. Yeah, I mean it was you know one person from each pair on each team. It works out there are five men on the initial uh Koyopa and four men on Hunapu and uh and, and five women. But I don't know necessarily if the producers uh just had you know pick one or like they make it seem like it's some sort of a random draw but Sasha I can't imagine that it was no there's absolutely no way like I said I think they were pretty smart in saying like these are the people that we kind of need to pair together personality types because a John Rocker with a Jeremy together which I know like technically they work together sure not but Mm -hmm. you know I don't know that they would really work well together versus like a Josh and John Rocker. Like, I think that's a better story I can spin, right? To be mm-hmm. like, look, John Rocker with a gay man, you know, whatever. Well, here's the thing. It would have been John Rocker with Reed. So yeah, yeah exactly. Guess, yeah. Either way, either way. Um, but yeah, so in, in interesting tribes that I do think that, you know, you get um, more of the colorful personalities over on Hunapu. Um, mm-hmm. This is uh, a return of the blood versus water format, which we talked about last week when we talked about on Survivor Co. Wrong that brains versus brawn versus beauty works so good. We had to, we got to get right back to it. Uh, if it worked, we got to do it again. <laughs> uh, they loved the initial Survivor blood versus water, and I guess they said, okay, what if we did it with new people? Okay, a year later, we went from season twenty seven to season twenty nine. We haven't talked about the original Blood versus Water yet; still like, upcoming on the countdown. But we go back to it, Josh. We have not done a Blood versus Water since. That uh, do you think the format worked with new players? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm on the side of saying like Blood versus Water is like a very hard twist. It's so yeah. difficult to think that. Every not on, you're not the only one who has a person that they ultimately trust, and I think that's just such a hard game to maneuver because even during the merge, you can't like everything's going to be fluid no matter what. Like if me and Sasha are best friends, but our loved ones hate each other, <laughs> what are we going to do? Especially when mm-hmm. we go on that other side. So I think it just keeps everything fresh, and I think you could always do a blood versus water season, especially if you have fun characters like this, and it will give you a different outcome every every time so yeah i liked it sasha i know you love the season so i think i know how you're going to answer the question <laughs> so but uh let me ask it in a little bit of a different way why do you think that survivor hasn't gone back to a blood versus water season since this i think it's because of the gameplay right where i think they like you said at the start they sacrificed maybe like st- strategic players over characters or maybe making sure you know to secure a few characters and I also think that it's really hard to find people that are willing to do this with their loved one you know and go this hard like I don't know like does lightning strike a third time Mm -hmm. yeah I don't know Um, but they love the format so much I'm surprised that they haven't tried to go back to the well of all stars coming back in and Ooh. doing it. Now, 
they yeah. have in this season a little bit of a different wrinkle than the original blood versus water in blood versus water the first time around season 27 that we have our redemption island and then we have our redemption island duel famously jeff probst had a conversation with a uh, future survivor player mike white before the season and told him about what they were doing and the story is anecdotally jeff probst says he saw a look of disappointment on mike white's face and that he knew they should not do uh redemption island so instead they had the uh the duel basically the arena <laughs> of yeah. the blood versus water arena and then you would play for a reward in the hero challenge and then send your loved one to exile island josh as a twist uh how did this work for you on this rewatch well, it definitely did not work in uh, Koyopa's uh, favor, but in general, I think I don't necessarily like that twist. Um, mainly because, like, say you're a pair where obviously one is just one side is just a, a little bit more stronger and like physical challenge than the other side. It's you can obviously tell who's probably going to win, and that kind of happened a lot with uh uh this season. So I don't know if that truly worked out in my uh worked out in the favor that you would think it would. Maybe if these uh, pairs were all twins, it could have. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. yeah. Julie beat John Rocker though yeah. so yeah. I feel oh. like it's possible you never know and I will say because I'm a challenge fan this was not new to me where I was like oh I've seen this before where two people go down and then the person that you know loses um, will end up you know either out usually they're out they don't come back or they don't they get to go to exile uh here but you know in the challenge it's usually that's the elimination is like you mm -hmm. go down to the arena so that's why i i like that i thought it was cute but i agree i i think i like tribe uh reward challenges better yeah i don't even know like the best one of the ones from the season it might be jeremy versus val in the first episode <laughs> and you know there is like some like emotional stakes where it's like boy like uh what's jeremy gonna do is he gonna does he try to win and then send like he, i guess he wants to impress the tribe but does he want to send val to exile island i mean that that's uh i guess like a tough position to put mm -hmm. people in but i feel like that overall um i i found those uh competitions to be uh pr pretty boring yeah yeah, like I said, unless Julie was beating John Rocker every time, like that would have been really fun to watch. But outside of that, I don't know that it it's mm -hmm. worth watching or doing. Yeah. And Exile Island plays uh, a bit of a role in the pre-merge in terms of like making some bonds. And then certainly at the beginning of the pre-merge, uh, it adds a lot to the uh, Jeremy John Mish feud. But then in the back half of the season, they don't even really show that much of what's going on on Exile Island. Yeah. <laughs> So they yeah. sort of yada yada it. Yeah. Exile's Island was so, mm -hmm. it was so like in the background that I even forgot about it. I'm like, where are they going again? <laughs> oh, yeah. Ex Exile. And I wish they had more idols in Exile, at least to keep them, um, keep the camera on these players more. But mm -hmm. yeah, it just, it kind of lost, lost his burn after a while. Yeah, it very much was detention, I feel like. And <laughs> maybe you'll find something nice in detention, but that's kind of it. Like, what would it look like if we were doing a normal reward challenge, your tribe, you know, pick someone from the other tribe to go to exile when you win, um, like Survivor South Africa, I guess. But either way, someone gets picked to go to exile and then their loved one has to go with them. So it's actually you're struggling, but then you get to be together. Like, does that add some fun incentives there? Interesting. Mm. And then um, you could both look for the... Uh, like, I just don't know if we would have, like, uh, get the strategy out right. of it. Like, I feel like that, Very you know, true. um, with the John, you mentioned John Rocker and Jeremy. And while, like, you wouldn't feel like that they would work together, like, they did, mm -hmm. they did make an arrangement. And, like, it ends up sort of being like a comedy of errors where then it doesn't work out, where Jeremy and John end up agreeing to make this deal to protect Val. And so, Jeremy feels like, okay, great. You know, this is like the kind of things that happen in this season where, you know, that's just like uh, these players make plans and they don't go as expected. And then he's like, okay, sure. I'll look out for, for your wife and you look out for my girlfriend. Great. And so that Val, meanwhile, he, what uh, Jeremy doesn't know is that she has uh, not found the idol and bluffed that she did have the idol. So John Rocker is like, hey, you know, play your idol tonight. Uh, and he's also like trying to get the votes on Baylor. Meanwhile, 
that uh, Josh is switching the votes around because he sees him, uh, sees John Rocker talking to Val, and he doesn't like that. So, I mean, John Rocker really did try to do right by Jeremy, and it just so happened that circumstances end up with it not working out. And then that really sets Jeremy off that he feels like that John Rocker has betrayed him. And then he goes and drags John Rocker back at his camp, which ultimately ends up leading to then that whole confrontation that happens that gets John Rocker voted out of the game. Mm. Yeah. So that, like I said, th maybe yeah, those are the reasons that we have Exile Island. But like I said, if this huge thing is it like it's very much like I don't know how many times this particular comedy of errors can be repeated yeah. right yeah so that's why i don't think exile island was as fun because i think that moment and then everything that led you know after that moment was perfect tv and probably exactly what they wanted from exile island but that was episode two right and then that or yeah two and then that's kind of it i don't know that there were so many other moments at exile island that i can even pinpoint besides yeah. that one no not many uh along the way uh, it's also a really weird season, Josh, in terms of that. Something else that Jeremy does is mm -hmm. that he gets the ball rolling in the post merge game of he gives up his reward to John. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and he and he says, uh, OK, well, I'm going to let John uh, take my reward. And uh, after the Josh vote uh, and then Natalie follows suit and she gives up her reward to Jacqueline and, and stop me if I have it backwards where uh, if it was. Yeah, uh, I think it's backwards. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the, other, the other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so uh, that this is something that happens in this season. Jeff's like, OK, sure, I'll allow it. And it happens all season long. And it's the only season where this happens like every single round. It, it's bizarre. I think what happened was they did that and the cast was so amazed, like, uh, half of the cast was so amazed. They're like, oh my God, they're giving up food because probably these cats were like recruits. So they're not thinking of survivor strategy wise. They're just thinking food, food, food. While the other half was like, oh, they think they could get away with this. <laughs> they think they could get these jury points. So I'm going to do it as well. And I feel like that had a lot of the dynamics because they didn't redo this with, um, with, uh, Missy. Missy. And don't they do not like, they don't like each other. So I'm very, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's where, yeah. That's where like that pair was great, right? Reed and um, Reed and Josh were great because they were both players and they both really cared about Survivor. So they mm -hmm. immediately sussed it out and was like, absolutely not. Get the hell out of here. But yeah. the others like loved it. And I will say, I don't know that it carried as much weight, even though it happened like every day at that point. But it didn't carry as yeah. much weight as the first time it happened. Yeah, so absolutely. lucky Natalie again. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm glad that you brought up uh, Josh and Reed because I was, uh, you know, really like uh, something hit me as we were watching this season back. And I think that Reed got really screwed over in this season oh. on a number of occasions that Reed, I, I think, like could have won the game. And there were several things that happened to him that were no fault of his own <laughs> that like completely tanked his game and yeah. for for josh and reed starting with that at the merge jeremy is about to be voted out jeremy is about to be the merge vote and then julie quits the game and tribal council is canceled and sasha that's the they, they call that the episode the million dollar vote and it might <laughs> be jeremy's million dollars because i think if jeremy's the merge vote like i'm not 100 percent sure he comes back in survivor second chance no, wow. I like, yeah, that one extra episode solidified so much nice. for him that yeah. I think he's so also, I wonder if Josh was not never at the merge. Does Reed actually make it farther as well? Because Reed was actually in with all these people. Um, at mm -hmm. um, Hunapu, right? And then he kind of had to be like, okay, my, like my loved one doesn't like them. So like, I kind of have to pick a side because I feel like Reed would have maybe made it far and Wes, um, Wes and Alec, I think would have gone sooner. Mm -hmm. Very true. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think Reed and Josh were, and specifically Reed, honestly, were like very good players and yeah. it was almost like fun watching them too i was having a hard time rooting against <laughs> rooting against them um usually i pick like one person to watch and then watch from their perspective and then hate everybody else but <laughs> um reed was like such a fun character especially because you know his brain was like moving 100 miles per hour 
but they kept focusing on Josh. And yes. it was kind of nice yes. how he was just like you could tell Reed definitely had a lot, especially with um, um when the tribe was uh when hold when they both got on the tribe together together and they were kind of running it. And once uh Josh left, Reed never stopped and you saw things that could have worked for him if uh, everything else was working for him. Yeah, I think we get a lot more Josh than we get Reed. And I felt like, uh, especially in this rewatch, I felt like that Josh might be like a little overrated. There's some of the things that he does, like especially like uh, with Baylor and then like uh, basically like uh, be like really like strong arming Baylor at certain points of like, hey, you owe me. Uh, you uh, like I, I protected you. You have to like you owe me one. You have to like that. that that's not great survivor play but reed mm -hmm. i really thought um between so he gets uh, screwed over with the with the julie quit okay then after that then josh gets voted out the next vote uh he picks himself up off the mat and then is a really key cog in getting jeremy uh voted off and he ends up being the fifth vote he votes with uh john and jacqueline and Missy and Baylor to get uh, Jeremy voted off there in that spot, which is a, a really great job by him after Josh gets voted out. But then the next vote, he almost had it. He then is going to get John and Jacqueline and Missy and Baylor. They want it. He's saying, oh, let's put three votes on i think it's three votes on keith and three yeah. votes on wes uh and then because he's because he went through uh keith's bag to have the idol but then meanwhile he goes back to alec and wes and, and keith and it's like okay actually they're gonna split the vote we're gonna put our our four votes on john to take john out of the game and if not for keith nail dropping a I say we stick to the plan at tribal council. Josh would have pulled off the exact same move that Tony Vlachos pulled off in winners at war, a four, three, two, which would have taken John Mish out of the game. And it would have been like what Tony did it with. Oh my God, but all time great move. And Reed is doing the same exact thing here. And Josh Keith nail blows it. When I said I was so mad, because I'm like watching the season live again. I don't know why I, I'm, I'm watching, even though I know everything that's happening. I'm still watching. They're like, dang, did he really just ruin it, ruin this for them? And uh, I'm seeing Reed's face and him just like, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do. And I feel bad for Reed. Like, I think he really, where, where Reed really messed up, I feel, was he, he kind of picked up where Josh left off at. Yes. And instead, if he just had decided to go his own route, we could have saw a completely different outcome, I think, because he seemed like a character that not wasn't that as long as he stayed into this game, things were going to be changing and moving. And I feel like uh, the minute that this all happened, you could see him trying to fix it right then and there, but he couldn't. He had no idea what to do. And I don't know. If and he's like his. Look at who his allies were. Like Alec literally gets the poor guy, gets a dodo edit, right? Like mm -hmm. every, how many times have we seen now his face at tribal? Oh my um, God. You know, so it's just, it's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, And for those listening, Rob just did the Alec face. <laughs> but, the Alec, but, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, you know, there yes. you go. <laughs> yeah. That's not even that, that that's bad. That's not the even the Josh. worst. Yeah. I posted it on RHAP's Instagram. You should follow. Yes. Um, but honestly, yeah. And and I also will say, Rob, um, that I think the edit is actually a little messy because Reed is, I think, the one working a little bit harder and smarter. And then Jacqueline is working much smarter than I feel like John is. But mm -hmm. John is still getting majority of the edit as well until I think – midway merge and then i really think it switches to jacqueline and john is kind of yes. given the like he a fool edit well can i add one more thing that reed you know and then so yes. reed then as so a stick to the plan now reed is complete like uh natalie tells john mish to play his idol and that whole plan goes up west nail goes out and so now it's basically reed has been exposed that's it for him but somehow he gets left back at camp with 
Jacqueline and Alec and Keith Nail, and he works his way back in. He wins Jacqueline over and says, can't you see Missy and Baylor and Natalie are going to the final three? She's like, oh my God. All right. That's it. You're right, Reed. I'm going to, uh, that let me, let me just talk to John and we're good. And then John and Jacqueline get into a fight and yeah. they're not talking to each other. And then Reed is like, hey, so he's like, well, it, my girlfriend's not talking to me. So I didn't know if I was watching Survivor or if I was watching um, uh, Love Island. Like, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what show I was watching at that point because you can tell Reed is like, am I in the right television series? Like, this is just um, a mess right now. He literally said to Jacqueline, he says, "Your uh, this fight that you guys are having is going to cost me a million dollars. I hear you, but I wish you could tell John that. He's the one I'm yeah, talking to. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry, but, you know, my boyfriend is not being very nice right now. So <laughs> it's funny because. Because I have definitely been in those moments with my husband where like it's crucial moment and I'm just yeah. pissed and I'm not talking and I'm just mm -hmm. being very irritating. So that's why I was I couldn't stop laughing because I was like, I feel yeah. like I would do this stupidity. I think I would do it. Same. But maybe not. But I don't know. I feel like I'm petty. So I would. And especially if I'm not in trouble, I'd be like, I don't care. Reed's gone. Whatever. Screw it. <laughs> <laughs> I would, man, I was looking at this saying like, man, I gotta stop getting in fights over the my relationship right now. A lot of things are very stupid, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Take a lot of in, advice from John. In hindsight, in hindsight, <laughs> uh, I, I will also just a programming note. Uh, coming up this week on Rob's podcast, we're gonna have a special uh, talking with T Bird as uh, we have tracked down. Uh, T Bird has been working on. The Nail Males will join us. Uh, Keith and Wes, uh, Deep Bird has tracked them down. And we're going to hear what they have to say. Uh, see what's been going on since Survivor San Juan del Sur. So be on the lookout for that later on this week. That should be a lot of fun uh, to catch up with uh, Keith and Wes. Oh, I love, love that. that. That's a great get because the, I feel like those two and Reed are like who I feel like Reed needs to come back for Survivor. I really mm. feel that way. Okay. Agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and also, just to add to that, Keith and Wes, what a pair. I don't know which one they picked that actually applied for Survivor. I think Wes applied. I think Wes. Yeah. Is, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I assume it. It's just they both were very, like, just characters in general. And you would have thought Wes would have been, like, the the funny character that they made. But then they had his father there, who was just even more of a huge character. And I think uh, just having those two uh, very country guys just sit there and really make really mess up a lot of these games. <laughs> <These strategies. laughs> really just put a, a fork in their plan and see like, how do you guys play the Survivor with us on the island? <laughs> oh, yeah, they were like the production like plan. That was the actual twist. Like, how do you work around the nail mail? <laughs> but and also, I forgot to say this, but apparently when I was watching this, Jacqueline actually said stick to the plan a few episodes ago. So I'm wondering, again, our friend Keith has is learning, you know, building the plane as we're flying it. And I'm wondering if he's like, I heard this before. Like, this is something mm -hmm. people say because when I heard Jacqueline say it, I was like, oh, my God, why did you say that? But no one clocked it. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Keith says it and everyone clocks it. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah, that's what you say, right? That's just what you say to everybody. <laughs> Poor Keith. Oh, oh my God, he's so sweet. Like I just, I can't. Yeah, Keith seems like such a sweet guy. He yeah. really does. I'm glad he made it as far as he did. I hope he goes to spa days all the time. Yeah, now. We'll you find have out. to ask. Yeah, yeah. please. We'll Keep find out. We'll, we'll, yeah, that I don't think we've talked to him since uh, the second chances uh, lead up uh, to second chances. So uh, that'll be fun to catch up with Keith now later on wow. this week all right let's go back to the start of the season and start to uh talk our way through everything that happened in the season and sasha this is a season that doesn't start on day one the season that starts on day <laughs> zero. zero and they really spend a lot of time in the season where in survivor blood versus water we didn't uh, i don't think we spent so much time on the setup and i have to we again i haven't rewatched really that season but i we spent a lot of time here because uh, we have to meet both partners in this pair and sort of understand what their dynamic is yeah we have nine pairs right of loved ones on a beach trying to figure out how to make fire and again do yeah. like 
I don't even think Survivor realized like what this for day zero was going to be. Two of these fools lose their flint and they're firemen. I think they How, bro- yeah, they oh, broke, broke. Yeah, they, they, lo- they lost the striker <laughs> and they broke yeah, the Yeah, lost the striker. Yeah. Would you have thought, you know, like people that you would bet your money to do this to twinnies maybe because they fight so much. Like if anyone watched the amazing race, like they really got in their own way. But oh my God. So that's why I don't think I wonder rather I should say if Survivor meant for this to be such a big part of it. But then we're they did a good job casting and they're just fumbling and bumbling starting day zero. So why not show that? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Josh, uh, did anything jump out from the pair's introductions? Definitely just, uh, I, I, Julie and John from afar, I knew I was yes. not going to like them. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. But more like, I just knew that even, they were the pair that I thought was like going to probably be the ones I was going to forget the most. But even them, to in a, an aspect, I kind of um, ended up en- not enjoying, but noticing them throughout the season. And another pair, Alec and, um, Alec and his brother Drew. Yeah. I just can't. I cannot stand them. And I'm glad they lived up to what I cannot stand. So that works. He cut his hair to make fire. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I can't remember which. I'm assuming it's Alec that cut his hair. I doubt Drew would do that. They're very um, birth order. So mm-hmm. he Drew probably would like, Alec, cut your hair. Like, we, we need the fine, like, yeah. trance <laughs> to make the fire. Sasha, what do you think that Drew and Alec Christie are up to these days? I feel like very no collar life, you know, as the mm-hmm. next season, but no collar, you know, living their best surfing life, like in because they're in Florida, right? Yeah. I yeah. Believe, yeah, because Alec, like in his flirting, quote unquote, with Jacqueline, is talking about his life in Florida. Orlando. So I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, they're like living their best life. Maybe they're Disney adults. I hope not. But, you know, going to the beach, like maybe renting, you know, kayaks. Like I can see them doing that. Yeah. Josh, Alec has a real like, chip on his shoulder about his brother. Yeah. I mean, you can tell they kind of look alike as well. So I'm pretty sure Alec gets the short end of the stick in all aspects in life. I think he's shorter, too. So yes. <laughs> it just worked out that it, it just seems like his brother definitely like has this bigger role on him. And, you know, I feel like after that's probably why his face just goes dead after um, his brother leaves because he's done. He's checked out. He won in his book. So, yeah, he's like, you're never living this down, dude. I beat you. Yeah. He's probably thinking in his head just like, yeah, there goes the Jew. <laughs> there goes. Oh, my God. Yeah. So when they get all the tribes together, uh, Jeff introduces the uh, big hero duel, which is going to uh, be a big part of the pre-merge. And Jeremy and Val seem to like get in, it, like sucked into this rivalry <laughs> early on. And Sasha, I, I wonder if they had to do this over if uh, Jeremy and Val would not have been like uh, as uh, much uh, in a rivalry with each other. Yeah, I wonder, I think this is naturally who they are, right? Like, again, day zero, we're getting that I'm a policeman, you're a fireman. So, like, I think immediately, right, like, it's ingrained in everything they do. And I was watching this with my husband, and I asked him, I was like, because I think I would answer, like, Val, I'd be like, I don't need your help in anything, don't come, like, no, absolutely not. And my husband would be the kind, like, nice one, but I think you're correct that, the spotlight was on them, I think, from from the get go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can tell they both wanted to win, and yes, more than the other. And I think uh, you can tell Jeremy probably was like, "I'm going to protect you," but she's like, "Don't protect me. I'm going to beat you." And I think that's really where that the like just their dynamic was going to be shown and keep on being shown throughout the entire uh, season. So I, I I loved it. They were definitely characters in their own right. And I really want more from Val, honestly. She seems like such they a They should be on a show. Like, I it's think good. that the Collins family should be on a show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they are, like, America's perfect family uh, that they have, uh, you know, the two older daughters, uh, and then they have the two young sons that uh, were born after Jeremy played Survivor. So it's, uh, you know, a really cool family uh, Jeremy and Val have. Yeah, wow. it was. it's just so sweet. And, like, I even actually wrote that in my notes because I feel like Jeff was being kind of weird with this whole, and it comes up a lot um, in this whole season, but he does the whole, 
ask helping your woman and he kept saying like you're a woman you should help your woman and like he asked john and of course john starts the whole john rocker is the whole like you know you have to take care of your woman that's what you do as a man and you see julie kind of nodding along and then he asked jeremy the same question and i think jeremy got caught a little caught up and saying yeah you always want to protect your woman and val was like absolutely not don't ever say that ever again so again like from the start they were just they're so great and so real because i think a lot of other people would be like oh let me be nice and kind but they were just being authentic to who they are Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um so jeremy and val get into uh the duel which uh is very memorable because at one point uh jeff tells val to big woman (laughs) (laughs) we've cited that for many years on the podcast Uh, why did he do that oh my like i said he just kept saying woman woman all the time and i was like (laughs) this this weird stop it yeah Mm -hmm. jeff does a really nice job (laughs) great vocal cords and yeah so val goes to exile island and again you know sort of like getting into like this very public uh like uh you know tit for tat with val ends up with that jeremy wins reward but val has to go to exile island and so uh keith nail ends up going to exile island uh with with val and you know keith and jeremy are gonna have this really interesting relationship over these next two seasons and (laughs) on the surface josh you think that oh they're both firefighters uh they're gonna get along great uh but there's a lot of bumps in the road for jeremy and keith yeah now now that you brought this up it kind of brings me back to like in hindsight what jeremy probably like what made keith say that like i think jeremy has an idol (laughs) he probably put him on the place where uh, Keith could get an idol in the first place. So I mm-hmm. think they just both kind of like did each other wrong in ways that they weren't even aware of. Not thinking the other person would be upset. And it caused them to have this pair that keeps on moving on the next season as well. So I thought it was really funny. Yeah. No, it's just like fire and fire, right? Like I, I don't mm-hmm. think they could be together. Like they just couldn't be together, even though I think they were supposed to be this like unlikely alliance. L- like, wow, we're really going to make sure they get far. Let's make sure the edit works for them. But instead, yeah. it's Natalie and not Keith. Poor Keith. Mm-hmm. Also, Rob, would you throw the challenge for Nicole if it was you and Nicole? Uh, I don't think I would have to. I'm pretty sure Nicole would just beat me in the challenge. <laughs> I don't think that uh, unless it was like Rob has a podcast <laughs> trivia, I'm pretty sure uh, Nicole is going to uh, beat me in the physical That's challenge. That's really funny. <laughs> okay, well. Maybe we a puzzle. Maybe I think maybe if it's just a puzzle, I think maybe I can, maybe I have a shot. But in uh, <laughs> what Jeremy and Val were doing, we're going over the ropes. Yeah, I think Nicole's got it. That's hilarious. Oh my god. My so. husband said he would like throw it for me. And I was like, and then you'd get voted out because it would be so obvious that yeah. you're throwing it. Well, there is the ability to go to uh, Exile Island and then you get a clue uh for the idol, which Val does get. The only problem is she can't find the idol uh when she gets back to the camp, which is gonna be more of a problem <laughs> uh in the second episode for her. Um, oh, you know, we man. haven't talked about uh a lot of the people uh that are uh, parts of this season. Uh on Koyopa, you know, this and this is more of the disaster tribe. Uh, of course, uh, Nadia is going to be uh, the first player voted out of this season. Um, Sasha, we don't get to see a ton of Nadia here. I know. I'm really sad because, again, um, they are twins, but I feel like they're very different in that, like, Nadia's a little bit calmer. I will say, like, she was definitely, like, microaggressing Josh. Like, it wasn't cool yeah. anything she said about you know um her assumptions sorry about gay people so that was disrespectful yeah. but outside of that i was like oh my god nadia like she's i feel like she could have made it far but oh this tribe i just yeah. they couldn't do it and dale kept calling her natalie so mm-hmm. i don't think it even mattered also i will say how are they gonna get mad that Nadia did a U-turn on somebody, but then keep a whole man that you know talked about immigrants, talked about black people, gay people? Like I was like, pick, pick a lane because it, it makes no sense. <laughs> mm. Man, <laughs> yeah, we did not get a lot from Nadia. I just remember uh, watching, knowing, uh, like watching this back, knowing that Natalie wins at the end of the day. 
I would just see like the comments that we did get from Nadia and be like, oh my gosh, this is but this is not the best um, best edit of her. And I, I kind of feel bad that she doesn't get the chance to really um get her own um variation of herself shown in this show. Um, but ultimately it felt like Koyopo just was stuck with the the other <laughs> the other end of the survivor players. Yeah. Like everybody seemed like they were just really they they felt real if that makes sense. They seemed like they were just part of the regular life world playing this game. And it was just Josh sitting here twiddling his finger around these yeah. people. It's a wild <laughs> first vote that ends up happening in this season. Uh it's a five three one vote where uh the guys and Baylor vote out Nadia. And then uh n- then it is uh Nadia, Val, and Jacqueline vote against Dale. And Josh puts a vote on Baylor yeah. that we find out in the next episode that he did that to throw off the alliance, to not let them know that he and Baylor are actually close, which really pissed off Baylor, Josh. Yeah, I don't. Again, it's the same story of like Keith and Jeremy. You like one of these people met, uh, do something stupid to this other person in the beginning of the game, forget yeah. about it, and then get screwed over by that same person. <laughs> and um, I think uh, Josh didn't realize that, like, he is – I think Josh was overplaying himself a lot. Um, You could tell because it didn't really make much sense to throw a vote on Baylor. And he was playing with people who are just going to take this very much more – like, personally. they're going to take this personally more than they're going to take this as a strategic move. And I think it truly messed up his relationship with Baylor and caused Baylor to more be, like, lost in the pudding and i'm actually appreciative of that uh, move that he did <laughs> yeah thank god he did but still i also think that baylor i don't know i'm not sure why she went with the men like why are we yeah. at the bottom with the guys when they really don't care for you like right. at all mm-hmm. right yeah um in hindsight yeah that was a poor decision to vote out nadia for a, for a lot of the people that were involved with it because that uh you know for josh uh for baylor herself um i mean this is wild to vote out you know the strongest woman that's here on this tribe yeah, yeah seriously. I, I genuinely do not get it i'm looking at that tribe and saying to myself what was it that I really want to. I really want to get into the like the dynamic that that tribe had because mm-hmm. it definitely did not make sense, especially in hindsight. Since Baylor ends up working with Natalie <laughs> the entire yeah. season, so I'm really curious what happened. And it's re- it's really Dale, as you brought up, Sasha, who throws out the name is like, oh, okay. Well, I think that that um, they even talk about being on the Amazing Race. I don't think they try to yeah. keep it a secret that they're from uh, the Amazing Race. But Dale is the one who has seen their season of the Amazing Race. Says, oh, they do U-turns, okay. So <laughs> then that's why we we can't trust her. I do think that the show tries to play it up that Nadia gets voted out because uh, she says that Josh is like one of the girls. Uh, I mean, we uh, we know Josh certainly did not appreciate that. Uh, but Josh casts a vote against uh, Baylor here. It doesn't seem as though that's the reason why he she's voted out of the tribe. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm that Cardi B meme with like the what was the reason, what you know, like reason? that meme. Because that's what I feel when I saw her. I was like, this is this makes no sense except for John Rocker. Again, oh, this is where let just have let me have my moment, everyone. But honestly, it's that when you're put on a tribe with someone that can't even get your name right, Dale, maybe he can't see because he broke his damn glasses to make fire. I don't mm-hmm. know. So that's one. And then with John Rocker, who listen, I think. By the reunion, they all buried the hatchet. They're all friends, so I don't want to, like, go in on him too much. But you have Dale, can't get your name straight. You have John Rocker, who said all of these things and probably believes it still, right? Like, But, again, I don't want to make assumptions about who he is as a person. He said it before. Let's just leave it at that. How are how is a Val and a Nadia just ever going to make it past the first boot? Because, to me, that just, you know, it's, like, implicit biases. Like, you're already taking an L because again, I don't understand why Josh is okay with John saying all of these things or not. Okay. But sorry, like not voting him out versus Nadia. Like it, it make it make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It just was not a good look, especially since like there was only so few um diversity in that tribe. Anyways, I just don't understand how like they uh, instantly went out those two people. So yeah. And, 
it's just uh interesting that I I hadn't noticed uh in this season before then uh but like on the rewatch where that you know Jeremy and Natalie like have an instant bond and then also on Cleopa that you know Val and Nadia also have like this instant oh. bond and of course uh you know they're the only two uh people of color that are on their tribes and so uh, you know, sort of, it makes sense that they would click, and they have still to this day, like uh, a you know incredible relationship, uh, Natalie and Nadia, and uh, you know Jeremy and Natalie, yeah, uh, and, and Jeremy and Val, and Na uh, Natalie got voted out first, right, on Winners at War for this exact reason. Mm -hmm. uh, so that yeah, so I agree. I think it's just such a disadvantage to cast four and then two and two, you know, only people of color and then everyone else, which will naturally come together. Oh, I wonder why they're naturally coming together. Like, you know, Absolutely. they have way more things in it, like in common. So it, and Jacqueline, I really think tried. So I don't want to lump Jacqueline in where she noticed that as a woman, like they should stick together. And then Baylor just, you know, flip flopping everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. a very disappointing beginning in this season. And it, it's the only reason why I really enjoyed this. Uh, the rewatch was because I knew the ending, but yeah, thank God. <laughs> yeah. You knew how it was going to go. Um, in the second episode, uh, is when we see that, uh, Hunapu, uh, has lost their Flint. They can't find it. Uh, it looks like that John <laughs> Mish is the person we haven't talked too much about, uh, John and Jacqueline, uh, Sasha, your thoughts on John and Jacqueline on the rewatch. I, I I like them actually. I didn't like them on my the first time because they yeah. were, I was very much like, yo, you're against Natalie and Jeremy, so you're against me. Period. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, on the rewatch, I really actually felt um better with Jacqueline. I will say where I think John actually has a really kind heart. And yeah. I think he's, you know, this white dude from Michigan, right? Like, I don't know, and I'm like, I'm making assumptions, want to make that clear, but still, you know, I don't know that his natural alliances are a Natalie and a Jeremy, but either way, yeah. I think that they're actually really, to me, came off pretty nice, pretty great on the um, show. I think their strategy, Jacqueline, was pretty good, and again, I think without John, she actually played so much better. So I'm over here trying to break up all the loved ones, it looks like, but I really felt like Jacqueline got left um, without the spotlight, even though she was, I felt like more the puppet master of John, but mm -hmm. John was kind of the bronze of the operation. Yeah. I think there are two players um, that can absolutely do pretty well in a, a, their own, on their own leisure, but because they're stuck together with their relationship that they're kind of just working through, it kind of made them seem a lot more like uh, less survivor players and more like America's favorite couple. And yeah. <laughs> it, I, I think that dynamic, honestly, though, um, kind of made them a little wholesome for me as well. I did enjoy them a lot more watching this season back uh, just because they were two pretty authentic people who like uh, Jacqueline coming off of with this, uh, this disease of not being able to carry a child and John still loving her for that and wanting to, you know, this money to, to adopt. It was a story that even I felt for and I genuinely uh, wish them the best in life. And then I, I, I was rooting for them in my own hindsight, knowing the end of the show. <laughs> the show so it, it yeah, they both seem uh, really nice that I, I don't think that either of them are like saying like uh, too many like negative words about the other players in the cast. I will say that I feel like that John that especially like, uh, you know, see knowing how it's all going to go. I feel it comes across as like very naive uh, mm -hmm. in terms of like uh, the ways of the world. I, I get the sense that like a lot of things like have broken his way without too much effort on his part. So he just has like this like uh, false belief that everything's just going to work out in the game. And then he's, uh, he's like, oh, no, th this person, they, they told me they're good. It's fine. No need to overthink it. And I feel like that Jacqueline is usually the person that's like bringing up these concerns. He's like, no, 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 no. Uh, I talked to them. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be good. Don't overthink it. Uh, and mm -hmm. ultimately, he ends up getting voted out with an idol in his pocket at the final <laughs> six and does not see Natalie coming at all. Yeah. Even though she voted Alec and said, oh, I wrote the wrong name. Down. I know. And he yeah. says, yeah, well, I'm going to tell. Pff, she made a big mistake. I'm going to tell the jury. I, I, I mean, <laughs> when if you're going to split the vote, three. you better know who you're voting for. Because the jury is just going to, they are going to eat that up. Yeah, John ultimately just got lucky at the end of the day. And I think the luckiness really worked against his favor. He stopped playing after a while because things were just falling in his place. 
And just them sitting in the middle made them feel as if they were making all these decisions. And really, the decisions were being made because they needed them on their side. And I think that kind of like blinded him, especially at the end. He started just seeing the million dollar check and being prepared for the million dollar check that when his close one of his allies wasn't really that close to him in the beginning, um, <laughs> slays him, he doesn't even realize. So, uh, so maybe they're not that good at of players as I thought they were. I don't think they're that Jacqueline great. Jacqueline yeah. is, but I don't yeah. think they're like still, so, even both of them. Yeah, even Jacqueline, I don't know, is so yeah. great, yeah. but. Jacqueline's okay. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I don't. <laughs> but John is just like silly. Like, like, the, you know, going from the bed reward to her trying to vote them out. Like, to me, it's so obvious, <laughs> but they're just so silly and like loving their life, you know? And I think, Rob, you <laughs> clocked it best. That like, I don't know that his life has, we like, been so hard and that's yeah. probably yeah. why he's seeing this game that way and i, and I do want to say that and uh, that his father has brain cancer yes. and uh, jacqueline has has uh, this condition so i don't want to say that there has been no hardships in johnson but i do feel like that uh, that I, I got the sense that maybe things uh you know other things might have come easy and that uh he just felt like okay well it's gonna it's all gonna work out because it always works out yeah listen oh, for man. a white good looking, able bodied man, it most likely does, right? Versus a Nadia or a Val. Like that's just how currently our world is. So you're yeah. not wrong, but I agree that his life probably internally hasn't been easy, but how he externally lives through the world, it is easier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, he loses the flip. <laughs> And he owns up to it. And so the Hunapu tribe is going to then uh, go to the reward challenge and they end up after they win fishing gear try make an offer to jeff probst of uh, we want to trade uh the bean uh, a bag of beans for a flint and josh jeff is pissed yeah he was he was fuming he's like what is happening i think just coming back after kaguya like again i think just them losing their rice and seeing how they lost it and being confused that way um them coming to a tribe of like they just lost this stuff they lost the flint can we trade for that and then they uh they ate all the rice can we trade for that and i think that's where jeff is just like what is he dealing with and i think mm -hmm. another thing about that is like I think the trade seemed like it was a mockery of Survivor. You're saying, yeah. like, you're supposed yeah. to survive. There's a lot of things that you're supposed to learn on your own. And this tribe seemed like they thought they could do it all. And uh, because they were winning challenges, it seemed like they were uh, – Jeff probably perceived them as trying to be privileged or coming off as if they were privileged in sorts. So, I don't know. I, I think Jeff was rightfully mad, and I was embarrassed for them. Lots of <laughs> yeah, so Where was Kelly laughing? Wentworth and a couple of the other members. Oh of my god, <laughs> Kelly wanted to like, I'd be like, ground open up, swallow me for this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Rob, you probably know the inner workings of production, obviously, a little better. But I wonder, do you think if Jeff went back and was like, Who the hell did you guys cast? Like, do these people have any idea what this show is? Like, what is going <laughs> on? Like, I wonder if Jeff is just like, Screaming at product or casting to be like, y'all screwed us. So I don't know necessarily how involved Jeff was. Now, Jeff is involved with every aspect right. of the show at this point. Uh, Lynn Spillman, mm -hmm. uh, I think, was released from uh, working with Survivor, I think, after season 38. So I'm not sure necessarily like how, you know, active. I think that Jeff had like certainly like interviewed some of these people, but. You know, I to what degree is he involved in sort of like the backstory on the casting? I think this might have been a challenge to cast this season. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's probably like, you idiots. Like, look at this. They're asking me for beans. Like, yeah. They're sorry, trading me beans for like the life in the game per se. But I do think that this is interesting here that we get so much of this here in the season. We have this negotiation and then they find the Flint and they try to trade it back to Jeff and he says, no way. Then they ate all the rice and they have to trade stuff uh, to get the rice in season two uh, that we watched a couple of weeks ago. Um, we saw where in Survivor of the Australian Outback, they ate all the rice uh, and then they had to trade uh, the tarp and the Texas flag uh, to get the rice. Um, this happens here in season 29. Of course, we mentioned this in uh, the evolution of strategy, but the survivor uh, has continued to evolve from this point. Uh, and then 
in the 30s, notably, uh, we see Angelina to come back to come back to the well and then try to do a uh, negotiation <laughs> for rice. Uh, I believe this also happens in Ghost Island, but uh, it did not make the episode just uh, anecdotally from the players that happened. But Josh, I think that Survivor is in a tough spot of uh, yeah. if you eat all the rice, they're not going to let you die. Exactly. I mean, I, it, just as Americans in, in general, I'm assuming we just eat a lot more as time goes well, by. Well, they showed us. They show you in the yeah. finale, in the reunion. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, expecting this rice, like I, you know, we're we're like making a mockery of these people, but they're like eating a couple rice a day. Um, that's not a lot of food. I don't know how. To, like I can't really imagine how to do it either. And I think you, just like look at the cast, you see their face i covered in mud. I will feel a little bit of sympathy too. I was begging that um, Jeff would give him the rice because what can they do? If you yeah. run out of rice, even for a whole week, I, I mean, like, even if it's only like two days, you know, I get hungry by 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Is there so not bad. an orientation or something that like the castaways get before, like, they, you know, get on the beach. Like you can't, you need to, like, this is your one bag. You need, it needs to last this, you know, I don't know where, like, don't be out in the sun. I don't know. Like stuff yeah. like that. I don't know if they instruct them like, uh, to like how much to eat. And then I also don't know if when you get to the merge, do they give mm. you, do they replenish the supply? But I mean, I kind of yeah. feel like that the lesson that I take away from all these things is just eat as much as you want. They'll give you more. Ah. Yeah, and just be okay with getting rid of a few specific yeah. like things. Eat, yeah, win, and if you lose, uh, like, uh, <laughs> if you run out of rice, then you just have to give back the stuff you won. Yep, very you know? true. Big deal. They You're back to... where you started. Absolutely, actually, I think that's a. They're going to start to see a lot of people. And you didn't have to go to all those tribal rice. councils. Yeah, <laughs> from losing. So. Uh, but I, I think it's a good, even though Jeff will get mad at you, I still think it's a good trade, uh, when, whenever you can do it. Um, th that being said, uh, we, uh, saw Kelly Wentworth get the deciding point in the challenge. Uh, it was her birthday. Yeah. Aww. HBD. Yeah. Kelly, uh, we'll, we'll talk about her a little bit more when we get to uh, the fourth episode. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, Dale gets uh, most of the spotlight in, here in San Juan del Sur. Yeah, it was so strange. <laughs> Sorry. It was strange watching uh, just Kelly's uh, journey in general, but seeing her father become a really big character in this show, show kind of fall in the background was a, 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 just a little weird for me. But I think Dale was uh, just... He was a very funny character himself and added a lot of, uh, especially in the Koyopa, where not many people were strategists. Him just talking out loud and kind of controlling a lot of the boats uh, kind of put the cameras around him a lot. So he was fun, especially him rooting against uh, Koyopa, but then also rooting for his daughter because it's her birthday. So very bad challenge uh, dynamic for him. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm not a fan of Dale. I don't know something about him. I was like, I'm just not into you. Um, I think he's needed. He's a good villain to have. Mm -hmm. Or not even a villain. I think villain's too deep. But especially with the Kelly, who's actually, like, such a great character. I was like, wow, you're related. This is fascinating. Like, Apple, very far from tree. Yeah, for Kelly, it really ends up being like an unfortunate uh, situation that she uh, was out there with Dale because uh, when we get to the swap, we'll talk about it, about how... I mean, Kelly really didn't do anything wrong here. Um, that It's no. hard to find exactly what she did uh, to... like. I mean, she's working with Missy and Baylor. It just so happens that you know she walks into this spot where... Dale and Baylor are fighting, uh, which uh, Kelly knows is not going to work out well for her. Um, <sighs> but uh, here at this point, um, we get uh, where Jeremy and John Rocker, they make this alliance and uh, they agree to look out for each other's significant other. But, you know, Val has come back and, uh, you know, let people know she has two idols, Sasha, not just one. <laughs> The, why, oh. is she, why Val? Why? I just why? I know 
she wants to protect Jacqueline. That's why. But like, girl, have you not seen one episode of Survivor? Like, you <laughs> know, ne- why? This is so crazy. And then s- to boast uh, about it. I think yeah. that's like just, oh. I think yeah. Jeremy definitely was like, idols, you need to find idols. <laughs> I think he just said that part. Yeah, then, he probably um, told her. And then um, Val took that as like, okay, idols are very important. Maybe I could just say I got one and people would <laughs> would uh, dodge me. But no, I think she definitely did not. I think the lack of knowledge definitely kind of hurt her when it came to this. But ultimately, yeah, no, it was not. It was a, it was a dunner once she said two idols. Yeah. And when she mm-hmm. said it, I thought I was wrong, where I was like, wait, did I miss something? Like, how did no. she get? Because I didn't think someone would like, you know, maybe an idol, but like, two girl, come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and John Rocker being like, yeah, play them because I believe you. That's another dud situation. Mm hmm. Yeah, it ends up in a spot where uh, we have a uh, tie vote here. Uh, four <laughs> votes for Val, or uh, four votes for Val. Uh, it was not supposed to be a tie vote. Uh, Josh was uh, trying to, uh, or it was uh, Baylor, I think, who was mm-hmm. supposed to go home. Uh, yeah. But Josh ends up flipping his vote here uh, to Val because... He feels like, wait, why? Why is Val talking to John Rocker? I, I, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. another happy accident. It looks like. Well, mm-hmm. there goes Val. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, Val goes out of the game, and um, Jeremy's not going to be happy uh, when he sees this. Ah, uh, yeah, that episode. It feels like that episode was just like the flip coin that should not have happened. Mm-hmm. All of these mistakes of uh, such a different outcome could have happened that was meant to happen. For a lot mm-hmm. of these players that would have built so many different relationships if you think of it happened this way, but instead the coin flip and Jeremy's just irritated, angry. Yeah. Well, when they get to the Redemption Island duel, that John Rocker like tries to apologize to Jeremy yeah. and really sort of like blows up his own game in some ways. Of that, she's just like, Hey, I tried to I tried to protect her. I told her that I would I, I told him we I would look out for, for Val, but I that, that you know she didn't listen to me. And then uh, everyone else is like, you said what? Yeah. You, you did what? Why did you do mm-hmm. that? And then again, like, this is also another thing I noticed that I have never seen so many people outwardly just naming their alliances and just being willy nilly. Be like, yep, yeah, this is my crew. That's it. This is who I'm hanging with. It doesn't make any sense why this was okay. Yeah, it looks like John Rocker was the pair that uh, was asked to be on the show. And it sucks for him because he doesn't really have that much knowledge himself. So um, I thought it was weird that, like, you could tell John Rocker could have, if maybe he just had a different delivery of explaining this to um, to Jeremy, then maybe he would have won Jeremy on his side. But instead, he had everybody look at him like he was crazy. And I think that did not work out for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um- Meanwhile, uh, over at Hunapu, uh, Keith is going to go looking for the idol. Uh, and he can't find it. So he holds a press conference, basically, to tell everybody, well, Jeremy must have the idol because it's not there. So everybody, Jeremy has the idol. Uh, Reed tells Jeremy, and Jeremy's pissed. Yeah. Wow. Keith just did not... You know, this is just his lack of knowledge. He didn't mean no harm. He just was like telling everybody that, yeah, you got the idol, man. <laughs> and obviously, Jeremy's like, everybody's like, wait, what? Are you <laughs> you're just gonna <laughs> you're just gonna do that to me? Am I am I idol? I, I don't know. So I again Keith was a hot mess and a good tribe at least, because they did not go uh to trip uh, tribal that night. And luckily ended up finding the idol himself. Yeah, yeah. He put him. it out there in the world <laughs> to be yeah. like, right? Let me just let me let me call it to myself because, but like we said, Keith is not the brightest. He he really thinks that he can just be honest, and that's how he's gonna win the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no. So another interesting thing that happens is when Jeremy is hot about Val being voted out. Um, Jeremy ends up like spilling the tea on John Rocker and basically, uh, talks about how he was an, uh, an athlete and he said, uh, made racist comments and homophobic comments. And now 
the uh, telephone game is really going on. Now, the, the entire tribe of Hunapu is out for blood. They, they want to see uh, John Rocker out of the game. And we end up getting like this big confrontation, which ends up happening where yeah. Natalie is really uh, set off about John Rocker. And she and John Rocker start uh, really like going after each other. And does John Rocker say, if you were a guy, I'd knock your teeth out? Teeth out. Yeah. yeah, if you were a oh. male, I'd knock your teeth Not yeah, a female, a but a male. Yeah. And that's also what killed me. I was like, who says if you were a male, yeah. I'd knock your teeth out? But I think this, besides Natalie saying, you know, like, did you vote the way I told you to vote? Play idol moment. This is like hilarious. And I cannot. Again, the chutzpah for Natalie to just like say this and be like, you're being played by this man. And then she just keeps <laughs> going in and in. And then Dale, don't think I didn't hear you because Dale's yeah. over here, you know, chirping in the background too. Shut up, Dale. Um, mm -hmm. And then Alec is trying to, you know, be the peacekeeper being like, just let it go. Let it go, you know, to John. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then just Natalie going in on this man. And yeah, it's just like. Come on, <laughs> come on. Why don't you say something racist and homophobic like your past? Doesn't even that line does not make sense, but like mm -hmm. it worked so well in that <laughs> exchange. Yeah, it was such a mess. I think it was this is again something you could only get in a blood versus water season where like both on the other tribe is your blood and you're losing people that you love, uh, to these people that uh, you uh, Jeremy so happens to know from um, the past. So I think because of that, these tribes have like a lot of agony against each other. And this is a, like a huge fight against the tribes uh, that like Natalie never met Josh. I mean, John, she <laughs> never met John. And she had so much anger against him. She was just pissed <laughs> about Nadia, I'm sure. Yeah. And then probably a little bit about Val too, um, for Jeremy, but mostly probably Nadia. I think she says that right at the reunion yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and from what I understand that I feel like that, the cast members who played in this season like uh all went on to like have nice things to say about john rocker yeah. so yeah that was in the heat of the moment they got into it but i think that um like he was cool with uh jeremy and val and natalie and nadia all like after the season was over but uh it's definitely uh some tense moments there and after we see the pleas from the loved ones like i the, i think in a normal season of survivor sasha like you wouldn't see like uh, a tribe like telling the other tribe what to do and they and, and they would listen but ultimately mm -hmm. john rocker ends up getting voted out uh five to two after this outburst only dale is the only person that uh doesn't vote out john rocker after this. yeah yeah <laughs> like it's like at least try you know to not be so textbook like mm -hmm. dale but you I also found this funny because the same reason why I think Josh kept John in the previous episode is why I think Josh should have kept John now. Like, what's the point of voting out someone that's so hated? Like, he's not winning. He's probably not even going to make it to the merge. And y'all just keep losing over here. Like, yeah. I don't know that this tribe is so great. Like, what would it have looked like if they kept John again and then took out um, Jacqueline, actually, or someone like that, um, someone, you know, on the yeah. the bottom, quote unquote, and someone that isn't such because, again, John's not the brightest tool in the shed. So, like, you could have molded him however you wanted, because now Absolutely. he hates Jeremy. He hates Natalie. So let's use that. Let's weaponize yeah. that. Yeah. I think uh, I don't know. I don't really actually know what's going through Josh's head, but I think he j it was just so late with John. It's kind of hard to really like a player who got called out amongst the whole entire house, uh, the house, but <laughs> entire <laughs> island uh, to try to save him when everybody's thinking like, let's just send the guy home. He's kind of like ruined himself, especially with that comment. It just was way too yeah. controversial. Well, and I think that yeah, when the players are hearing like, oh, this is somebody who's making homophobic comments, making racist comments. I think there's a part of you that says like. Well, I don't want to be on television with being yeah, like uh, best friends with this guy. Like, okay, yeah. sure, let's let's just cut ties with John Rocker. Yeah, 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 actually, that's true. Even though John says actions are accusations, what are you gonna believe? My best friend or closest person on this tribe is a gay man, and it's like I don't think that's as good as you think it sounds. <laughs> yeah, you guys known each other for four days. <laughs> but hey, and you like have to. You have no choice, dude. You <laughs> voted the two women of color out already. Yeah. <laughs> 
Who else you got? Yeah. So John Rocker gets put out uh, with an idol. But that brings us to uh, probably the standout episode here of this pre-merge of the ballad of Drew Christie, which <laughs> is uh, uh. so much fun. Uh, the episode uh, that is entitled uh, Wear a Hot Mess. And so uh, we really uh, zoom in on Drew Christie. We I hadn't seen too much from Drew other than the fact, uh, Josh, that he likes to sleep. And yeah. uh, we saw like Natalie like uh, messing with him while he was trying to sleep. <laughs> this yeah. is our, again why I love this episode. Like, first of all, this man is sleeping in the middle of camp while other people are literally weaving. And then Natalie's like, not today, you're not. So she... <laughs> One, she bothers him, which, okay, you know, it would have been a cute little bit. But then when he wakes up, she says, yeah, why are you sleeping? You know, it's not like she, like, kind of coy and, you know, just, like, giggles it hey, off. Alpha. Like, yeah. <laughs> but instead, she's like, no, why aren't you playing? Like, oh, sorry, why aren't you helping us? Like, why mm -hmm. are you sleeping? So, again, I just, I He's love He's not much Natalie. of a weaver, Sasha. He's, <laughs> He's a, what, He's what a fisherman. He? He's a fisherman. He, that's why he needs a fishing ah, gear. He needs to go yeah. fishing. <laughs> a bad barber always blames his tools. Yeah, well, he had to trade. Oh the my fishing, god, that's my dad. Fishing gear. <laughs> sorry. Uh, look, my dad does that all the time. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's I never. What does that your before. dad do? Your dad cuts his own hair? No, he cuts my hair. <laughs> oh, and so yeah, if y'all see a uneven line, and he says it's right the time. Clippers' fault. <laughs> he said it the last time. Wow, this is a uh, very revealing. I'm yes. about to confront him. Anyway, okay. Yeah. Go for it. We're yeah, ready. He, Blood he, versus he did water. a great job, Josh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Drew Christie, uh, all he wanted was the fishing gear. They don't have it. It's all he talks about all day long. He's getting on everybody's nerves. Um, we see the duel this time around. It's uh, John versus Jacqueline. Uh, and John wins. And then Jacqueline gets sent to Exile Island. And so they have to pick somebody to go with Jacqueline and so Drew gets dispatched to go to Exile Island to go Drew uh, volunteers. <laughs> yes. I think they go... were picking someone else, right? I can't remember who else. And then no. Drew goes, No, I'll do it. <laughs> Foolish. He'll do it. Yeah. He'll go and he'll hang out with Jacqueline. He's got he's got to talk to her. And so um I don't know, would I send Drew Christie to Exile Island with my girlfriend or wife? Oh. I would hope not, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Josh, uh, what do you think about Drew Christie? He's, uh, you can tell the kids are very much a flirt. And just, a, he has a big head, of course. Like, these brothers yeah. definitely have a big head. And they obviously want to not just prove themselves, but prove the brother <laughs> that they're, like, the best, I'm assuming. And I think that's exactly what Drew was going in to this episode wanting to do. He thinks he was running the tribe probably by his attitude already and he wanted that mission of, of really running it and i think just because he sent himself to exile he's thinking he's a big bad he's thinking he's this big guy this big shot exile is not that bad it can't beat him and i think exile just made him go a little crazy <laughs> you know just thinking to himself i think he set himself up to want to make a mission for himself to see like to solidify that he's the one running this game well <laughs> sasha drew can see on Koyopa what's been going on that a lot of the women have been uh, voted out. He's boys with John uh, wants to protect Jacqueline. And so they sort of thinks about like, well, we, I can, you know, help out Jacqueline here and John by proxy. And here's what I need to do. I'm going to throw this challenge and then we'll get rid of some of the real snakes in this game. The <laughs> o the other women, of course, mm -hmm. because you know, God forbid, anyone else get voted out on damn blood versus water. But he's such a mess. Like he's checking out someone who has a girl who has a boyfriend. Yeah, and then he's over here just spewing nonsense. And like Shannon, I think said this on Rob when you were on with her um last week, right on Survivor South Africa, where. If someone's sleeping, they're getting that dodo edit. She um, doesn't like that. It. Yeah, and here we go. Like, that's literally what I, I thought about it as I was watching this part. Because yeah. I was like, look at him. Just look at him. He's literally spewing nonsense, calling the women snakes. What have they done to you, dude? Like, I, what have they done? 
they didn't have much to do anyways. I'm I'm wondering like what game they were like trying to make. All you can do is just make relationships um in this meantime. Yeah, he's calling people snakes. I wonder maybe you know when they were threading <laughs> and there was something that they the ladies were doing while they were threading that just made them say, you know what, snakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they were writing messages in the threads, and you know, Drew was like, Oh, they're talking about me, obviously. <laughs> well, the snake that Drew says <laughs> is the person they have to watch out for happens to be somebody who at the time we laughed at drew christie ha 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 uh idiot moron uh like he's worried about kelly wentworth who is she (laughs) of all people uh but sasha then she goes on to be shy of jeremy and natalie the most accomplished survivor player that plays in this season like I so said, I don't insane. think he's wrong, right? Because like Natalie wins he knew. the season. He knew, but I think his reasoning was a hot mess. But maybe, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, maybe intuitively something. Maybe he had a vision as he was sleeping. Someone came, the survivor gods were like, Drew, since you're the only one not working, we want to give you some great ideas. Vote the women out. They will run the game. <laughs> and then Drew was like, yes, thank God. I'm, you know. And he's probably getting the mm-hmm. most rest. So maybe that's why he's the most yeah. like, understanding of what's going on. Sleep can yeah. do something to you. I think it's all, again, about delivery. I think he had got this idea and said, I got it. I'm a, I'm a mastermind. I'm a genius. I'm taking them out. I'm taking those snakes out. And it, it couldn't <laughs> help but just give the man a dodo at it because you can see it in his face. You can't take him. Like, I couldn't take Drew seriously. He said those. He said that uh, – Kelly Wilmer was the snake. I'm like, how do you know that? Even though I'm watching seasons of Kelly Wilmer, yeah, the snake. <laughs> At the time, we didn't know, but even yep. but now we now we know he was kind of right. He got a sneaky, sneaky Kelly Wilmer. He should be on casting. Drew would probably like by a mistake, but like get all the good people to get cast. He's like, who's the snake? Oh, you're, and but then everyone he me. cast gets the becomes the winner. <laughs> like for all we know, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> So he single-handedly throws the challenge for uh, Hunapu. And Sasha, this is very rare in Survivor history that we've seen teams throw challenges. Um, We've even seen like a few people on the team are responsible for throwing the challenge. This might be the only time in Survivor history that I could think of where one person decided they're throwing the challenge for the team. (laughs) Yeah, and like... Like, he is truly the hero of his story, right? Like, we all are. But, like, him, he really is a hero. So, he's like, it doesn't matter. I make decisions for the tribe (laughs) because I'm number one. And then whatever I say will happen. So, I'm not consulting with my allies. I'm just going to do. And then I'm going to tell my allies Mm -hmm. what to do. And Jeff actually says Drew is single-handedly throwing (laughs) this challenge. Which Mm -hmm. I was like, Jeff, how can you call people out like this? Uh, And then, (laughs) because I was like, poor Drew. Drew didn't get two Fs. Like, we don't get a confessional about Drew being like, well, I didn't. I wish Jeff wouldn't call me out. I was trying to be a little sneaky. That man didn't care. He's like, yep, I sure did, Jeff. I sure I did. Right after that is when he says, So, um, basically, I'm a badass. <laughs> Again, Dodo, he just says the most Dodo things. Yeah. I'm very confused on, like, why the tribe did not just take the balls from the man. I just, yeah, it felt right. like this challenge was designed for uh, Drew to throw it. <laughs> and um, everybody was just watching him as he was throwing it. They were literally standing. Like, I remember Reed trying to um, throw a ball, and he said, no, no your ball down it's i got like, this <laughs> yeah i got this i wonder crazy. if while it was happening they were like you know what let's just get this dude out like screw it he wants to throw it like they might have just given each other looks and been like hey let's this is what his ass out mm-hmm. if, well, he says kelly Wentworth is a snake uh though his reasoning why kelly is a threat is because uh she has never missed an episode of survivor josh that was uh the reason why he felt like she had to go Ooh. I mean, that is pretty threat, right? <laughs> That's a little threatening. I would have thought the same thing. He, if he told me that, I yeah. would have been like, oop. Which is interesting because her dad <laughs> said that Nadi had to go because she was uh, doing U- U-turns on The Amazing Race. <laughs> I wonder if they put out like a casting call. Do you think women are sneaky and not trustworthy? Great. Let's get you on the show. Because like it's bizarre how everyone kind of has the same story. 
like or how they feel rather not story same feelings about mm-hmm. women and again i even put in my notes like drew wants kelly out because she's a threat where's the threat and then i put in parentheses well he's actually not wrong yeah he's not i mean <laughs> he, has, he makes some points he makes some points um but when he comes back there's like uh some conversation about uh what do we do let's vote out julie because john rocker has been voted out and drew christie is like no no we're not doing that uh and he's basically like telling jeremy what to do uh this is actually the episode where jeremy and keith uh get into it about the the idol yeah. so jeremy's hot i mean uh sasha this is an episode where the men are all just flailing in this group all the men are gonna vote wrong in uh this vote i believe so yeah no keith, they're just flopping. Keith votes for julie yeah. Uh, a re- uh, except, except for Reed. Um, Reed is the only person that's. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Reed votes for Julie. Also, uh, then Jeremy votes. For, uh, Jeremy votes for Drew. Uh, yeah. But he. But he. But he's like one, You know, very concerned about Keith Nail. Uh, yeah. Drew votes for Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> so many names were going out today. Jeremy wanted Ke- uh, Keith out. Keith out. Yeah. Drew wanted uh, Kelly out. Everybody wanted Julie out. And I think it just became such a mess. You could tell. Again, it's all about Drew's delivery that really kind of sell the uh, nailed the coffin in for himself. He probably was going around uh, really trying to dominate these men. And I'm pretty sure these men were all alpha males and were not enjoying it. Specifically, Jeremy. He's sitting there saying to himself, what is you telling me? You're not, what? Who is this man? And then mm-hmm. the girls already don't like Drew already. So they're like, hey, is that's the name going out? Let's just do it. And um, I think that's what really caused this. Tra- like you could tell, Hoyopa was not- Hoyopa. <laughs> Sorry, <y'all. laughs> Unapu. Unapu. Yeah, yeah. Unapu was just not. Um, they were not organized with this tribe. They were definitely. I can tell that this this was like a very clicky tribe. They didn't really communicate with one another, and you saw it from this uh, vote. Also, Drew talking in front of Natalie. Like, he's like, let's get the girls out. We don't yeah. trust the girls. The girls are working together while the girl is standing right, right. there. Like, yeah. he gives, like I said, zero Fs. Like, he does not care. And he, and then I think Natalie even says, like, who's going to help us win? We don't even have enough girls. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. And then talking about Kelly right in front of Kelly. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. It was so, <laughs> there are uh, not many players that have like the lack of self-awareness that drew has but often survivor celebrates them uh whether it's uh, like the the coaches or debbies or phillips or the like in in uh mm-hmm. other seasons you know survivor really celebrates these players uh drew gets this episode really as a spotlight sasha are you surprised that we have never seen drew christie's name mentioned to return to survivor absolutely i'm not surprised no because because again like i said this is there are a few players that i think only work well in this kind of setting like in this universe they're amazing take them out of the universe i think i can see him either getting swallowed up right by a boston rob who's like you like Mm -hmm. i'm gonna eat you alive or like tony kind of like you know plays him for a fool um him and sander get into it but sander is much sander would hate him yeah like i feel like kelly is so So much much calmer than like sander would just like ruin his you know existence so i don't know Mm -hmm. that i think it's not in drew's best interest to come back to survivor (laughs) yeah Drew seems like he again. He's he seems like a character. He looked like the surfer boy character that was like chill vibes. Everybody, yeah, that's what you expect from Drew. But what he delivers is this mastermind and wants to control everything. Big alpha dog and his energy, his like persona that he tries to play does not match what his character archetype is really. And I think that uh, that like dynamic would just kind of set off a lot of players and notice that yeah, he's trying to play the game. Um, so. Notice him from a uh, from early on symptoms, and I was noticing it too. Like just him sleeping around, you can see like where his uh, where <laughs> yeah, he's trying to Alec go with this. About. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the tribal council where Drew Christie gets voted out, uh, Drew Christie talks about how that uh, Dale wins the challenge against Drew Christie, and Jeff says that Drew got beat by a guy who could be his granddad. <laughs> Uh, which I thought was kind of mean to Dale. I mean, like the, the Dale's daughter is on this season. She's yeah. the same age as Drew Christie. Why? 
you saying Dale is old enough to be Drew Christie's grandfather? I'm telling you, Jeff has had it with this cast. Like he, I think Jeff, which is also why it's so funny. Like Jeff literally calls them out left and right. Like at a later point when they're all discussing like, oh, uh, the... Oh, the really gross skull crushing individual yeah, yeah, immunity. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jeff is like, you know what? Why are we even playing this? Let, let's just decide who's the winner. Great. Let's just give it to them. So mm-hmm. I really feel like De- Jeff's done. Jeff is so yeah. over them. And it's only episode four. Mm-hmm. A little mean. Yeah. Uh, Dale's 55. Drew Christie <laughs> is uh, 25. I don't know if he's old enough to be his grandfather. No. I, I he guess not. biologically, but come sure. On. Come on, Jeff. We'll, we'll, we'll blow. Um, <laughs> So, all right, Drew Christie goes out and we get to our swap here of the season. And I do think this is the weakest part of the season yeah. coming up. These two episodes after the swap. Uh, Josh, do you uh, feel like I'm being too hard? No, you're right. This was where I was getting uh, where I felt like this was a slow burner area. Yeah. Uh, nobody really could like it didn't seem like these tribes really could do much. Um, and a lot of things did not necessarily paid off. Like I was expecting a very big, a, a lot from like the Josh, I mean the Jeremy versus uh, the Josh and Reed dynamic right then and there. And that didn't get paid off until like an episode, two episodes later. And just even like uh, Kelly's um, elimination. Uh, I watched the season and I was blindsided again. <laughs> yeah, was me too. Yeah. Like I really was. <laughs> In my like, mind, I thought her dad went first, and I'm like, yeah. "All right, well, Kelly went with still has another episode, and then uh, she ends up just just going out." I mean, yeah. th- it really was a miracle that they ended up putting Kelly Wentworth in the second chance ballot because that uh, I'm sure that she won over production when she mm. was there, but in terms of like what she does on the screen in this season, uh, Sasha, there's just not a lot there. Yeah, so that's why, um, so everyone on Twitter, um, and actually even in the Facebook group, we're really talking about this, right? Like, will Kelly Wentworth win the, um, her, the award, her namesake award? And I actually would say, like, second chances helped her out way more than this. Oh, I feel certainly. Like- Right where I was, I could make a case why she shouldn't win this award. Like I could actually make the case versus. (laughs) Stay tuned. I know, but I still like her. Win the Kelly Wentworth Award for best (laughs) pre-merge for pre-jury player. I know the the hottest um item. I feel, but still, it's (laughs) really funny because yeah, even I was like, "What's the hype?" Like the hype comes later for her. Like this season isn't it. Yeah, I'm actually surprised she even got voted in. I'm like, like this is at watching this, and then I like watched the of uh, the vote in part. I was shocked again. Anyways, I'm, all right, sorry. Like, this was a very nice rewatch for me. But uh, going back to uh, just <laughs> Kelly, I was I'm sitting glad, there Josh. saying to myself, like, <laughs> I I was like, come on, this doesn't make any sense to me. They they even in the edit, Dale was getting so much screen time. I'm like, okay, he's about to go, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he doesn't. I was really upset. I will say, I think that maybe Kelly is the all-time most swap-screwed player, and mm. uh, for that, deserved a second chance to, to come That's back. That's true. And so she does, like, literally nothing wrong here to get voted out. I mean, she yeah. ends up just like, oh my god, my dad is fighting with a 20-year-old about <laughs> rice, and uh, basically is calling out the mom of just dad, just let them eat the rice. So... Uh, I mean, she ends up yeah. just guilty by association here. She doesn't Absolutely. do anything to like, like to make it. She, there's no mistake or flaw in her game other than she's uh, her dad is pissing everybody off. This just yeah. goes to show you again. Blood versus water is a very difficult game. You think it's easy playing with your loved one? Uh, mm-hmm. They will show you how hard it is. <laughs> and yeah. ultimately, it's just like you have to play with somebody else sins. And you saw that from um, Kelly's game. Kelly was very much set up. Nobody was really talking about her. She just got sent home the person who was coming for her. What could have happened next for her? She gets eliminated because of rice. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah over damn rice oh my god also another because rob you talked about this at the start with the tribes another weird like i know production did not does not pick it but like how weird that one couple with singles on hunapu and then new koyopa is all couples with one single like i just i couldn't believe that that was also allegedly so 
I don't know the right word, like just um, happenstance. Coincidental. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know if Survivor ever rigs the the tribe shuffle. Um, like, I kind of feel like that, um, you know, because sometimes it, ha it happens so unevenly so mm -hmm. much that uh, I just think it's the luck of the draw in terms of how it worked out. But um, yeah, we did end up with... Uh, you know, uh, like, again, I'm not war dog, so I couldn't tell you the, like, probabilities that so many couples would end <laughs> up on one side as opposed to people just, like, uh, passing each other and uh, go from one tribe to the other. Mm. Yeah. that It was just an interesting, another, again, I was yeah. like, this is shady. But I it is really it is like interesting. Yeah, where <laughs> that we end up sort of like uh, uh, Hunapu versus Koyopa, like, actually then means nothing. It really mm -hmm. ends up turning into like, do you have a loved one in the game versus your loved ones got voted out of the game? And so the pairs like ultimately are going to sort of like want to work together. Uh, yeah. And then the singles are going to want to work together. And that was the, the case in the original Blood versus Water, uh, but even more so here in this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't because know. The, no pairs weird. really mm -hmm. got, I think that the last pair in the original Blood versus Water was, uh, you know, Laura and Sierra. And Sierra, you know, famously had to uh, vote out her oh, mom. Yeah. mom. Here, well, yeah. we actually have a mom and a daughter get to the uh, final five of this season. Yeah. yeah. And used each other, right? Like, yeah. they weren't seen as, like, a threat right. necessarily even when they got voted out i yeah. don't know that they were seen as threats we actually exactly. have two pairs in the final six in this yeah season. so the pairs actually uh end up going uh much further in mm -hmm. uh san juan del mm -hmm. sur than in the original uh blood versus water um but we have uh a lot about the rice here josh uh and we really get in the weeds of at hunapu they ate big portions and and uh, Missy wanted to feed her guys of like, here, Drew, here, John, I made you as much rice as you could. Oh, wow, Missy, thanks. <laughs> uh, and she would make yeah. like huge portions. <laughs> and then over on uh, Koyopa, Dale was like counting out like each grain. All right, you get <laughs> six grains for you. Uh, uh and then Missy gets to Koyopa and it's like, oh, wow, look at all this rice they have here for us. John, <laughs> get over here. <laughs> Don't like my oh, cooking I eat for you. Uh, yeah, th th this rice was, um, it's the rice art these past two episodes. It, it really was like, very, it shows you how important food is to a lot of these players. And you're just seeing Dale's eyes. In a way, I kind of feel like because we were watching uh uh, the new Hanapu uh, almost like struggling about rice. And you see uh, Missy just making all these big bowls. I was kind of with, like looking at Dale. I would have probably been like Dale just sitting there and be like, look at them stealing our rice. How dare they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dale was like, it's my camp. I did tell them. <laughs> like, <Yeah. what? laughs> get mm -hmm. out of here, dude. Um, I felt the worst for Josh, I think, because oh, yeah. Josh uh, really was upset. He's like, we rationed it out for 39 days at our camp and then i got here and they ate all their rice and there's no rice here <laughs> oh my god yeah, yeah. Josh was all yours so too and then you was swapped pissed. yeah josh, josh was is so, so pissed dramatic. he is mm -hmm. so dramatic that he it adds to the flavor i think that was really why i got invested with this rice he's such a good storyteller <laughs> i'll tell you and um i i think again it's back to like just the, this rice dynamic really is what kind of broke this up, this game up a lot, a lot more, made it more division than you'll think. It wasn't the fact that it was blood versus water. It was the fact it was blood versus water versus rice. She's <laughs> <Obviously. laughs> in three tribes. Yep. Oh my god! The rice yeah. really put a, a, a damn, <laughs> a damn in this uh, game. Yeah, yeah. You want to be on the rice tribe? You get to eat. <laughs> yeah, called Hunapu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> Yeah, it's a free for all. It's a buffet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do so, they get salt? Do they get salt? I th they. Yeah. Um, you don't get salt, uh, but you often get a spice rack. Uh, Sue Hawk, uh, you know, t taught me in Survivor All Stars. If you go to the ocean, and you know, you shouldn't drink the ocean water, but you could like drizzle a little like uh, ocean <laughs> water on your rice, so you give it some flavor. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. 
little pro tip. Don't get any sand in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Uh, we do get over on uh, Hunapu. Uh, Jeremy is very concerned. Reed and Josh are together. And so uh, we're seeing Julie starting to check out. Uh, Natalie and Jeremy need to work on Alec Christie. And so, Sasha, I really love this from Jeremy, uh, that we get a little bit of a surround and drown. Jeremy says that Alec, he's just like his brother. Yeah, he's just calling them cartoons, right? And he says, like, all of these just, like, dragging this kid. And he's like, Alec, let's get together. And he's just, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, Jeremy's confessionals about them, I think, are yeah. much funnier yeah, than, like, I, him interacting with them. I like, think, <laughs> hold on. Let me see if I can play, play this. These oh, guys are so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can tell you can tell Jeremy sees this game as like, okay, these are, are the Sims. And um, Josh is the other player that I played against. Josh mm -hmm. and Reed versus me and Natalie and a bunch of Sims. And it's like, who could collect these Sims better? And I think that's exactly how Jeremy's playing. He's seeing them walk around and he's just saying, This is like, this is so difficult. Why are they so dumb? And you can tell the frustration he's getting when Josh and Reed are just talking to them, playing and, and seeing them winning. You can just see the anger in Jeremy's face. No, you Jeremy can was tell. Getting a villain at it. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know if like I'm a very competitive person and I'm a sore loser. So like I'm awful to Same. play games with. Yeah. Um, but like and my family very much like hates like and calls me out on it. And I felt like I feel like Jeremy when I'm, you know, playing games with my family because like they're messing around, they're not paying attention, they're just like doing whatever they want. And I was like, you guys are so annoying, you're so dumb, like you can't get it together. And my mom is mm -hmm. like, it's it's family feud that we got from Dave and Buster's. Like, what's the big deal? And mm -hmm. I was like, no, like we need to win our team. And you know, <laughs> meanwhile, we're up by like 30 points, whatever. And I was like, no, we need to beat the other team. You guys aren't paying attention. Like, I'm very annoying. So I feel for Jeremy because that's how I am. Or I'm like, you're all idiots. You don't know how to do anything right. <laughs> Oh yeah. my gosh, that is such a good, um, good example. It's like uh, every Jeremy thinks he's he's seen the game as Survivor while everybody else is playing Family Feud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what that they're just like, okay, sorry, Steve, we didn't get the top answer. Let's move on. Um, so uh, the the rice <laughs> is is going to be an issue. It's going to be more of an issue coming up uh, in the next episode where Hunapu is going to have to cash out on their <laughs> rice. Uh, but uh, oh finally, uh, like it really comes down to that John and Jacqueline, uh, where do they want to go in terms of uh, on, on the vote? And Baylor, I think, is the one who says that, you know what? Um, Dale is pretty sneaky uh i bet his daughter is too so uh, sneaky sneaky baylor called the <laughs> shot on the wentworth family again i think with these players are like should be on casting because like how do you know that kelly wentworth is sneaky like there's absolutely no way to know that like you're just like just again saying nonsense but they were right they're clocking everything <laughs> yeah yeah, it's the three pairs. It's uh, Missy and Baylor, Dale and Kelly, and John and Jacqueline, plus uh, Keith Nail. Mm -hmm. Keith Nail. Mm -hmm. Who kind of is just like the Keith. forgotten person over there. Uh, but <laughs> ultimately, that uh, we're going to see Dale and Kelly. Uh, they go for Baylor, but uh, uh, they, there's a split vote between uh, three votes for Kelly and two votes for Dale and uh, Kelly Wentworth uh, goes home, but makes enough of an impression to uh, come back two seasons later. The rest is history for Kelly Wentworth. Yep. I still don't get it. Like, thank God that that happened. But yeah, like she just didn't get enough confessionals, you know, like how, like that's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that they just uh, saw enough out there. Yeah, it must be. It must be the things we didn't get because she goes out. So just like it just she kind of flamed yeah. out. But I think maybe they left a lot of stuff out of the edit. Maybe. Well, what if there was no tribe swap, Josh? Uh, if like Hunapu and Koyopa continue on, Koyopa is uh, really the hot mess tribe. Uh, Drew mm -hmm. is out at Hunapu. 
Um, I'm not sure who goes like a do do Baylor and Jacqueline get voted out then uh, before the merge. Mm. Mm, I think uh, we could definitely. I, I still think because uh, uh, John got out. Um, I'm pretty sure Drew was upset. Drew probably had divided a lot of cracks. I think John was holding things together. I could see Dale probably um leaving if uh, uh Koyopa was continuously losing. Um, because I thought at that point Baylor and uh, Jacqueline kind of got themselves into that incorporated. I wonder where Kelly goes. I, I'm definitely Kelly. Of, of course, was a player that we see had so much potential throughout her other seasons. I don't wonder if she had like one week more. Uh, where where can she go? She was in with all the girls. Um, she probably, uh, if they made it to merge, she would have been in with a much more girls. We mm-hmm. could have saw a lot of a girl domination, honestly. Well, I've been early on. Yeah, I mean, it is wild uh, in terms of where the women place in the season because uh, this is a season that is lopsided in that there are ten men in the cast and only uh, eight women. The first two boots are women. Uh, only four women uh, make the jury, but. Um, all four of them make the final five and it's all women in final three. Uh, at one point, yeah. I think it's, uh, seven men in, or six men in a row, uh, go out after, uh, the merge. So, uh, it really ends up turning around for the women. Yeah. And I really wonder, would it have been Kelly versus Natalie instead of Josh versus Jeremy? Uh, or maybe, sorry, after Josh versus Jeremy, would it have been Kelly versus Natalie? Because what we know of Kelly, she's really smart. She would have definitely clocked Natalie, right? Been like, she's going to win the game. She's probably my biggest competition. Uh, so I wonder if that would have happened or would they have like been the best alliance, you know, in history that were just mm-hmm. so we, you know, just like steamrolling everyone else and just playing them. I don't know. I think, oh, sorry to cut you off, uh, Rob, but I, I think uh, Kelly is just, uh, I think. Natalie is such a subtle, great player, a subtle, great player to the point where like you could even argue it was she aware of how good of a player she was playing her game. <laughs> yeah. uh, just in the sense, like things just happened because it was able to happen for her that if I was Kelly watching this game, I wouldn't have gave um, Natalie that much credit, especially uh, playing around her. And, yeah. I, uh, and a lot of people could perceive Kelly as sneaky already. I think people would have received her even more sneaky once she actually did things, you know. So. <laughs> so the alliance that voted out Drew Christie uh, is Natalie, Missy, uh, Jeremy, and Kelly. Julie, and Kelly. Uh, it's sort of like a, a, a Jeremy's Angels alliance uh, that is there over at uh, Hunapu. I think the mm-hmm. issue is going to be that when they get to the merge, uh, is Baylor still in the game? Is Dale still in the game? And yeah. then how do those loved ones relationships complicate this five person alliance that Jeremy uh, like started working on from the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. So Missy, I feel like would kind of go where the wind blows attention wise, but, but yeah, I don't to, know about the rest. You know, bring Baylor into whatever, right, whatever exactly. they're doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. we, do we really want Baylor in this? And then Dale, if he was still in the game, is oh, only no. going to just uh, completely f- foobar everything else uh, for <laughs> Kelly. So at some point, yeah, that uh, like the best thing that could happen for Kelly was uh, that uh, they voted at Dale instead of Nadia to start the game. Oh, that I, yeah, I think Kelly only goes far without Dale. Like that's for sure. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, In uh, the sixth episode, Dale is going to have a fake immunity idol. That's going to loom very large uh, in this episode. He's going to tell John Mish that he will give him his fake idol uh, if he makes it through uh, this. Uh, So, so, uh, I mean, Dale, it was very resourceful. Yeah, because I immediately because I wrote it down when he found it. I was like, oh, Dale is good enough um, to call this out. I wonder who he will say it to. So I thought he'd say it to John Rocker, which is the other gullible person, I think, on this kind of island. Um, But I think John was the exact correct person to say it because John actually has so much social capital that he goes right and tells everyone, no, I saw it. I saw mm-hmm. it. It's it's real. It's real. You know, but so I think he almost legitimized yeah. it. Like he was gullible, but then he legitimized it because he actually has enough social capital, which is why good on Dale, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's uh, you know scrappy. Uh, it's, it's, you know, his daughter <laughs> gets it from somewhere, and so 
meanwhile, um, we go to the challenge and uh, at the reward challenge, uh, Hunapu tells Jeff, but we have no rice. We're starving. Uh, and Jeff like gives, you know, a little bit of a lecture of, but you had enough for 39 days. What happened? They ate it all. It wasn't our fault. Uh, Missy did it. And so just, all right, fine. We're going to come out there. And then you say, uh, and Jeff, it is very sad when Jeff drags away all of the stuff. I know. I felt so bad for Jeremy. You can see him. You'll be right there. You'll be. But I think it was a good thing. They got, they were lucky that players from a tribe that did not have to do what uh, players that didn't necessarily do this cause was on there and looking at, uh, at Jeff with uh, puppy dog eyes to get Jeff to be like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'll do it for y'all instead mm -hmm. of getting them really upset. So um, just seeing him drag everything away, I felt bad. I mean, like, come on, us pillows. They got them sleeping on wood. Oh, mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> Should it have been immediate <laughs> tribal? Because, like, Jeff was pissed. Like, mm -hmm. Jeff was like, no one eats as much as you all. And it's only been 14 days. Like, how is this happening? So you suggest, Sasha, in the future, so a tribe wants more rice, and then they have to uh, go right to tribal. I mean, the one thing, and I haven't been the biggest Fire Token fan, is that, okay, you guys want uh, want it more rice? Okay, everybody has to give in their fire tokens. Yeah, like, that's I what I'm like saying. I wanted to hurt more than this because you're correct. If I am now watching Rob has a podcast and then I go on Survivor 44, then I'm then I know that you know what? Actually, maybe it isn't so bad that I put that I eat more rice or my tribe eats more rice because they're more than likely just gonna take my reward away. Fine. So mm -hmm. I like. Which is fine. It's smart. You should do it. But my point is, like, you need to hit where it hurts then a little bit. Like, everyone Ooh. goes to exile. You are getting no rewards from now on until the merge. I don't, well, the merge is freaking next episode. But, you know, something, <laughs> right? Like, I think they needed something like immediate tribal or I don't know, something mm -hmm. more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, yeah, that, um, they should play around with that. I think the fire tokens is interesting because yeah. you need that, that, that hurts your chance to win the game, uh, having to use the fire tokens. And I do think that more rice is on the menu. Uh, so I think that they might be already built into what they had at least in season 40. So we'll see, mm -hmm. uh, where it goes from there, but they end up, they trade all their stuff, Josh for rice. And then they win a reward right after that. Uh, and then they're going to have a merge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep, they. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Again, I I, I would have been Jeremy in that sense. Just even more fuming, you know. Jeremy's and, somebody who does shares all his emotions on his face, so you can see yeah. that, how angry he is for all this. And on top but, of that, then th there's a bad rainstorm, and Julie wants to quit because they traded the tarp. <laughs> it seems like again, all happy accidents. Things just kept happening and happening, and made them say. If only we did this. <laughs> so many, like, uh, so, this season literally has two different paths. If mm -hmm. everything went right, it would have been a completely different ending, honestly. So, uh, it, thank God again, it didn't. <laughs> yep. Everything went wrong and we got a great winner. Yeah. There we go. We're happy about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I also, again, to be a fly in Jeremy's head when they get the reward, like, it just, oh my God. And then when it goes to the merge, like, I can't imagine. I don't think I would sleep every day to be like, I'm the best told you so person. You will always listen to me. Like, period. Because look at my track record. I'm always right. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, set him up. <laughs> annoyed Jeremy is always fun TV. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, that, that is fun. Uh, then also, we love it when uh, they get the uh, kebabs and Alec Christie tells us, I'm a meat collector. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it. what was that? Does he <laughs> is it like the meat subscription box? <laughs> yes, butcher box, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So um then it comes down to all right, what are we gonna do? Dale has the idol. So Missy and Baylor are gonna put two votes on Keith Nail, who uh Keith Nail does not appreciate that. Again. Oh my god. Baylor knows what happens when you get a vote on you. It does mm -hmm. not feel good, especially when you don't tell good. the person. So I think she just honestly, uh, she did the same thing. And that's kind of what sealed that fate of Missy versus Keith. <laughs> she started a storyline with them. So 
I uh, again, I feel like what is going on with this season? These this cast makes everybody is just taking these the wrong way, and it's uh, causing a lot of drama. We love um, to see that viewers. <laughs> another important thing that happened in this episode is that uh, Baylor is going to end up going to exile, and uh, Natalie is going to go with her in this episode, and uh, that's going to be an important thing that happens uh, for later on in the season, Sasha. Yeah, because Reed actually wanted to send Julie to do this whole, we want you to prove yourself to John, like as in you don't need John, you can do it mm -hmm. yourself. But Natalie's like, nah, I'm in. And again, this is another thing I want to know from Natalie. Was that calculated or because she's Natalie says, I think she feels like she can trust Baylor because of Missy. Um, but I want to know, was this like, a, then I need to, you know, I know merge is coming up. I need to get in good with Baylor. Cause if she did what a genius play, because th they like right to the end together. Yeah. Um, it's hard because we don't really get to see it, but I, I feel like that she's like, okay, well, I'm good with, uh, Missy and I need to like, uh, you know, shore up, uh, more of these bonds and we mm -hmm. need the numbers, uh, you know, basically like they, uh, we're trying to get Alec Christie. They know they need numbers against, uh, Missy or against uh, Josh and Reed. Yeah, it, it has to be like, because I think that Natalie is definitely like thinking that way. And, because I think a lot of other people on the um, on the cast aren't thinking that way, that she, I think, gets looped into that non-strategy moment. But I think she definitely, like, wanted to create a bond, if nothing else, at least have something going. Okay, we still have a lot of room to go here to talk about the post-merge of Survivor Sam Wandel, sir. If you're watching us here on video, we're going to take a quick break here at the two-hour mark. Uh, we'll come back in about three minutes and pick up with the second half of the season. So uh, this was so fun so far. Hang in there and we will be right back. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Reduced fat cookies still taste the same. All right, let's talk about the post merge of Survivor San Juan del Sur. And I, I don't think I'm this is crazy talk to say this is uh, the better half of the season. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, all right. It's going to be a minute, though, before uh, things really start to pick up because uh, we're going to have a, an episode of Survivor here where we're going to end on a kind of an anticlimactic note. And uh, this episode is going to end with uh, Julie quitting the game. Uh, it's interesting. We're coming on the heels of last week where we had Survivor go wrong. Uh, a similar situation where we end the uh or start off the post merge with a uh, non tribal council. Uh, a couple times this happened in Survivor history, and uh, Sasha, a little bit of like a you know false start where it's like uh, oh a lot is going on. It's like oh wait, out of nowhere Julie's gonna quit. Yeah, very agree because I think here there's so much going on, right? I think they're searching bags, the trail mix thing, like, and we know in Survivor, like these little things really get on people's nerves. So there's so many of these like fun little moment where it's like Missy's like, please, we need you to just stay until tomorrow morning and quit tomorrow. Let's just get through tribal together, you know? And then Josh, I think, is talking about how the couples need to stay together. So I feel like, again, really could have changed the trajectory of this season. Um, so I am, in the end, grateful that Julie quit. I will say, because it helped my faves out. Yeah, Absolutely. it was fortuitous. Uh, Jeremy was in a bad spot where that it looked like the Josh and Reed alliance was ready to uh, draw first blood here after the merge. And Julie, who was a number for Jeremy's side, ends up uh, being the one to leave. Can we talk through the trail mix gate? Uh, cause yeah. I don't think I really understand 
the mechanics behind uh, the trail mix gate and uh, what the problem was. Josh, did you yeah. get the sense of what the issue was with the trail mix? So I ultimately ended up getting it, but I, at the time I'm saying to myself, why did they make it such a big deal? Like she was smart to keep the, the trail mix to herself, but in a game where food is so limited, so scarce, and you're meant to share every single thing, yeah. you see why they got so mad, especially when you got real food. So ultimately, Julie starts off, they have this big feast, and she decides to be smart. She's like, I'm going to just hold this for later for myself, all this trail mix here. And yeah. of course, she wasn't sneaky enough. Uh, players saw that there was no trail mix. They were aware that she probably took it and said, maybe Julie has it. Uh, somebody goes in a little bag picking. I believe it was Natalie, right? She uh, goes and picks in a bag, or somebody does. And <laughs> they see a bunch of trail mix there. Mm -hmm. And of course... All hell breaks loose in camp, man. Everybody calls her all types of names. I'm pretty sure Julie wasn't giving herself a really good edit anyways with uh, yeah. the past scene. Like she was um more like the player who was complaining about a lot of small things anyways. So her her hoarding all the trail mix really got on a lot of people nerd. So just in terms of like where this trail mix came from, they had a merge feast. And then yeah. was this at the merge feast? Yeah. She was like stuffing her pockets or was there stuff left over from the merge feast that they brought back to kid? Like was everybody like putting stuff in their pockets and then she, like everybody had eaten theirs and she wasn't sharing what she had with the rest of the group. Like I have a lot of questions about uh, yeah. the logistics it of seems how this like all went down. They were all communally taking stuff with them because um, I remember that Josh actually has, he, you know, asked a few people to help pick up the barbecue even oh but mm -hmm. maybe the barbecue was from um the previous the reward yeah. sorry yeah but either way so i remember that they're all doing it and then probably because of trail mix gate but they like zoom in on julie's blue bag you know the food <laughs> like her stuffing the food in but yeah. i really think that everyone was doing it but mm -hmm. i just think that these people are very greedy and hungry like yeah. this as a cast so I don't know how other people shared. Like that was another question I was confused about because they seem like every hey everyone's for themselves. Um, except Missy, she's like I'm gonna help my kid out. You know, I'm sure it's yeah. her, but everyone else like seems to be very for themselves. So I don't know how the rest of the food got shared, and then all of a sudden they're zeroed in on trail mix. Yeah, Josh, I think this was a bad uh, food season. I cannot recall a time when one player caught a fish. A crab, yeah. uh, a, a, like a, anything in yeah. this season where um, they do seem like extremely desperate for food. So desperate for food. It seemed as if uh, it's again, you're casting regular people and regular people bring out a dynamic out of you. You know, you're you even if you're somebody who's a big fan of Survivor, if you're uh, around your wife who is super duper hungry, you're probably going to be getting feeding off of that energy. And I think because there were so many castmates who obviously eat a lot on a regular day basis, food was very much the main issue. And I think that obviously was a played a lot of a factor with um, some people's decisions game wise, gameplay wise. Mm -hmm. So at the merge, uh, we end up in a situation where um, we have a bunch of the couples here. We have uh, John and Jacqueline, Missy and Baylor uh keith and wes and uh did i say josh and reed no no but okay. now you did okay yeah. so now i did no. so there's four there's four <laughs> couples uh and there's four singles and uh, the couples are really starting to zero in on jeremy and there's this idea sasha that josh is going to mention which is really going to haunt jeremy through his survivor career of hey Jeremy's a firefighter with an amazing family. Like, uh, who wouldn't vote for him to win? And uh, we'll see in Survivor Second Chance that if he does get <laughs> to the end, he will win 10 0. Yeah, 100%. Oh. I mean, I listen, if I wasn't Natalie, I wouldn't be going with Jeremy either, right? Like, as in, that's my only, that's the only person that should have kept him uh, yeah. in the game. Like, everyone else, it doesn't make any sense. Like, he is so smart and again like to probably to his detriment a little that's why i think they're also because i really want to know why missy and baylor voted him out like as in how did they flip because i feel like we didn't get all of that like 
Oh, they closure. Oh, yeah, they did flip. Yeah, because the the what the f Missy like that gif is like really. Um, but oh, either way, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. So that's what I mean. So I just want to know, like, what happened? Like, is it you know, Jeremy just being a little bit of a know it all, a little bit of a Hermione, and doesn't work for everyone. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I don't know why they would keep them. Are, are you talking about uh why Missy and Baylor would flip against them here, or when yeah, they do here. flip against them? Yeah, when um, they sorry, yeah, when. So I'm not sure that Baylor and Missy would have uh have flipped against uh Jeremy oh, here. Oh, sorry, you're right. This is still Josh leaving. My yeah, man. I think <laughs> yeah, that I meant uh, next episode. So uh, ultimately, oh. Josh uh, gets voted out by a six to five yes. vote. But I think that 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 six to five ultimately was flipped the other way with uh, mm-hmm. with uh, John and Jacqueline yeah. uh, ending up uh, switching around. So I think that the same people were locked in for uh, that. You know, Missy, Missy and Baylor are going to vote it. with uh, Jeremy on the next vote. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that the, they're ultimately going to turn on Jeremy when the John and uh, Missy relationship uh, is so strong that when when John tells Missy that, hey, Jer- I have the idol and Jeremy idol, yeah, went there yeah. also and he's going to know he's going to out, he, out that I have the idol to everybody. And she's and I think that that's what makes uh, Missy turn on Jeremy. Oh, yeah. Missy, come on. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Protect John's idol. But yeah, uh, at the end of this episode, uh, Jeff talks to Julie about, uh, you know, like, uh, what is it like? You and John are never uh, apart from each other. Uh, they are apart from each other permanently now, Josh. Yeah. You were wondering. Oh, they're not. They, 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 they oh. did not. It did not work out. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I thought you said the opposite just now. Well, that's really sweet. Though. No, but no. Okay, well, that's, that's no. Right. <laughs> Did not stand <laughs> the test of time, and it looked like uh, you know Survivor's ultimate love story, uh, John Rocker and and <laughs> Julie McGee. Oh. <laughs> John is with someone that looks a lot like he has a type. I will yeah. say that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, the yeah. story that I've always heard with this is that Julie did not want John Rocker to go on the pre-jury trip w- by himself. Mm. Whoa, that's tea. She was concerned that, you know, like, uh, hey, if we're, we'll end up, you know, uh, breaking up if we are not, if he goes off on this trip without me. Oh, mm. Oh, we got a little Tristan Thompson situation. Yeah, and I think that also she probably felt like I'm not going to win this game. Yeah, Look yeah. This. <laughs> She's like, screw this. Have you seen the first six episodes? I'm not winning. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, and she was very self aware. Yeah, I will say, mm-hmm. um, that she did say one piece where she said that they make fun of her body and like think she's vain. Um, so that part I like felt bad about because I think. I wonder if she was a little, you know, on the outs with them, but mm-hmm. still, I, I, yeah, she should have stayed a little bit longer. But hey, you it do helped you, Jeremy. Girl. She helped Jeremy, but <laughs> exactly. By Josh said it was an eighty percent chance that Jeremy was uh, going home, uh, and it, it seems l- l- like uh, consistent with what happens. Mm-hmm. Exactly, she yeah. really did help uh, Jeremy uh, a million dollar. Uh, what? Look at the uh, predicting things, putting things out there yeah. in the universe. And so uh, <laughs> Jeremy could potentially have been uh, the f- last person to not make the jury. Like he wouldn't even be yeah. there to vote for Natalie in the end. Uh, instead, he ends up being two going two episodes further in this. And Jeremy did make a big impact. I mean, they brought back Kelly Wentworth uh, from this season in the second chance vote. So it is conceivable that they bring back Jeremy after uh, seven episodes. But the case for Jeremy on a second chancer is uh, stronger with nine episodes, certainly than seven. Absolutely. For sure. Mm-hmm. So. All right. So. After Julie ends up uh, quitting, uh, we really see a lot about John and Jacqueline uh, because they're going to start to be at the center of these uh, next couple of votes of, you know, what's the best path? Uh, Which which way should they go? And so uh, John and Jacqueline, uh, they were going to vote out Jeremy, but uh, they're ultimately going to have their minds changed uh, in this episode. And we have a, a, a reward uh, which ultimately is going to do a number on West Nail. Uh, it ends up sort of uh, being 
uh, almost uh, men versus the women for this reward challenge. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeremy, Natalie, Keith, Reed, and Wes uh, are going to end up uh, going on reward. Uh, and uh, they go for a Tex-Mex feast. And <laughs> uh, Sasha, uh, have you ever had you been in the situation that Wes Nail found himself in? Oh my, I, it's, you know, actually, yes, when I'm around like kosher meat, because I was like, oh, I don't get this much often, but I definitely, maybe more with alcohol, right? Yeah. Like, I feel <laughs> like we've all found ourselves there with alcohol, yeah. but I don't know about food, actually. Yeah, yeah. I saw your snack uh, collection on Instagram <laughs> today. Looks very impressive. You yeah, listen, listen. This pandemic, man, it, it's done too much. And now, you know, I own You're my. You're so own organized. Everything was in a container. That's my mom. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Shamira. But yeah, she, oh. she, she. We bought a new house a year ago, and my mom came over and was like, "You will not mess up this house." So I love it. Yeah. Yes. I. You should see my grains. I'll. I'll post that picture after. That one is actually <laughs> in mason jars and everything. It's whoa. Too much. Um. Josh West cannot slow down during the taco overload. Oh yeah, uh, Wes. <laughs> Wes is um obviously you know you're on Survivor. These are again just real life people. I I I, I can imagine me being a uh, West in the situation. I mean, like you're telling me this is about only time I can eat tacos and it's unlimited. <laughs> I'm gonna eat, man. I'm gonna just continue eating, and that obviously happened to him. I wonder like. I'm glad that they kind of like edit this part out because I'm pretty sure it was a lot worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, the after effect. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't slow down. People. Keith tried to say like, "Hey, come on, slow down," and he's like, "I can't. I can't." Again, yeah. Keith's confessionals are gold. I that's why I'm really excited for uh, T Bird uh, to interview them and you as well, of course. But because I just want to, are they still like this? Do they still talk yeah, like this? That's... Because he literally says yeah. Wes is a good kid. He hasn't been to jail yet. He's yeah. a good kid. Uh, we don't know what's been happening the last couple of years. We don't know. We, we got to yeah. know. We got to <laughs> But like, you know, I, it's just such a funny thing to say because he's like, look at this gluttonous kid out here just eating all this food. I'm trying to tell him slow and steady, slow and steady. Mm -hmm. Oh, poor Wes. So, uh, Josh, I mentioned earlier in the podcast that I felt like that there were some points where uh, Josh didn't have uh, Josh from the season did not have uh, great moments. And yeah, he's really hard on Baylor throughout the whole season of from yeah. when he tells Baylor in the beginning of the season, like, oh, I voted for you. But, you know, it's just to throw everybody else off. And then here in this episode, he's like uh, really like uh, giving her like uh, the business about like, uh, hey, you owe me on this. I've you know how many times I've saved you in this game. You owe me at least one vote. Vote out Jeremy or else. Absolutely. You can tell Josh is a very much a currency type of player. He does these actions expecting like that. reward from that. So when he gets these um when he does this thing treating Baylor correct all these other times and in the minute that they switch it does not work out his way. You can tell like Josh is he knows that he's franticking and his alliance uh, like um, right now with his life in this game that you he would expect Baylor to work for him and mm -hmm. when she doesn't you could tell he's starting to worry like again at the end of the day chess is not a, th when you play these games you guys you can't expect people to be chess players because they're not chess pieces they are human beings and this just shows it Baylor's a human being she doesn't she doesn't like you no more Josh she likes Natalie Natalie's yeah. a lot more nicer <laughs> to her and yeah. at the same time, we also get a lot with Jacqueline uh, and, and Baylor also that uh, they're somewhat mistreated, uh, especially where John is going to be at Exile Island. And Jacqueline uh, really ends up like uh, going back and forth a couple times in the post-merge game about who she wants to work with. But Jacqueline learns uh, a couple things. One, like the guys don't really uh, want anything to do with her if John's not around. And if they do... Uh, it's kind of like a frat house and everybody is, uh, and I think that's really like Wes, Alec and Keith were the main offenders. Uh, but Jacqueline uh, tells, uh, Hey, I think they just lost my vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not even that. Can we talk about how Alec just hands Baylor trash? Like literally it just gives her a coconut 
first, why are my notes are really going off on Alec right here? But it's I, like he just gives him gives Baylor trash, and then he's like, "Oh, you're like my little sister. My dad does this to me." So I was like, "Yeah, you have like very much Napoleon complex of mm-hmm. like you know Drew does this to you, so now you're doing it to Baylor." But like, why does Baylor take it? Because I would have dumped it on his head and be like, "Who do you think you're doing this to?" But Baylor goes and throws it in the see for him yeah Yeah, the the baylor and alec relationship is odd at times it's edited to be like oh they're brother sister Mm -hmm. oh they're flirting Mm -hmm. like oh i i don't know josh did you get a read on uh, or a josh on uh what's going on with them yeah no this um this (laughs) this did not make a lot of sense because they do pitch this as more like okay they are uh, they hate each other, da da da. This and the next thing you know, they're brothers and sister, and then now they're they're like flirting with each other. It was such a weird storyline for me. I was not um, here for it, um, mainly for the fact that I was already just a few episodes. They were arguing, so <laughs> watching this all back together was just even more of a mess. And Baylor <laughs> says it in a confessional. She says, "We go from brother sister to boyfriend girlfriend." I think the episode yeah. Alec is voted out. So even yeah. her, I'm like, this is getting very he like is coming around on him on like the episode where he gets voted. She's like, "Yeah, I, I exactly. kind of, I, I don't want him I to know, leave." I I, like, who is who is this new Alec? He's being so different now. Yeah, all <laughs> his so allies are voted out. That's what happened, Baylor. My God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also with Jacqueline, your original question um, was <laughs> that I think this is almost the moment Jacqueline pinpoints a lot of why you know she jumped ship or you know why she didn't end up working with the guys um in her final jury questioning she says voting you out was my idea voting you out to to josh sorry was her idea and this is exactly this like frat house you're leaving me on the outs you're only talking to me when john is around like i'm not for this so this is almost i feel like for her she can pinpoint it to this moment yeah and and even adding to that, it, again, Josh was not playing with his Sims correctly. <laughs> he really mm. uh, was keeping them <laughs> way too close to each other. I'm sorry if I keep on calling these players Sims. They just were playing so like, so like two dimensional in a way where like their social game was just not there, and it was because of that social game that you couldn't really support the strategic game on uh, the strategic gain of Jacqueline and John working with each other. And when Natalie, uh, Jacqueline's around Natalie and Baylor and even Missy, a mom figure, you know, that's just something that seems more um, her, her style and lane that, um, yeah. Jacqueline is an interesting person in this game because she's not like particularly loyal to any group, but it's mm-hmm. like whoever is being nice to her at the current moment is like, yes, I want to go with them. And if, and if they're being rude to her, then that's like a major turnoff and she doesn't want to go with them. Uh, so she, it's like whoever, whoever is like being cool to her that she <laughs> will work with you and she will vote with you. Yeah. And don't be like annoying and flirt with her. Like that is also, she does not like that. I don't know. She kind of did like that did with like that. Alec Christie. <laughs> like did. later on. What, but then she like dragged him, right? Was like, yeah, well, you were flirting with me. Probably because John was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah she was she just was like, like, I think she was trying to cover. Uh, yeah, that's about. true. <laughs> um, but either way, so uh, John comes back from Exile Island and uh, that he has the idol. Uh, and so Jacqueline is explaining how, uh, the guys are rude. And so basically, uh, he is, uh, on board with what Jacqueline wants to do to vote against, uh, one of the guys, especially because Missy, who has a big influence on John is also on the Jeremy side of things. Uh, Sasha, do you have any thoughts on the Missy and John relationship? Yeah, I think Missy's. I want to say, unfortunately, um, where, you know, Missy's whole like vibe or her whole story arc is like three divorces. I need to trust men still. I love to be the caretaker. You know, those are kind of the marks that she has to hit. I feel like in every episode. And to me, um, I think Baylor even says this, right? Like John is the type of guy that she goes for. um, Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, who does her dirty because it doesn't seem like her three marriages like Baylor seems to have a lot of um, baggage from them. So 
to me, yeah, unfortunately, I think like real life is um, showing up in the game where Absolutely. she just has a lot of kinship toward him. But I don't know that he returns that. Like he uses it, but I know that he returns it. Hmm. I think um Baylor. Uh, I think Jacqueline even said it to like uh, John sees uh sees Missy as a mom. He loves mm -hmm. a mom figure. So I think he did kind of see it in that way uh, where their dynamic really did um feed off of each other. But even ba Baylor's saying like this is something that Missy's trying to learn her own in her regular life, where like men are really where her she gets blinded by, and she can't even see it in a game where uh, Baylor absolutely can see this uh this dynamic happening right in front of her. And um, it's just like something that um, comes in keen with um, Missy. And I'm, I wonder like where that dynamic went uh, goes yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Because that Josh, yeah, I keyed in on that same thing that uh, Jacqueline says of like, you know, John is always asking his mom for advice on everything. And I think he really felt like that there were times in the season where he even puts Missy ahead of Jacqueline. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Because they fight about it. And actually that was going to be my point. Like my question next was that, if Jacqueline is against Missy, right, like for whatever reason, will John be, you know, vote against Missy or will he pull a Missy and be like, okay, I'm going to vote for Baylor or someone else instead? Yeah. And I feel that he would ultimately go with Jacqueline. And that's why I don't know that it's reciprocated in the same way. <laughs> because uh, mm -hmm. at the point where they get into the fight later yeah. on in the season, Jacqueline is like, I want to have a strategic conversation with John. And he is like, no, I just want to hang out with you. I just want to hang out with my girlfriend. But then he goes and talks with like Missy on the beach for like 30 yeah. minutes, which yeah. Jacqueline is really, uh, you know, like, I, I, I don't know. Although he, do he does listen to Jacqueline and, and ultimately go come down on her side, even though he would rather stick with the guys. Uh, he does side with Jacqueline and ultimately voting out Josh here uh, in at this first time that they're not seeing eye to eye. Exactly. That's why I feel like ultimately, I think with Jacqueline, I think in his mind, at least he's like, we're like actually together, like to, you know, for real in real life. So I don't know that I need to, this is his gullible, you know, sense of self talking, but I really feel that he would ultimately go with Jacqueline, no problem, period. So that's why he doesn't sit and talk with her as much as he would anyone else that, you know, is not his like ride or die. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, again blood versus water. Another unique situation where you have this dynamic that uh, that's a part of your real life that is already established. How do you treat that in a game perspective? And if somebody doesn't equal that, like have an even playing field of what that relationship, it's going to cause a lot more drama and sometimes personal drama that ruins some people' uh, game. <laughs> Let me ask Please. about uh, Josh, who ends up going out here in this episode. Uh, did he pick the wrong target in Jeremy? Like, should he have gone for maybe uh, more of a soft target of somebody else who was aligned uh, with uh, Jeremy? Would, would, would that have made more sense? What made the most sense is honestly for all these players. Take out this John and Jacqueline um, couple who were ultimately so flippy floppy. Why mm -hmm. not just say, you know what? <laughs> let's just make this even for ourselves you guys let's just work together take these two people out and see how the game goes then because they were just really making the game too hard for the, the players yeah so. that's interesting uh but i think that would have been needed for then josh and reed to work with jeremy and natalie and i don't yeah. think that that was going to happen i feel like that the that the jeremy versus uh josh thing was just so strong at that point um yeah. And there's not really any like because of the blood versus water complications, like if, um, you know, John, if, if like Reed and Alec uh, and and Josh wanted to say vote off Missy, then I don't think that John's going to want to do that. Uh, so yeah. it, it's, and I don't uh, think Baylor either. Right. Because I was thinking sure. Baylor is the only person maybe that they could have voted out. But even then, I think John would have. Yeah, because of Missy not voted Baylor. Absolutely. Out, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. So Josh goes home. Jeremy, uh, really feels like, all right, we got this. Like the, uh, we slayed the dragon. That is Josh. Reed is, uh, really not happy about this. Uh, we have this reward challenge on a very muddy day. And so mm -hmm. with the teams that are the reward, uh, Natalie, uh, ultimately is going to give up her reward to John and Jeremy gives up his spot to Jacqueline they both get this and then it's like a thank you 
We appreciate this so much. You voted with us. Now we are going to take care of you. They go off on the reward and Jeremy is going to go to Exile Island. And so uh, things are looking very good for that side. Jeremy and uh, sorry, J uh, John and Jacqueline seem like they really appreciate the reward. Um, but mm -hmm. ultimately, after the reward is over, uh, we're going to see Jeremy go look for the idol. Uh, John has already found the idol on Exile Island. Uh, Jeremy had a bad night on Exile Island and realizes that John must have the idol. Yeah. Another fumble from John. Like, why send, why not tell Jeremy one? Um, and then two, why send him? I like actively mess up, right? Like any other person, I think it would have dampered you know, like the heat a little, like, I don't know that they would have come after you or I don't mm -hmm. know that Jeremy was still coming after John. I think he was just a little hurt that like, this was supposed to be my friend ally, at least not friend. Yeah. Um, uh, But I just feel like that was a fumble on John's part. I'm uh, not telling Jeremy. Unfortunately though, I think it was the biggest fumble on, on Jeremy's part. Oh, like, yeah. if, if I bet Jeremy's watching this back saying to himself, I should have never had asked him. I should have never said that thing knowing um, in hindsight, but ultimately like, what do you what do you do in that situation? Yeah. Do you go to somebody that you think is your ally and say, hey, like you could have told me, man, yeah. it's gonna hurt no matter what? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you do ultimately what Natalie goes on to do in this game of like, okay, I'm gonna keep all this information to myself and I'm not going to like uh, the stuff that I learn about people, I'm just gonna save it, and put it in my pocket for uh, the day when I need it. Uh, yeah. I think that Jeremy was probably uh, very affected by what happened earlier in the game with the idol situation with Keith nail, where that Keith found the idol and Jeremy also like, uh, went to it after the, like the same, the same spot after Keith had the, the idol. And then Keith was telling people that Jeremy had the idol. So that I think that, um, after that, uh, Jeremy had like put himself on exile Island, he was on the reward. He gave up his spot for John. And he's like, and this guy doesn't even tell me about the idol. Uh, and I gave him a, him and his girlfriend a reward. And so I think he just had a bad night. I think he was like, uh, on the wrong side of the bed and, you know, yeah. tried to do too much. Amen. Yeah, I think exile really messes with you, which is this is where like I think the exile piece really worked against um, any player, but really Jeremy, because we see Natalie also break down a lot when she's on exile um, the second time because, you know, she's crying. She's like she said she spent 50 percent of her time crying. So I I really feel that exile plays a lot with your mind. And I yeah. And I think yeah. Jeremy was very much still wearing his heart on his sleeve anyway, but like I think Exile made it worse. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That move of like them giving up their reward, it works for somebody like Natalie, who's a lot more soft and smiles yes. all the time, than Jeremy, who's somebody who wears his emotions on his sleeves. And you can see once a player, uh, uh, once he comes back and he realizes, well, why did John do that to me? Knowing all of this stuff, you can see on his face the anger probably. Or just see the emotion um through his energy and sorts that I don't think it necessarily worked out for him in the in the large aspect. Of, exactly. of course he did it. He ended mm -hmm. up going home. <laughs> yeah, it just have to be more diplomatic, which Jeremy just yeah. isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he can be, but uh, you know, uh, and we see this in Winners at War also too, uh, when Jeremy is uh not feeling it, you know, uh he like uh, that you know, will will show it at times yeah. uh, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. if he, if something is bothering him, uh, we saw with like him and Ben really getting into it in oh. survivor winners at war. But, yeah. um, at this point, you know, uh, now he ends up confronting John about the idol. Uh, he, it sounds like he actually buys what, uh, John is selling uh, yeah. about that. Okay. Maybe, maybe John doesn't have the idol, but John ends up saying that, like, Oh, I, Missy, he, that, uh, Jeremy's going to find out that I have the idol and that's going to, that's going to blow everything up. So we got to vote out Jeremy tonight. Mm, I just don't get it. I think again, it's the Missy and John relationship that really yeah. solidified this act, this, um, this situation, because I just, I think if John was not the one to tell Missy that this would not have happened because didn't Missy see Jeremy um, as just as close as the ally. Yeah. yeah I mean, they were together sure. from the beginning of the game. Jeremy yep. and Missy. 
doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah and did. then yeah, and Miss Even <laughs> says right, she wants to split the vote to flush um the idol out. Blah blah blah. Like it's very bizarre behavior. I I don't know. I feel like Jeremy was a ally to John, so I don't understand what mm -hmm. happened here. So I think that if I had to guess, like, and Reed is also working very hard behind the scenes True. here. He's gone through oh, Keith Nail's bag, yeah. finds out that Keith Nail has the idol. So he's really like trying to uh, like, and, and Josh is gone. So he is like desperate for trying to make anyway. something happen. So uh, he is uh, while he's saying that, okay, oh, Keith has the idol. Uh, so it's like, okay, well, maybe it might be dangerous to put a vote on uh, Keith. So Jeremy ends up being a person. We know Jeremy doesn't have an idol. Yeah, that's mm, true. Very true. Yeah. And I think, again, uh, it, to John's aspect, he saw how much control he had in his fate, I believe. I think he wanted to truly keep that. And somebody like Jeremy, who's an alpha dog himself, you already know Jeremy's going to want to try to control votes and swords. That John's thinking to himself, like, I got to get this guy out as well. Like, he's yeah. just going to be stealing my thunder. Mm -hmm. So this time around that John and Jacqueline flip and then they vote out Jeremy. It's five votes for Jeremy, John and Jacqueline, Missy and Baylor and Reed. And this is where uh, the blind side for Natalie uh, that really sets the rest of the season into motion. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the thing that lit her fire up. I remember mm -hmm. watching this in primetime television being so angry with her. Just with her. I'm like, you better get your revenge, girl. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, the revenge tour is going to is gonna start. But uh, that it's very interesting that after th that tribal council, that the group that voted out Jeremy brings in Natalie. And it's like, okay, hey, we still like you. We, uh, you're still You're still with us, right? Uh, yeah. And she does a really good job of not exploding, but essentially this was foolish of them to feel like, okay, she's just going to be cool with this. I think well, again. Yeah. Oh yeah. You go. Uh, no, no. Uh, yeah. This is exactly it. I completely agree where Natalie's di diplomatic behavior plus John actually really being a little bit um, just again, feeling like maybe he's alpha or you know the leader and like everyone kind of agrees with him because john actually immediately shares with natalie that he has an idol to kind of yeah. gain her trust but natalie is like oh so jeremy wasn't lying and you did screw us but again she didn't show that so i think it's a little bit of like john being you know like gullible like taking things you know at face value and Natalie's diplomacy together. Uh, mm -hmm. Natalie is playing with such face value players. Like everybody was face value in the way they were acting in sorts that all you had to do was be a little not face value. Just be a little yep. bit more like hiding and they probably will believe it. And Natalie sold the entire thing, that smile. Like I was watching clips of her and just seeing her smile around camp. And it, you say to yourself like, you know, I could trust this lady. I could trust her. And that's exactly what John did. And she got yep. in with the enemy. I love it. Mm -hmm. and, Good job and she tells us about she just wants to get revenge against them. Uh, but she does <laughs> such a good job of like holding her tongue. Yeah. And, and not showing like any sort of like ill will towards the people that voted out Jeremy. But uh, here we go. Uh, she's uh, off to go and uh, get to work. Uh, we're going to see there's a reward challenge here in this episode where uh, Reed is going to give up his reward for Missy <laughs> here in this episode. Uh, yeah. And again, uh, this Josh, this goes on all season. Yeah, this is the one situation where I think it did not work out in favor because you could tell Jeremy and Natalie was doing it for strategic gain. Reed was doing it to be, I think Reed was aware that this is happening. He's trying to do this for strategic gain, but he was working with the wrong person. Why? Mm -hmm. um, why? Why, um, Missy, well, you could have done Natalie, somebody who just got blindsided, who doesn't have an ally no more. Hello, get her on your side as much as you can. Get uh, send her over there with yeah. some of your allies and sorts. I don't know, just uh, well, Reed is a little smarter yeah. than that. That's the problem, actually, is that like he knows that Natalie's alone and doesn't have anyone, so he wants to give it to someone that he can, you know, maybe thinks that he can get that we know Missy is like okay with working with the men and she's you know like giving john that stuff so maybe i can also help with that so reed is actually on level three and four but the others aren't 
is the yeah. issue. And Jacqueline actually calls it out on the other tribal, right? I don't think it's this. Yeah, it's the tribal before this one where Jeremy gets voted out, I believe, where um, she says, I don't know that the others would give up their um, advantage for me. Like, I know that Jeremy and Natalie, th that's why I'm going with this crew because like they, they <sighs> would do that. I don't think the other one other ones would when Reed was like, no, but we do like you, um, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. And she's like, uh, sure, whatever. So that's what I think. I think it's just Reed was not set up for success. It came off very fake and facetious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the reward is going to be uh, this uh, chance to go to like a Little League game uh, for yeah. some Nicaraguan uh, Little League. Uh, and this was cute. Aww. Like I feel like that we haven't really seen uh, like a lot of things uh, exactly like this in the history of Survivor. Uh, they do spend a lot of time talking about uh, the John and Jacqueline in the post-merge and uh, their specific relationship about how uh, they want to be parents. Uh, Jacqueline is unable to conceive, I, I, I believe, uh, and uh, that they they but they both really love children. Like, uh, I actually feel like that uh, this was, um, you know, this... Uh, like was more impactful for me on this watch than in, in the real time. Yeah. Yeah. Very much that because again, like I think it was a nice moment. I think on the rewatch we're liking or we're seeing Jacqueline and John in a different light, which equals us under like um, using and looking at this reward better because mm -hmm. I think if, we're not so high on the two of them. We're like, okay, why are you giving them so much attention? It doesn't make sense. So again, I just thought it really, again, solidifies John being this like sweet, gullible, you know, like take it face value guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, they are uh, still struggling with this issue that um, there was an article from I think it was earlier this year where uh, or, or I think that um, uh, Jacqueline had uh, miscarried uh, in uh, at, like uh, around Christmas time. They have uh, a surrogate. Yes. Yeah, the okay. surrogate miscarried. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. About that. Uh, yes. Oh. Um, and so uh, they're still on a uh, th their journey. Yeah. Good luck I mean, to them. We're I'd rather they're still together. I mean, uh, they they proposed, so I'm just happy. They're like, married, yeah. Yeah, yeah. now they're married. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they I have mean, wine business, actually. Oh, <laughs> okay. You know, okay. it worked. It all, it all worked out. For... <laughs> okay, I was yeah. just about to say, you yeah. know that. Oh, my God. Okay, well, we, we can say that. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, are going to see back at camp. Natalie is going to go and grab Baylor and say, uh, come on, we're going to go look for the bloody idol. That's it. <laughs> Remember that clue? We mean business now. And then it goes and digs up an idol. <laughs> this was so random to me to the point where I, I'm watching this. I've only seen this episode like four episodes ago, but I even forgot about the idol. I'm, I'm sitting there saying to myself, like, why did y'all just do this? <laughs> yeah, this why did this time. never occur to her to go look at this beforehand? She's like, now, now they pissed me off. Now I got to go find the idol. I'm telling you, the gameplay is v bizarre. Like, it makes no sense. Also, the way they find idols is hilarious. Because I remember when the, Keith found his idol, I thought something jumped out at him. I thought what it was an he? animal. Yeah. yeah. And it got really scary. And then Natalie, same thing. It's just like randomly. She's like, why is it so bloody complicated? Da, 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 and just goes and finds that damn idol. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. That plus, y'all, her and Baylor find this idol. <laughs> and then like the idol gets like anyways i wow and then I the mean, idol gets bailer out right what yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like, come cool. on now. <laughs> it's wild um so yeah. now reed he's sending missy off on the reward but uh <laughs> he's also behind the scenes uh working with everybody to get this split vote going and so he's trying to do the split vote so that he could get together with wes and and alec uh, and Keith and put four votes on John that John needs to go home. And so uh, he's work working on uh, working on Keith. Uh, we're going to see that uh, we get the great immunity challenge uh, here in this episode. Uh, this is a great episode, by the way, uh, this final nine episode where yeah. uh, everybody is, is up there and coming down for food. <laughs> uh, Sasha, we at the moment with uh, West Nail talking about how he ate 58 uh, McNuggets. Oh my God. 
Yeah. Not even that. And then he talks to Jeff about Jeff, the two and a half you on men. Two and a half men episode. What yeah. was that? And Jeff was like, "What?" <laughs> and then, oh my yeah. god, that was. Were you uh, naked making pancakes? Just like uh, yeah, bacon is <laughs> bacon. Oh my! And then we get the shut your mouth, homie G. Yeah, like, I'm not. They... <laughs> I'm not talking to you, smarty poo. Who? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yes. god. Oh my god. Yes. This episode was such a mess, man. I mean, shut that, your that mouth, goes... homie G. Yeah. <laughs> what? It goes like... to show you how much they wanted food, man. <laughs> yeah and not even that keith is so mad at them like t uh, stepping down he's like i'm 53 you're 26 roger that like got it because um i think john yeah steps down first for some john has the worst um yeah, like chocolate? food too yuck and gummy like chocolate i still understand it was his but... favorite candy bar sasha i mean on. come on you know he's they're gonna like bring out better food than that like a dog Ugh. <laughs> Wait, so oh my god keith was so mad how old are you 20 26 and john still i don't think knows that keith is like dragging i think john is yeah. like yeah i'm 26 and keith is mm -hmm. like yeah i'm 53 roger that keith mm -hmm. oh my oh, keith is gold keith really is gold yeah yeah so um there's also the great moment with uh natalie and reed <laughs> And uh, Reed spits, and then Natalie tries to spit, she just spits down her shirt. <laughs> she uh, literally me on the rainbow, <laughs> on the rainbow, the oh, no, little unicorn. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what I was just saying, like, oh, that is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that is unfortunate. <laughs> uh, terrible. Oh, I wonder how she cleaned it. Anyway. Yeah. No, it dried. That's why we have to like it's it windy. Yeah. They were up there three damn hours. Right. And then I love that Natalie like put in her order. Like uh she's like uh, like Jeff Probst was like the waiter in a restaurant. She's like, I'm gonna I want a pizza, uh wings, uh, and just a glass of wa uh, cold water plain cold yeah. water with ice. Yeah. I was like, okay, coming right up. And they got that's, it. That's how you do it. <laughs> that is the key. If I'm ever on a challenge now, I'm gonna be like, hey, hey. Jeff, if you want me down, <laughs> yeah. me Jeff just wanted that shit to be over because I don't understand. Like Jeff was like, "Yeah, just come down. What do you need?" Because I've never seen like Jeff will, you know, be like, "Oh, do you want this? Great, I'll get you that." And I think even Natalie was like, "This is an either or, you know, just get me even a glass of cold water and I'm down." All of a sudden, there's the whole menu shows up. I mean, mm -hmm. good for Natalie. Like, and yeah. she, I hope she ate all of it. Too. Get it? Yeah. Uh, Food so is precise. Reed comes down, and, and this only hit me today, but he does a the, split, yes. which is really like foreshadowing because he's trying to get everybody to split the vote. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. That, <laughs> that was his signal, to... split, the, split the vote so oh he can God. tell everybody to do this 4-3-2. <laughs> He should have just done that tribal council. Maybe, maybe then, um, maybe then, what you call uh, keep would stick to the plan. Yeah, just we would talk about this if if he if this worked. It would like read split. Oh, and like uh, it'd be in like the montage at the end of the season. Uh, but no, you think Reed got stuck? Because like how, that is so iconic to get do a split and then get your immunity necklace put on you while you're in a split. Yeah, like I was like, did he get stuck because he's so tired? Because that was crazy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, they I just show him it. back at camp. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're you know gonna do this uh, this uh, split vote. Um, that John is sort of like, boy, is a uh, like a uh, seems weird uh, that uh, like is is Alec with us? Is Wes with us? Uh, it's, it doesn't seem like it, but okay. <laughs> Again, yeah. Right. Yeah, gullible, so gullible. So at tribal council, now uh, there starts being a lot of talk about you know who has uh, the idols uh, that Jeff's asking about the idols and uh, what's what's going on uh, with with the idols. And so um, Keith uh, turns to Reed and basically says to him, uh, like, uh, I say we uh, stick to the plan. Now the plan is to split the votes. Like he's not in on the plan. Oh, oh my so bad. God. Mm -hmm. So bad. I was uh I was with Reed. I saw Reed making a mastermind plan. I'm like, what? Is he really about to do this? You know what? I'm rooting for him. Go Reed. And then 
Steve opens his mouth and says, stick to the plan. And I could just see everybody face just turn, 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 turn. Huh? What? Mm hmm. And oh while everybody's God. like face was turned, um, everybody still votes the same way. They still do yes. the four, three, two on uh, four votes, uh, four votes on uh, Keith. Uh, or sorry, it's uh, uh, four votes on John, John two votes yeah. on Keith, uh, and then two votes on Wes. Uh, yeah. The only thing that changes is Natalie uh, is, is able to tell John to play the idol. Yeah, this uh, this was the, uh, the ever-changing move because it starts so much drama, too, after this. But um, if if John doesn't play that idol, man, he would have went home. And John I think we'd have a really big shot at uh, making it far into the game. Yeah, still has all his numbers and sorts. So yeah, so Natalie and and this is so interesting, Sasha, because Natalie hates John. Yeah, I'm so surprised. No, but like I said, keep your enemies closer, right? But this is where again, I feel like Natalie is playing smarter than everyone else because she knows, right? Like you have to build a relationship with someone with the way they like to do it, right? Not the way you like to do it. So Amen. they know that. Sorry, Natalie knows that. Uh, uh, John and Jacqueline, you know, like loyalty. They care about you. Had my yes. back. Little like the God. I see. I see her. Natalie is very much the Godfather. Where she's like, yeah, come closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's sit together. Let's talk. And then she slices. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was a a brilliant move on her part. Uh, Keith is going to get up and uh, he turns to West like, should I play it for me or play it for you? Uh, you know, Wes says, uh, play it. It's your idol. You play it. Uh, ultimately Wes goes home, uh, two votes. That's all it is. Uh, only two votes uh -huh. that count at this tribal council for Wes. Poor Wes. I Poor feel Wes. bad for, I feel bad. You can see in Keith's face that he's just like, dang, man, I really lost it for my son. And even in the, uh, like just the whole idea, like you should, uh, uh, I said, stick to the plan, stick to the plan. It went over his head the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that he says it and he like laughs after he's like, uh, I say we stick to the plan. What is it like? Oh. But like I said, it actually, you know what? Did Natalie make stick to the plan more iconic than it would have been? Because if Natalie didn't clock the stick to the plan, she never tells John to play the idol, mm -hmm. which actually means the plan would have gotten when? off. No problem. Very yeah. true. Well, it may, it's a great setup for later on in the season, uh, and then it's gonna it's actually gonna be in uh, this next night. Is it's, it was two episodes in one night, yeah. uh, and so when <laughs> Natalie has to try to save, <laughs> uh, is, is gonna is gonna try to save. Uh, actually, is that on the the Alec vote? Um, yeah. Or on the or is it when uh, John gets voted out? I think it might be when John gets voted out. Um, she has to make like Keith. All right, you are going home. You have to act sad. Oh, yeah. uh, a little bit of like uh, from Palau a couple weeks ago with dour and sour. Okay, don't say anything about the plan, Keith. You're going out. Act like you're going home. Uh, and then he's able to nail it perfectly. Uh, Keith nailed it perfectly. Uh, when, <laughs> um, so he gets a mulligan for Keith. <laughs> good, good job by him. Um, oh. So then we get the, like the the two hour episode here. And so again, for Reed, everything has gone wrong again. Keith, <laughs> Keith blew it. Um, there's this also hilarious scene, Josh, where then. Afterwards, Jacqueline is like, oh, my God, Natalie, that was such a good call to get John to play his idol. Oh, my God. And then John yeah. has to pull Jacqueline. Like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you saying good job? Like, that was yeah. my move. And I Why think are you giving her credit? She's like, it wasn't your move. <laughs> it was um, it was me and Natalie's move. Why are you always trying to take my credit? That whole scene, I think, is cheering. really what caused... What, it's what caused Natalie to be like, okay, I'm setting up my adventures. Probably like she was thinking like, you know what? I'm just going to work with John. But after John trying to take the credit of uh, the move that she, I'm pretty sure Natalie believed that she definitely made. Um, it just was like, okay, yeah, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. And then Jacqueline, of course, being so upset about it. It's, the yeah. way they fight are so, it's so funny. This is my first time being in a relationship. Just, just seeing them fight and stuff is really like, wow. 
<laughs> yes. You, what I'd be doing up. Yes. yes. You you are living <laughs> through John and Jacqueline. Oh, absolutely. I'm like, I was just I had a I was watching this my uh well also I was watching it with my partner. We were just watching it together and uh I was laughing, say, you know, I'm gonna just say sorry <laughs> for last week. <laughs> I've <been> watching this. <laughs> See, Survivor is different. is helping relationships. Oh my god, this is so true. Because you know, Jacqueline's just like you, idiot. Like, what is wrong with you? This is my like time. I'm the one that made this move, and then you're over here just bsing, saying that when I go to final three, I need to be able to talk about it, not Natalie. And it's like, so just because you claim a move doesn't mean Natalie won't talk about it to jury. Again, where is the brain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If we just tell everybody it was my move, then okay. Yeah. And then, and he's like, "Yeah, but the jury." She's like, "What are you talking about? There is no <laughs> jury." What are you? He's like, "But everybody's gonna be on the jury." <laughs> oh my god! You know that if they went together, he'd be like, "Jacqueline, I'm gonna win this money for us." Uh, like yes, you know, yeah. that's very much just, him. Like, bring up everything that I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have our reward challenge. Uh, this is uh, going to be an important reward challenge because this is going to kill this challenge. Now, we always talk about this as uh, the touchy subjects challenge is dead. That This was actually not touchy subjects. Uh, touchy subjects is like uh, who uh, in the tribe is the smelliest. Uh, but this was like actual like trivia questions about mm -hmm. people like who runs a tanning salon? Uh, Who's a yeah. twin? <laughs> Yeah, who's a twin, which is weird because I, I don't ever recall them doing something like this with this particular challenge. But they end up where it's the five of Missy, Baylor, John, Jacqueline, and Natalie are sort of basically deciding who's going to get the reward. And Jeff's like, you know what? We're just going to call it uh, polite. Fine. We don't have to. We don't have to play this game. Um, Sasha, it's like one of the many times during the season where Jeff is just like basically like, ah, let me throw away the script. All right, fine. Let's see. You want to do something different? Let's let's do it your way. Yeah. yeah, Jeff, the principal, I'm telling you, where he has had it with this cast, and he's probably like, This is how you want to play. Are we over here set up this really great like to me i wish jeff would With have said blood that coming out yeah. Of skull. yeah you know like blood versus water Ooh, look at us like this is so gross and you know to me give them a little bit of it like yell at them a little you know to be like mm -hmm. look at all these people are we stupid that we said all this work you know how your parents would yell at you when mm -hmm. you're being ungrateful like that's what i needed from mm -hmm. from jeff and then yeah do I think what the outcome was correct that we didn't need to walk through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Especially when they were not given TV at all. I was looking at them like, why are y'all like whispering? Can y'all at least act like y'all don't like each other? Come on. Like y'all are really making this challenge just even more dreadful to watch and hard to root for you guys. But ultimately yeah. I think it's just a, a effect on them. Um, any, uh, any like a, a trivia question, obviously uh, Alliance is not going to take each other out. You could have done uh, something more touchy subject for this. Yeah, I mean, it's worked out well so many different times that for this one time, and I feel like that it even worked out well this time because ultimately, like, all right, just tell yeah. me. Uh, so tell me who's going to win. Okay, Missy, okay, great. Missy, who are you taking? Uh, going to have to take Baylor. Like, uh, okay, and then pick one other person. Like, uh, all right, well, Natalie. And John goes, next, I was like, oh, look, look at you, Jacqueline. I guess you got left out. I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess uh, nothing for you, Jacqueline. It's funny that everybody was getting along great, uh, but now all of a sudden there's some hurt feelings. All right, there. Just you gotta the eat game. each other. Yeah. yeah. So even the though they sort of like uh, you know co you know decided who was gonna win, uh, then like it still ended up with Jacqueline pissed off, and then we get into Reed versus Missy here, and this is gonna yeah. carry over into the uh, final tribal council. But mm -hmm. Josh. Um, Reed uh, calls Baylor a brat in front yeah. of <laughs> I think, again, people are not... It's when you're playing with your loved one that you're just like, your game just goes out of the window. <laughs> Obviously, this is a social game. Try to let it roll off your skin. There is no point in trying to fight. But Missy can't control that. You call my daughter a brat? Did you just call my daughter a brat? And she mm -hmm. really came at him. And um, yeah. I'm glad uh, I'm glad Reed just kind of like kind of held his own ground. Um, even though again, this is a social game, just like take the bullet while you can. I'm kind of glad here. He says, No, she is being a brat, da, 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 this, this, and that, and you're yeah. not helping her. And yeah. 
Oh, um, I just I just don't believe I don't understand why he had tried to set up this egg that was gonna end up rotting anyways. Oh the <laughs> last round when he gave up <laughs> Yeah, for the challenge. But well, she was being, a, he says that she was being a brat. And uh, Missy is talking about how, you know, it's, uh, she, Missy says, uh, hey, that's my kid. And Reed <laughs> says to her back, girl, I know it's your kid. And Baylor <laughs> says, you said girl. She's a mom. <laughs> okay. Only Baylor can say homie G to her yeah. mom, but no one. <laughs> mm hmm. She's a whole grown mom. <laughs> Which is Girl. true. Don't infantilize women, but still, my God. And then Reed also says she's 20 something. If she's going to be a brat, I'm going to say it. Yeah. I think she's flat 20. Yeah. She's 20. Like yeah. she's young. Yeah. I don't know if that counts as 20 something. No. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> so now they go back to camp with Jacqueline and Jacqueline now she gets buttered up by uh by Reed. And Jacqueline's like, hey, this Reed guy, maybe I was wrong about him. Oh yeah. 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 It's like cream cheese. Everything yeah. goes good with cream cheese. A Alec and Keith Nail and Reed are being super nice. And Jacqueline's like, maybe you know what? Because they're Reed is trying to say, see, Baylor and Natalie and Missy, that's the final three. And you and John are being played. <sighs> I was like, wait till John gets back from Exile Island and he <laughs> hears about this. He's going to change everything. Oh, my God. This is such a mess. Like, again, <laughs> this is like, oh, God. Jacqueline is such a, I, I want to play a game with Jackie. Jacqueline. I just want to see how far I could go with this. <laughs> just see yeah. how easy of a game of uh, somebody who's just so, like, a switch, like, <laughs> just a switch. Yeah. No, it just well, boost to be, her. To be fair to Jacqueline, she wasn't wrong. <laughs> like ultimately, the Baylor, Missy, and Natalie are going to be the undoing of John in the game. Like the, 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 those three and Keith Nail will uh, end up like splitting the vote two, two, two at the final six. Now, the, if she went with. Reed and Keith and Alec, would it be any different? I don't know. Yeah. No, but Natalie like I wouldn't said, be yeah, there. So no. probably their chances would improve. They were just <laughs> in the middle, but I think at certain point, being in the middle will hurt you where you will be at the bottom mm -hmm. everywhere you go. Exactly. Yeah. It was um, kind of hard for them to, to like paint it. I don't really see how they could win um in their position of being in the middle. <sighs> well, I think that. If they end up taking out the side that has Natalie, you've taken the best player out of the game. So that helps. But she beats uh, Keith beats her. And I think Reed also would beat Jacqueline at least. Yeah, and Reed. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> but I guess if you get... take everyone out. Well, okay. So if they get to the final five, John, Jacqueline, Reed, Alec, and Keith. If they can get to that Ooh. final five and then vote with Alec to take out Reed and Keith Nail. Uh, but and go to Alec the stays with you know what I mean. I don't know that Alec will ever flip against those two against Reed and Ke no. I, I I think Alec loves John Jacqueline. Yeah, oh, and, John. and Jacqueline actually, and, yeah. and Jacqueline, and Jacqueline. But I think that John was like, uh, "Hey, you're like Drew, but you talk to me." Got it. Got mm. it. Got it. So I think if he could have, if Alec could have gone to the final three with John and Jacqueline, that's a oh, win yes. for John and Jacqueline. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so that's why it was such a great move. Uh, uh, not this vote, but the next one when Na when um, Natalie is going to vote out Alec instead of Keith Nail. Like Very Alec would have been true. like a valuable chip for uh, John and Jacqueline probably down the stretch. But yeah, um, we still have to get Reed uh, voted out. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> John and Jacqueline or John comes back and uh, Jacqueline's like, I can't wait to talk to you. And John is like, honey, I just came home from work. I just want to, I just want to sit with you. And she's like, no, you don't understand. We're going to go to tribal council. Everybody's trying to get us voted out. You know, do you understand? Oh, we got to, we got to do something right now. He's like, oh, I hate when you're like this. What did you just oh. say? Mm -hmm. What did you just say about me? <laughs> you hate me like mm -hmm. this. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. very much that energy. Oh, you never want to talk to me. <laughs> oh, I just want to oh. hang out with my girlfriend. 
Yeah, I want a beach in Nicaragua, Don't touch me. man. Don't touch mm-hmm. me. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, and so now they, they're in a big uh, fight. They can't talk. Reed is really trying to get back and, and work this because uh, <laughs> Keith Nail uh, is going to have won immunity. So Keith Nail is off the board. And so uh, there is a, a, a lot up in the air. But John and Jacqueline are not talking. So uh, that We've never had a situation like this in the history of the show before or after. Yeah. No, this is exactly where that blood versus water again element comes in. Where I think if it's your ally, you're never going to do the whole I just came home from work moment, right? Because like exactly. you're gonna be like, Hey ally, fill me in, let me know everything that happened. And I think there's a level of like comfortability that you don't have with someone you met on the island versus yeah. someone that you have known for so long that you're like, yeah, I just like need a moment. I don't think you can say that to an ally on the Island and you're going to shut up and listen to them. And then you're going to be like, Oh Mm -hmm. my God. Oh, thank God. I listened. Yeah. I'm trying to think. There's nothing else. That's even a little bit like, there's never like a point where like, Oh, Rob and Amber are are fighting and they're not talking to each other. And like, what are we going to do? I mean, that would have, would have been a game changer for me. Uh, but, uh, like there, there honestly are not a, that many couples on Survivor, and so it's it's very rare where you know the couples are 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 you know in a fight. Yeah, especially a very young couple like uh, John and Jacqueline, and especially just like how fluid this part of this ep- like this episode mm-hmm. was. Um, Reed was a conversation away uh, from saying, like, mm-hmm. you see John. Um, blink at him saying, winking at him saying, Hey, let's talk later. But they never had a later. You can Natalie <laughs> sit down. <laughs> no, this is other. And then ultimately, like, Great Reed timing. does all this work and he ends up getting voted out seven to one. Poor Reed. Oh my God. Poor Reed. <laughs> Such a mess. I, um, I just can't keep going. Like, I need you to talk to your boyfriend because this is a million dollar decision for me. Can you imagine being on the <laughs> island and being like, okay, I got to be couples counselor because these two fools are about to get me voted out? I don't know what he could have done. Like, I, I, I don't know if he like, like, gri- like takes John by the hand and like takes Jacqueline by the hand. And it's like, look, we are doing this right now. I don't care if you're in a fight tomorrow. No, I think yeah. he, he, with this, with John, I don't know about Jacqueline, but with John, it needed to be one of those like movie moments where it's like, hey, meet me, Reed, by the water well. <laughs> and then Jacqueline meets and be like, hey, Jacqueline, meet me, Reed, by the water well. <laughs> he wrote a note. He wrote a <laughs> note. <laughs> hey, John, a note on a wall. meet me by the well. Sign on the Reed. immunity, immunity <laughs> idol that he stole from <laughs> Keith. He yeah. writes on the back of that. Meet me at the end, then be Wait, like, why or you're not Reed? <gasps> I guess. We should talk now. That's the only <laughs> way. I love it. That That's is beautiful. the smartest decision ever. Like he should have wrote say, on its sand, be like, "Meet me here," and just hope that they see it. <laughs> that would be so funny if Natalie and just walked up there. Like, <laughs> no, and then it would have been like a Y or an N, and then be like, "You have to tick the box." <laughs> That's so perfect. It would have worked. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for, for Reed. <laughs> Uh, that's it <laughs> and that's yeah. that's, that's it, it folks and, and Reed, I that i i feel like that um i've talked a lot about how i think that reed actually was like a really really good player oh, yeah. uh his, his final travel council question stinks uh but like he overall like i think he was probably you know uh under edited he had a lot of good ideas in the season do we know uh, why he never got called back like so I don't know if there was another spot to bring him right. back uh, that he also, like, I think uh, has a lot going on in terms of his career that I'm not yeah. sure necessarily true, that he uh, particularly wanted to go back and do survivor. There was <laughs> one point earlier in the season where Josh is talking about how like uh, Jeremy would definitely win at the end. And he's like, I mean, who would win at the end of this season? Are you going to vote for this is the fireman with family who's trying to support them. Are you going to vote for the very successful Broadway? Like we're very successful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now well, they're probably uh, like friend. motivational yeah. speakers or something. So yeah. Um, and I haven't given Josh a ton of uh, credit yet uh, in the season, but uh, Josh has uh great abs. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. Some of the very yeah. great, great core. Very fit. It looks like very strong. Very I like strong. It. Very strong. Okay. Um, all right. So after Reed goes out, then uh, this is also wild in this episode. We're going to have uh, an episode where we're going to see uh, Natalie win a reward. And so uh, she wins the reward of a bet. And she gets to pick two people to join her in the bed to eat spaghetti. And it's John and Jacqueline. So uh, <laughs> Natalie is going to sit in the bed and eat spaghetti <laughs> with John and Jacqueline. And you can see that uh, Natalie is not enjoying her time with a. Uh, with John and Jacqueline, Josh. Yeah, Natalie is such a, like, she's like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I know these type of players. They love rewards. They love it. They love it so much. So she sends, sends them there. And obviously, this is a weird-ass reward. Why are you? Oh you got a bed God. for all. <laughs> Literally, they had a bed on island. With did, the, did she sleep in, in the bed with them? I don't know. I think I she no did. Idea. She yeah, I, I thought would. that's my like the king yeah. bed. Yeah, yeah it's king size bed. Yeah, but it's just so weird that they literally did it in the same area as yeah. the other tribe. Is. They had to watch. Yeah, so oh, it's like every fan fiction like starts like this, but exactly <laughs> very weird. I think Natalie was reminded again of why she hates John. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Sasha, I couldn't tell. I don't think this was like said in the episode, but was Natalie feeding more wine to John? Like, was she like giving like uh, all the wine to John? Well, he was being Asking really yeah he because i think natalie said i don't know that i'm gonna finish it and then we get the yeah, yeah the to be sommelier moment so mm -hmm. i think it's very much you always want people liquored up so that they can yeah. tell you everything mm -hmm. so uh, this doesn't happen that often on survivor but it was mm -hmm. really cool to see that uh i felt I, I got the sense that natalie was like giving john more wine so that he would give up more information yeah she yeah. said i can't finish this which i Again, she picked them. It was strategic, so I can't imagine that everything yeah. else that came after that wasn't strategic. Uh, I've been, I've seen them at bars. They, they can finish that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. she was. She they know was how smart. to drink. <laughs> Natalie and Nadia. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, Natalie was. A, you can tell Natalie was a player for the, the get go, man. She really was ready to see what John was saying, and John was spilling all the tea, all the wine. Uh, honestly, <laughs> just enough for her to feel as if like. You can see she was able to see John's character a lot more. And I think that was yeah. a lot revealing. She's like, okay, John's obviously the guy that like to boast about the things that he done. He likes to be a know-it-all. Okay, I see him. Yeah. I see mm -hmm. where he stand. <laughs> Miss RHAP man, right? Yes. <laughs> That's Miss Survivor. Oh, um, Miss Survivor. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sasha, it seemed like that night in the bed, then Natalie comes away from that. Even more, I have to get rid right, right of John. I can't stand him. She just grabbed <laughs> Baylor and she's like, Baylor, I hate, like, and this is where I appreciated their friendship because this is the first time I saw her, like, they, they're together, but this is the first time I've really seen her fully trust Baylor mm -hmm, um, yeah. because she's like, your mom is not going to be for <laughs> it, but, like, we need to get this man out. Yeah. So she talks about it here in this episode, and this is the final seven I did not see the plan of how they were going to get uh, John out here. Did, did, was it going to be, I mean, did, was she counting on Missy voting against John? So it would be uh, yeah, Natalie, so she, ba Natalie Baylor, Missy Keith. I think it was either that or she was going to play her idol and get John out. Or no, no, she was going to work with Alec and um Keith. Yes, mm -hmm. it was, was Alec, Alec and Alec Keith. And Keith. Because okay. they never counted Missy um, in the yeah. plan. Because she says, right, like, uh, yeah, don't tell your, don't tell Missy. She loves him. And then Baylor says she's blinded by helping a man. Um, John reminds her of different men in her life. So I don't think they ever counted Missy's vote here. Okay. Yeah. So John is going to win uh, his one immunity here at this spot at the final seven. And so that throws the plan out the window. Uh, it's either going to be Keith Nail or Alec. Alec and so mm -hmm. there is okay what if we split the votes because who knows does Keith Nail have another idol but Natalie gets the idea of okay what if I end up putting a vote on Alec could flip the whole game oh yep. yes mm -hmm. and this is yeah this is where 
I I wonder why she picks Alec again. So maybe Rob, what you had said before, right? Where we she must have sussed out, and a bunch all of them maybe have sussed out that Alec is also close with John yeah. um, versus Keith. Because I can't imagine why else she'd flip. I think it honestly, because I, I wasn't aware of Rob. You did bring up a really big point, but what I was thinking watching that, I was saying to myself, you know, that move is just so subtle of yes. like just swapping the boat. Yeah, but I think it was more the fact that. In her own hindsight, she's making it to the end. She, mm-hmm. I think she wanted something on her resume to really separate herself from, like, John and sorts. So just doing that subtle swap of a vote was probably, like, in her way, like, okay, this is me solidifying my win over me, uh, you know, just picking up the pieces at the end. Because that's what I, I was thinking of, at least. Yeah. I, I also, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that Natalie ever had a relationship with Alec um, that, you know, they from when I guess when her and Jeremy were trying to work on him, I don't think that there was any sort of like a bond there. And at least uh, like from the early days of Hunapu uh, that it seemed like that maybe Natalie and Keith like had like mm-hmm. a, a, a working relationship. I think that Keith yeah. uh, really respected Natalie, that she was a hard worker around the camp yeah. but what i love about this it's like i thought that this is like a chess move of like natalie is like it, it wasn't about this round it was about like oh let me set up the next round uh-huh. and it's like oh mm-hmm. why are you moving that pawn over there oh that's interesting uh and she sets this up because i remember like doing the know-it-alls like the night of this it was like it's like wh- who cares what is what is what is the big deal alec versus keith uh okay fine all right but does, what does that do but we're gonna see Keith is the one who is open to uh, doing whatever. He's looking for somebody to tell him what yep. to do. And yep. Alec, I do think, uh, you know, might have been a person to tell John about, hey, I'm going to just just to let you know, uh, Natalie's trying to blindside you. Like, I think that Alec was way more loyal to John and Jacqueline than he was to Natalie. Yep. Natalie. Yeah. Uh, Keith was Natalie's piece. Alec yeah. was John's piece or any the board's piece. And I think... Mm-hmm. Having Keith in the back of her pocket can allow her to do things in the next round. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, Josh, it's interesting. It's a, like more of like a big brother move than a yes, survivor yes, move. Yes, 100%. Yeah. It's so huge. I, I mean, Which I is just, weird. This is so a woman from The Amazing Race. <laughs> I know. I think it's just, CBS, man. That's who think, they are. I mm-hmm. think she had to have like what she got on The Amazing Race, man. She just uh, she got around the culture of strategy and source because they honestly fit so well in Survivor. It's kind of crazy. But here's the thing that she has to then pull off when they get back to camp that, oh, wait, I was supposed to vote for. Oh, oh, my. Oh, my. So, oh, this is embarrassing. I can't believe it. And <laughs> Sasha, somehow they did. Nobody really questions this that much. No, because is it the food? Like, is it, you know, the fatigue? <laughs> like, what is it? Because are you kidding me? How did, you know, this isn't like a, my hand slipped on the button that, you know, you needed to press like a few buttons and my hand slipped. This is, a, I needed to write A-L-E-C instead of K-E-I-T-H. It is not even a remote. It's not like Josh and John. It's not like uh, anything. Like you uh-huh. played like Oh, they played themselves. I, I'm i sorry. I cannot give Natalie credit for this because it is not a positive Natalie move. It's a negative everyone else move. Yeah. yeah. This the, ridiculous. I mean, I, I do feel like that the the level of like it, it's, it's everything now is is super impressive but like this is a like i don't know how many seasons she gets away with this move exactly yeah. she this is not a repeatable move no Any other repeatable cast like this is definitely john john maybe three there. other seasons <laughs> she might be able to get away with this yeah. i think on big again this is something you say in big brother not the uh not the amazing race not yeah. survivor in a very game, much a big brother move in a game where the votes are the vote is three to two or the vote is one to two not when the vote is revealed like this and you're confronted to be like hey what happened mm-hmm. exactly oh, yeah what, what? <laughs> poor natalie oh she forgot oh this is gonna mess her up in the jury yeah that John's yeah. like, well, I, I guess we didn't talk it through enough. And then uh, just telling Jacqueline at a point, oh, wait until the jury hears about this. Oh, <laughs> my God. That Natalie is going to look so dumb. She looks so dumb. She didn't even vote for the right person. 
Do you think he hears himself? Because like I like how how does he say stuff like this and well, it think, not like the irony not come? I on. just I mean I don't think that John and Jacqueline knew a lot about a Survivor. I mean oh. I think they watched the season, but I think they watched the season before because they talk about uh, when Cat says, "Oh, we're dateable. We made the merge." But yeah, I, I just think that they are just completely just uh, you know novices here. Yeah. yeah. Survivor okay. rookies. Rookies. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we end up with uh, a reward challenge here. It's three on three. Uh, mm -hmm. Keith, Missy, and John are going to win a reward, but it does not come without a toll. Uh, Missy is going to get injured. Busted yeah. ankle for Missy. Also, this reward, um, sorry, the challenge was right made by helped, or I don't know if completely thought of by the Make a Wish. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, Preteen. Yeah. I don't know. I yes. Think teen. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a uh, kid that get, they show in the finale who came up with the idea for this uh, that I don't think he drew up where Missy would be injured during it, but uh, mm -hmm. really cool that he got to go on location and see it's, his challenge as yeah. part of the show. Insane! Uh, but, I'm so happy for the little kid. Yeah, that's a, it, was a really pretty cool challenge. All right, mm -hmm. so Keith, Missy, and John win the reward, uh, and then there's a really weird moment at the end of the challenge where. That it's Keith, Missy, and John going on the reward. And then, um, like, uh, first off, John is talking about how, wow, this is going to be so great for Missy. She's going to feel as young as she looks. And Jacqueline is like, oh my God, what is wrong yeah. with you? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my, I literally don't even remember him saying that, Rob, because he started talking about, I don't need spas, I don't need massages, and I like tuned him out. Like, honestly, yeah. I didn't even well, take notes, because I was like, what the hell? And then Jeff was like, well, why are you going? He's like, yeah. did I say I was going? Did I say? <laughs> I'm like, I am going to give it, I'm like, okay, he's going to give it to Jacqueline. He's like, uh, yeah, I, I, also I would like to give my reward to Baylor. Baylor. Like, wait, And then she just what? starts crying. Oh. Yeah. I thought Jacqueline was going to murder him, but yeah, uh, she didn't I seem that annoyed not. about it. No, because they were alone together at camp. That's yeah, the they only. Got to have their own yeah. Spot day. If yeah. it were any other re, I think <laughs> thing, I think Jacqueline yeah. would have killed him. Yeah, she would have been so mad if it was like Ugh, you're going to leave me alone mm -hmm. with Natalie. <laughs> okay. Imagine. And Natalie's going to go off to exile, and uh, this is the one part where Natalie has like an emotional like uh, breakdown. Of yeah. it's the only thing she's finally alone. She's like uh, after everything that's gone on in the season, um, she gets to like sort of like be alone with her thoughts. Absolutely. And I think let go of this like facade she's probably holding for herself even, right? Like she has to hold it together. She's like, I can't show emotion because if I show emotion, I'm going to black out and go off on them. So probably she could finally like feel all the feelings she's been like holding at bay. But it was it oh was actually God. really sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I mean, I, I think about Survivor just like if I was on this island, how can I survive? And I think Edge of Extinction really is a test to a lot of people's mind. We're not yeah. really, we don't, especially with time now, we're never really sequestered alone from everything. And especially not in the wild where you're sweat, uh, you're like, it's raining. You barely could sleep. You're sleeping on rocks and you're just crying. I could see the emotional yeah. toll that she went through. And I feel bad because I know that uh, coming back from that, it's just not going to feel any better. Yeah, the Exile Island was no joke in this season. It's not like one of these things where there's like a sugar shack or a bed mm. or a, or like a rice or any of these other things. It was, seemed like there was nothing there. It was like a pot and a machete. And yeah. And the and platform. All night. Yeah. yeah, and that was it. Uh, but you could get an idol. That's about it. Uh, so uh, we get Natalie rejoining everybody at the immunity challenge. Uh, Missy is coming in with like a walking stick. The medical is going to check out Missy. They tell her we could go do x-rays, but we have to take you out of the game to do x-rays. Uh, Missy is going to hang in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, she's a trooper. Ugh, yeah. Killing it. Missy. She's a trooper. Yeah. Missy. Uh, ultimately we're going to see where is this when Natalie wins? Uh, yes. she it's Natalie versus John at the end, mm -hmm. and she ends up uh beating John to put her plan in motion. 
Yeah, I think the wind definitely knocked John's over. It's like, very I windy. It, yeah. It's very windy in this season. Mm-hmm. And so uh-huh. uh, now here we go. All right. So now John is vulnerable, but he doesn't idle. So he, like, he can't uh, sniff anything. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're working on a 2-2-2 two, two, two split. So even if uh, John did play his idol... Uh, potential. Actually, if John played his idol, it would then be uh, who would it be then? Uh, this Jacqueline? Is two, yeah, J- then I guess it would be a revote between Keith and Jacqueline. Yeah, Keith and yeah, Jacqueline. Keith's gonna go home. Keith's yeah. gonna mm-hmm. go home in that spot, I think. Wait, really? Uh, yeah. I think Jacqueline goes home, right? Because um, so, Missy well, Baylor wins voted. The vote. Well, ba- so, Baylor voted Jacqueline, and so did Missy. So yeah. yeah. So okay. this, they end up convincing Missy to do this vote. It wasn't um easy. Missy was like, I don't want to do this. I mean, like, you need – and then Baylor's like, I'm I'm sorry. I'm stepping up to you. You yeah. need to get rid of John. He's not good for your game. And Missy ended up ultimately doing it by voting out uh, – by splitting the vote between her and ja- him and Jacqueline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought, Sasha, that this is sort of like a half-measure move by Missy. Uh, that Baylor says, yeah. Mom – we're voting out John. She's like, I can't. I gave him my word. I can't do it. It's like, all right, will you vote for Jacqueline? Okay. <laughs> I mean, a, a vote, a, a vote for Jacqueline exactly. is a vote for John. Like, I'm exactly. sure that was no consolation to John, where he's like, Missy, why? How could you? Why would you vote for me? She's like, John, I voted for Jacqueline. I said, I, you know. Yeah, this is where, again, she's really trying to get away with the technicality. Um, So at this point, then, this is why I think people get really mad at Missy, um, because she keeps saying this loyalty game, because this is not loyalty, right? Like, you're not being loyal if you're voting for Jacqueline, because you gave John, you know, it's a technicality. It's not loyalty. Uh, So Mm -hmm. at that point, just own it and just vote John out. Like, just do it. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's hard for Missy because Baylor is so badly wants to do this. So it's not like she could even like go to John and be like, hey, Baylor's trying to get you voted out. <laughs> uh, so I guess they could have voted out Natalie potentially, but it's like a betrayal of Baylor in that spot. So Missy's in, she, Missy's in a, a tight spot here. She won Idol. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not and, immediate Idol. One immediate. Yeah. Oh, Bell, immediate <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. You're correct. You're, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. um, so Keith is able to play this one perfectly. He goes to tribal council. He's like, Hey, I'm not invisible. Use my vote. Make big moves. Come on. Oh my God. God. He was, I mean, that's what you would say if you were on the Yeah, no, he should. It's just so funny. Like the way he's, he's so hamming it up. Like, don't, wouldn't you again, surface level players? I get it. But like, wouldn't you be like this man who's always floundering, saying some crazy stuff Mm -hmm. is now like, Oh man, you know, I'm out. It's just me. I would be like, oh, why he's being so normal? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh uh-uh. uh. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, he's acting too years. normal. Uh, so we get our 2 2 2 vote and a re vote. Uh, John uh, gets uh, voted out. And uh, amazing. Yeah. It was an incredible Natalie move. Is, she's yeah. just smiling. She's like, yeah. Jack was over there pissed. Oh my God. The next episode was so messy, but she. Just like yeah, she's pissed. Um, <laughs> and, that, and then we get to the finale, and this is a really unusual finale. I think this is only the second one that they do in the live format. Sasha, there's a lot of like uh, just like cutaways uh, to the like random people in this finale. Yeah, this is where I actually put in my notes like, how do I keep track of these cutaways? I actually wrote that, and then Jeff actually calls out right someone saying, "Stop going to the audience," and he was like, mm-hmm. "Guess what, Connor? I'm not gonna stop going to the audience." Yeah. So Jeff seems to love it, and this is why they're doing it. Because again, I think all the cutaways could have been saved for later. Yes. yes, it's the only the second time that they do it, but I feel like it's like the first time that they're saying like. Uh, Let's just talk to the fans about Survivor. Yeah. Like, why do you like Survivor? Oh, that yeah. was so useless. Mm-hmm. It was. And it was awkward. Really like, mm-hmm. girl power, night with mom. What does that mean? I don't know. The Make-A-Wish <laughs> kid, Um, his name's Austin, by the way. I, yeah. I, um, that was the only good part of it. Everything else I was... And, oh, and Keith's wife was hilarious, but that is definitely yeah. reunion time. That is not a cutaway mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. 
Uh, so Jeff is going to spend a lot of time talking to the audience. Uh, all right, so we get to the final five, and uh, this is uh, you know another really exciting uh, moment in the game. Uh, the finale starts with uh, Jacqueline being pissed, and you know again here's the thing: like Jacqueline is super pissed to start the episode. By by the end of this round, uh, Jacqueline's back voting with Natalie. Yep. Yes. Like right. whoever's being cool to her, they're like, "All right, fine, I'm with you." Yeah. <laughs> and you know, Keith, I bet you Natalie was always with Keith and, you know, like she was always that middle person so that they don't have time to be alone. Mm -hmm. And I think Missy and Baylor are no way to, at that moment. They were probably thinking of flipping. Um, so I really feel that, again, Keith could have made some moves, but yeah. he didn't. Mm. Uh, I mean, that he did pretty good for being Keith now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for a survivor player, not yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, they do the challenge that they get a re uh, like they played for a reward, which was to practice the challenge. They do this in Survivor mm -hmm. uh, 30 also. It's not my favorite thing. Keith yeah. wins the reward to practice the real challenge. And then uh, much like Mike, uh, then he goes on to win the challenge because he won the challenge. We get to practice the challenge. It's a huge so, learning curve. Like Yeah, especially in this one. This was very complicated. This was a complicated challenge. I mean, I was thinking to myself, like, I'm surprised Keith won, to be honest. I was looking at it like, is that really possible? Well, the it others didn't me, even get a ball um off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody got any balls on. It reminded me of the same challenge. It was that was it what is that war where it was like it didn't it's not the same actually, but you know, where they like have to wait. Oh yeah, and have to <laughs> run. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. Natalie just keeps getting stuck with balls. You notice that, y'all? <laughs> Anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that one is like that you go like back left, right, left, right. This one had like the thing where it was like you had to like not drop the ball on the ground. Um, but anyway, so uh Keith Nail has immunity here at the final five. And so uh natalie doesn't know what to do uh gotta wants to break up missy and baylor uh and so she's uh talking to jacqueline and says that uh maybe maybe uh we need to break up uh, missy and baylor how about that there you go it's yeah. time again it's time. natalie wow. yeah um yeah. baylor wants natalie to play the idol on her mom <laughs> but why? No, because you have to play it anyway. And yeah. I think, and Keith, right, says he's voting Missy. Mm -hmm. I believe that's like, but very silly. Very, very silly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So ultimately, we know that at the tribal council, uh, that <laughs> people are putting votes on Jacqueline. Natalie is going to play her vote, uh, play her idol on Jacqueline and say, uh, mm -hmm. Did you vote for who I told you to? And then ultimately the votes on Jacqueline are going to be nullified and Baylor is going to uh, be sent home. My question for both of you is why, why was this such a, it was a thrilling move, but why do you feel like this, this was a very good move? It was for me, it was a good move just because it, it like what did Natalie it just... get so much out of, of getting Jacqueline uh keeping Jacqueline in the game and knocking Baylor out I don't honestly it's too risky of a move I'm saying like Baylor is her like what was somebody that was truly going to be loyal to mm -hmm. Natalie but then again you could also say the argument that Baylor is also the most capable yeah. other than um Natalie so um assuming that Jacqueline can't win the competitions Jacqueline has a lot more value than um Baylor who did show that she yeah. could win some competition. Now, Jacqueline so, yeah. does go on to win the yeah, final. Yeah, she wins immunity. the yeah. next yeah. immunity. So uh, <laughs> I think that it, it actually yeah. like works out uh, very well for Natalie because that I'm not sure if uh, does Nat does Natalie beat Keith? Because uh, they do at the reunion yes, show. Yes, she beats it him, yeah. Oh, yes, I think she does. Sorry, right? I see what you're saying. Come yeah, because I think that, cause that ultimately, uh, I don't know who would have won the chance. If it was Natalie... Uh, if it was Natalie, Keith, and uh, I guess Jacqueline uh, or Missy, I'm trying. I'm just trying to think. So Jacqueline would be out. Now it was N Natalie, Keith, and Missy. Yeah. What, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Missy or Baylor aren't yeah. getting that many that many votes. Uh, they're yeah. getting whoever yeah. isn't on the jury. Uh, or whoever isn't in the final three. Uh, if it's Keith versus Natalie, I I think Keith wins. Oh yeah, 
hundred percent Keith wins. I think. Well, there's so many guys on the jury. Um, exactly. That, so Jacqueline it really, and, and it, what, what? Well, do John and Jacqueline feel very betrayed by Natalie? Like, are they bitter jurors? Yeah, Probably. we don't know. Uh, and then, and then Josh, Reed, Wes, like, uh, like uh, all those guys. Um, I think Jeremy Alec. is almost her only vote at that point. Yeah, Jeremy, yeah, because Baylor and Missy will vote. I mean, whoever, yeah, that, that, that even, even, yeah, that yeah. Sorry. So, um, uh, what are there eight votes? So, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that automatically Keith has Josh, Reed, Wes, Alec. That's four. Uh, and that's just, it, right? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if, but, and then if Baylor or Missy, uh, vote votes for wh wh like whoever's there, then it's already four, three, one. So, yep. uh, mm. Natalie couldn't get around that voting block. Very true. No. I just, it just depends if Reed votes, uh, uh, Keith, the person who wrote his game. <laughs> or, no, I read, mm. he didn't vote for Natalie. He voted for Jacqueline over Natalie. So oh. that's exactly why I feel like he would have voted yeah. for Keith. Because something happened there that he mm. didn't want to vote Natalie. And I think Keith has even more of an underdog story. But yeah. I do think Natalie mm -hmm. took a huge risk by not playing it on herself. And I think Natalie played that up to say, no, I knew. And yeah. I was confident that I did wasn't going to get voted out. So I think the way she spun it is why it's a good move. It plays yeah. like a big move in front of the jury, certainly. Exactly. Uh, um, yeah, because I – and I think you do need to split up Missy and Baylor. You really do. You know? It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense why to – why not? Yeah. Um, I, like, I feel like that Missy and Baylor would have taken her to the final three. Yeah. Like, even if Baylor won uh, – Missy couldn't even play the final challenge. Uh, But, like, yeah. if Baylor won the challenge, I don't think they were going to take Keith to the final three anyway. Mm -hmm. So – um, I, you know, I, I don't think it was much of a difference there, but it does, it does like really pay dividends because Jacqueline is going to win the final four challenge. And then ultimately Jacqueline is going to vote out, uh, you know, agree to vote out Keith and Jeff does go through this at the finale about what if you vote out Natalie, uh, Keith is still going to, Jacqueline has no chance to win. Yeah. No. Interesting. Maybe yeah. Ja Jacqueline needs to go to the end with Baylor and Missy. A hundred percent. That was she and, was not given then, that option. Yeah. But even then, do you think she beats a couple that made it to the end? Yes, I think so. Uh, right. See, the yeah. Thing for me, with the season was like I always felt like that you wanted to go to the end with the couple because the couple's going to split votes. Ah, uh, I see. They yeah. have like the same they friends, the same people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That so I, I so I do feel like that if Jacqueline got to the end with uh Baylor and Missy, I think Jacqueline would win. But I feel like that uh Jeremy. And Natalie were raising their hands for, for they would have voted for Missy. So uh, uh yeah. maybe there could have been a couple votes for Missy. Mm -hmm. I think um you don't split too many votes in that sense. Cause don't you just uh think about it and say sit to yourself, say, guys, let's just vote for one of these people. Like if Jeremy mm -hmm. could do what he did for Natalie, I think he could just say everybody who's voted for Missy and Baylor, uh vote for Baylor or vote for Missy. Vote for Missy, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, don't stick to the plan. Don't be an idiot. But no, I think um, John, John had so many people that liked him that I think Jacqueline was getting like Alec, um, Wes, Keith, mm -hmm. um, maybe jo I don't know about Josh and Reed, but those three for sure were going yeah. to Jacqueline. Um, so it's a really epic final four challenge. Uh, ultimately, after like taking a big spill, Jacqueline's going to end up uh, winning that challenge, which uh, she had not really been like a standout in the challenges at any point earlier in the season. So that really comes out of nowhere that Jacqueline wins. So out of nowhere. I forgot that, was, that she wins. I'm that like, was yeah. brutal. Oh I was watching God. her as she was like just struggling the entire time. And then she comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. And I'm like, wow. This is she did it. <laughs> Puzzles, man. Puzzles. Yeah, and then they have to decide uh, who they're going to vote out. And really, that Jacqueline doesn't seem like she even considers uh, voting out Natalie. No. and Yeah, I think... Does she not? I thought she has a conversation with someone. I think Missy is trying... Oh, well, Missy is trying to push it. it. Yeah. See here, yeah. yeah. So Missy was trying to maybe take out Nat. Yeah, because um, Natalie broke up the Fab Five. Yeah, oh, because only because Baylor's out got it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Jacqueline even says, asks Missy, would you vote Nat Natalie? And because she sees Natalie as a power player, 
Um, but at the end, I think for Jacqueline, uh, the loyalty she saved me just outweighed everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My favorite keep... was what would John do? Like WWJD, yeah. where yeah. it was very much like, what would John say? Well, John would say, Jacqueline, vote Natalie off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's why John's not here. <laughs> Anyways. So. Wait. Yeah, for Keith, uh, it's close, but uh, no cigar. Uh, Keith mm -hmm. gets voted out. And then we go to check in with Mrs. Nail. <laughs> she did not like when Keith told Missy how to raise her child, Josh. Yeah. I'm you glad she had. That. I'm glad she said that. It shows humility to even like the one thing Keith said that was a little could, could become controversial. Um, Miss Mama Nail, man, she's uh, keeping everybody in check. She's keeping her mm -hmm. husband in check, and her husband's going to be apologizing. I love this. It mm -hmm. made their whole family seem more wholesome. Is she going to be on a Survivor <laughs> season? I uh, I'm not it. sure. That, that <laughs> maybe they do another Blood vs. Water of Keith and Dana. Yes, yes, Keith and Dana. That's what I want to see now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sasha, did you like their wedding pictures? Oh, my God. Did y'all yes. think? I was like that. First of all, I couldn't real like put it together that it was Keith. And then I was like, wait, no, I can, because that's literally what Wes looks like. Mm -hmm. yes. So at first I couldn't like, it was very disorienting because Keith is very skinny, like what we're used to seeing him. Yeah. And then he was like, so dressed up. I was like, who's this? And then I was like, Wes looks like that. That's weird. Yeah. But I think that even young Keith nail looked like, uh, like, I, like I, he must've been like in his early twenties, but he still looked like he was in his forties when he was young. Yeah, It was his <laughs> eyes. His young self looked like oh, that could be my father. <laughs> they, they look like a fusion of each other. Right I'm telling you, Wes and Keith. Yeah, it's like very weird. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we go to the final three. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, the memorable moment is uh, when Reed drags Missy. Um, Jeremy is going to give a big stump speech uh, for Natalie. Uh, just give it to Nat. Yeah. <laughs> she balled out. Come on. <laughs> Jeremy's all of us at that point. Let's be honest. Cause that tribal Honestly. was a little yeah. like. What's well, that? So Jeremy, through. I'm just imagining like a, as a player while uh, playing another season and I see Jeremy there. I'm like, he's a guy who hyped somebody up that last time. I'm going to take him to Jerry. So he got hit me up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Sasha, do you have any other standout moments from the final tribal council? Yeah, I just think like, again, I felt really like frustrated by Missy. I if you're gonna be a certain way, like you have to own it for me. And then she just kept saying, I played with dignity with integrity, like, no, and it's okay that you didn't. But you have to own that. So like voting Jeremy out is not playing with dignity and integrity. So that's the only piece I'll say. Um, Everything else was kind of boring, like, it was like cute, boring, whatever. It didn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. Jacqueline got asked twice to name her biggest move. And I would, I think Jacqueline should have caught it that the second time someone asks you, your first answer wasn't good and you should change it because yeah. John asks her first. And then she says, um, it was voting Josh out. Josh asks her again. And then she says it was voting you out. And with like frustration, she said yeah, it. Yeah, so but wasn't that her biggest move? I mean, was it um was it winning the immunity? Listen, you gotta lie then or come up with something because obviously yeah. your first one didn't work. But I definitely agree with you. The fact that John is asking her that question, it's like, oh, people are talking about this at Ponderosa. Yes. I better like feet like like lob her up this softball that she yeah. can knock out of the park. But I'm trying to think if I was gonna answer Jacqueline's biggest move. Like, first, let me just answer, like, objectively, I, I do think that, um, you know, that getting Josh voted out was probably her biggest contribution. Yeah. But I don't know what those guys were looking for. No, that Maybe I think there's she, a way. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. She could, uh, I would say she could just uh, play the story of being like, yes. listen, I'm sitting here because Natalie saved me with her idol that she found with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So come on now. <laughs> that's what i'm saying and she voted baylor out um but even then i think there's a still a way to sell the josh vote a little better to say you none of these guys were talking to me josh like you also blah 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 you know something 
some disconnect with their relationship mm-hmm. and then yeah. say, and that is exactly why I explained to John, even though he was the guy strong. And I see why, because I see that you like John, but we are not the same person. And I needed to make this vote for me, you know, like to put some umph into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I think maybe could have gotten it farther, but I think she didn't do it with John. And then Josh tried it again. And then I think it was, she was frustrated by the question again. So I think mm-hmm. she didn't answer yeah. it well. I what, think, oh, sorry. Sorry, Rob. Uh, what uh, played to Natalie's um, benefit and played against all the rest of them was the fact that a lot of people were questioning the other two, uh, Missy and Jacqueline, against yeah. them, saying like, hey, I need you to say this. And they weren't giving them the energy uh, the jury wanted. And that just caused it, the jury to get angry and frustrated. While Natalie was saying, uh, was adding to the questions that the jury was asking, specifically like the West question. I don't think West was really um, expecting Natalie to say anything about uh, about their uh, playing with their sibling because they never played with their blood. Uh, well, Natalie mm-hmm. never played with her blood, and she ends up giving a well deserved answer to that. Oh, her so. answer, I think, was the best. That was like probably one of the most quotable, right? Like, she, her tor- torch got snuffed out first, so I wanted to make sure mine was last. How do you not vote for that, right? Like that line. Mm-hmm. I will also say you have to know who the jury is. If the jury is a bunch of men, your answers need to unfortunately be more tailored towards what men like. So big uh. moves, right? All of these things versus maybe if like a Missy was on the jury and I would be more, Missy, here's how I built relationships. And, you know, work to that. So I think it really unfortunately depends. And with Alec, that's another smart move. Where she was like, you, Alec, like, you know, voting mm-hmm. you out was like the turning point, which it actually was. But again, you have to like stroke the ego a little bit. And yeah. Alec was like, I knew you were going to say that. So I was like, yeah, that's <laughs> totally blocked. Well, I, I think it's a, a, another great point about like the strength of Natalie as a player where that she is able to go into that gear of whether that she's on. Like we saw, obviously, like uh, she's able to work uh, well with the women, but then also mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, she's able to because of her strength and her like work ethic is able to like you know easily be able to like uh bond and communicate with the men also so um you know she's able to work with uh, all kinds of different people that are out there on survivor yeah because she talks about in her opening speech right the outweigh outplay outlast she says like out um, I think the outplay part she said I'm strong and I was never called lazy at camp which I don't know that the women necessarily care about as much, but those men, that is something they, they yeah. really cared about. So like yeah. I said, I think she was always closing with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go back to the live finale. Everybody looks very nice at the finale. Yeah. I do want to say um, they end up uh, revealing the votes and by a vote of uh, five to two to one, Natalie is the winner of Survivor San Juan del Sur. And we end up uh, doing a little bit of, uh, you know, pretty, pretty uh, decent, uh, like, round of questions with people. You know, I've watched so many of these reunions so far. Like, <laughs> I feel like that this is like, the, like, nothing horrible happened. I have to say. <laughs> I, you know, they do, like, uh, end up, like, cutting away from the season 29 cast to end up doing some wacky exercise to talk about Survivor 30. But yeah. overall... In terms of like uh, what they talk about with the people, I thought they did a pretty decent job. Uh, Josh, anything stand out to you from the reunion questions? Um, I think it, 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 one thing about this cast is uh, it, uh, even though it was they had problematic moments at times, none of the castmates kind of came off truly too problematic to me. And uh, mm-hmm. based off, I'm like coming after their BB fifteen, you guys. So, um, anyway. <laughs> John of ultimately like j- just getting John a moment to speak and talk about like uh just how he was watching with Nadia. We both laughed at that moment. I think that was kind of cool that they kind of gave him a little bit of a story to just ultimately leave this uh this whole entire cast off of a good note. Cause I kind of really enjoyed everybody here. Um nobody seemed too uh annoying to me. So I don't know. I like that yeah. part. Definitely. Uh what no about for you, Julie? Sasha? Yeah, what, yeah, what 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 for Julie? That she, she was just, dating John Rocker? No, she just was there to the point where I was like, is she even on here? I didn't I even know she her. was there until yeah. right this moment. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, she didn't get anything. I feel like uh, Dr- they even talked to Drew and Alec. Oh, no. no. I don't think they talked to Kelly Wentworth. Right. <laughs> they didn't talk to a lot of people. I'm so you think they, they were didn't know she, who she was about, yet. 
yeah. game changers at that point. I don't know. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I will say um, the biggest thing was a Reed and Missy. What the heck? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, the Reed my and Missy, God. And, and Reed is going to really drag Missy about how yes. uh, fans of classic literature know that often the wicked stepmother is the person who is uh, like you are mean to the help. Uh, and then they, they're really like they do like a whole like um, Jeff talks about how his mom loves Jeff's mom is, you know, watches all the shows uh, used to go to like all the finales like on Mother's Day. And so jo love Josh and Reed. And so they talked about like what a great influence they are. And they, there's a woman in the audience who is like a young Christian oh. woman. How like, oh, that I, you know, I showed this episodes to my dad and, and uh, love is love. And then Jeff's like, all right, read that. Uh, we've talked about like what a great role model you are. Like, uh, but even you would say that speech was a little harsh on Missy. And he's like, well, I was talking about her character. And it wasn't really her. I'm sure she's a great person. Uh, he's like, so, so would you apologize? They're like, well, I, I don't think that's necessary. Yep. And yeah. that is a master class in PR, I will say, because somehow I didn't leave with being mad at Reed, right? I was like, yeah, I guess he's saying that in the game, this is what happened. So good for him. This is that Broadway money paying off because you know someone talked him through this. Like, there's mm -hmm. no way he came up with this. A great yes. storyteller. Wow. I'm telling my, you, a great storyteller. My rule is always, though, at the Survivor finale, I, like, I think the audience wants to see, like, yes. oh, I'm sorry. Like, hey, <laughs> you're, you know, we all we all get along now. Like, I feel like it's an awkward, like, it just it doesn't sit right with the audience. Like, I think everyone wants to, like, walk away from the finale. Like, everybody's good now. Yeah, and it was awkward, right? Missy, what he asked Missy first, have you made up? And there was complete silence. I and then... Know. Reed actually spoke first and then he said hey girl and I was like <laughs> and then it just started snowballing and it was bad but in a good like I yeah. loved it but it was bad I'm not talking uh, to you well I heard it poop. yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> We had a lot of fun <laughs> with uh, the, uh, Sam Wandel, sir. That it was really it was the first season we really did a lot with the soundboard uh, with Sam Wandel, yes. sir, going overboard uh, with all these uh, uh, crazy sound clips uh, <laughs> from the season. Get in the back seat and let me drive. <laughs> yes. Uh, what am I? Oh threads? yeah, Missy yeah. the puppet master. Missy, I forgot about and, that. And then I Baylor had her music video that we used to play all the time. Situation. Yeah. So bad. Well, all the memories are coming back because this is I the know. first season I heard also. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah. nostalgic, man. So nostalgic. Yes. So nostalgic. Uh Stephen <laughs> Fishback uh famously called uh Missy Muffin. What does Muffin <laughs> think though? Like, Who's Muffin? Yeah. A lot, a lot going on. Oh my god. <laughs> what is Muffin? What's muffin? Who's muffin? muffin thing? <laughs> Your reactions even for, who's muffin? Who's muffin? muffin? Yeah. Okay. Um <laughs> any anything else from what we saw on the screen? You ready to get to some questions? Oh, yeah. And then Jeff does like a crazy oh. exercise with white collar, blue collar, no yeah. collar, explaining this. Can we yeah, talk I about how Jeff? Season, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly what I was gonna say. He's like, This is gonna be a great season. And then I was like, So you thought. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff loved that season, and uh, from whatever he says in the recording, not uh, so the rankings. Yeah, <laughs> uh, let's get into some questions. Of course, uh, we'll keep it going this weekend on the Patreon feedback show. Let's see, how about uh, Trevor Chong wants to know if everybody does actually stick to the plan, who wins this season? So, all right, John gets voted out at the final ten. Okay. Ooh. Right after Jeremy? Yeah. Yep. So Reed has um Alec, Keith, and uh Wes. Those yeah. four. The Missy, Jacqueline, Natalie, and Baylor. Four against four, right? Mm -hmm. It basically goes down to the immunity challenge. Whoever wins immunity. Yeah. So uh, Reed I, I and that, Keith oh. have a better. Yeah, I, I think that's actually the final nine. nine? So here the, here's the problem for um for for everybody here uh that next vote is going to be a f is going to be a four four uh yep. so uh i i don't know what happens in a tie vote are they going to rocks there you know like uh, this was a great plan by reed but like when tony did it he was able to pull sarah back for the next vote uh and avoid a four four split 
um, is like, uh, is somebody going to jump ship? Is Natalie going to come and vote with uh, Reed, Alec, uh, uh, Keith and Wes? No. Oh. She's not. I mean, someone, I, I don't see this cast like sticking to their guns like that. I don't know if it's Natalie, but I feel like someone would have to jump. Yeah. I, mean, I think Keith bring jumps. Jack. Yeah. Or, yeah. You think Keith would go to the other side? I think he, no. if Natalie wills it, leave it West. Him in. Yeah. Well, let me ask yeah. you guys. Uh, does does Natalie own the idol? Does Natalie and Bela have the idol at this? Yeah, point? they still have the. Yeah, uh, they still have the idol. So on the other side, it would be the people that were blindsided by Reed. Would be it would be Natalie, Jacqueline, Baylor, and Missy. So I don't know how mm -hmm. uh, how tight that four is going to be. Yeah. I feel like one of them would move. I would yeah. feel that. Do. And I feel like Natalie would like she's not she's still pissed like she's just good at hiding it. Yeah, she might be like go to them and like uh like oh my god you guys I hated John uh so much anyway let's vote out exactly. Jacqueline next like come on yep yeah so mm. yeah, and and then maybe end up figuring out what her next move is going to be but it, that would be definitely uh, uh certainly a, another wild version of this season um let's see uh how about Gowery wants to say, I think Natalie has the most impressive end game out of any winner ever. Can you think of any winner who does more to set themselves up for the win? So it's interesting. Uh, there are certainly w w winners who do a lot at the end game to really control uh, their destiny. Uh, yeah. Specifically, um, people like, you know, people that win out. Uh, exactly. People, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in the immunity challenges, I think that what Natalie does is kind of uh, very specific to her in that mm -hmm. she r wins uh, one immunity, but it doesn't turn it, like she wins an immunity to make sure John doesn't get voted out. Mm -hmm. She wasn't in danger. She really ends up, you know, coming up with creative ways to get uh, the people voted out that she wants to get voted out. Exactly. Yeah, Natalie's my favorite winner for that reason. But I know that again, we're in a like in this universe is what it's when it works. But I will say I yeah, I think in, especially new school, I don't know that we've seen a lot of like not winning out winners, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and also Natalie did this without any like damn it, she didn't do this with an idol, a random idol play. She didn't do this with an immunity play. She honestly just played to her core or like just played these players like chess and moved pieces in places that were gonna make her it seem like she walked to the end, and that's exactly what happened. So I think her win is very, very impressive. And in seeing so many men win, again, it's a very different type of player, very different type of win because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Marcelo wants to know, uh, what was the reception of San Juan del Sur, and why was it uh, so low at the time of airing? So um, let me start off uh, by saying, um, at the time of the airing, you know, it had just come off of Survivor Kagian. Mm -hmm. And that I feel like that um, the, I think the first half of the season was kind of a letdown. I mean, I think that there was so many, it's such a comedy of errors. Uh, we didn't know yeah. where it was going and it mm -hmm. was like, who, you know, uh, who are these people? Why should we care about them? Why do we care about their relationships? And the, do they even know what they're doing? Like, I think that people was overall were, were down on this group. I think Natalie's run really saves the season absolutely yep this season is a story from end to beginning that you uh you enjoy a lot more knowing where this book goes than reading this book first play first through and i can tell just by watching the season you lose two black people uh, uh, two uh, uh plcs in the first uh first two weeks of the show i'm watching their sit and be like what is this mess but then <laughs> ultimately just seeing how it um it, it folds out. It ends up um, telling its own story that has a lot more value. It's like wine. It's fine mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. And I will say the comeuppance happened so quick. Drew, John Rocker, um, especially, I think those two, that you're like, yes, thank God this happened. So that's why I think it's still a little bit higher. If any of that doesn't happen, if a Drew, if a John Rocker stays longer, if a Dale ends up staying longer, I think the season goes very differently um, for people. Mm -hmm. But definitely better on a binge than it is like watching like, I don't know how it ends. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, 
I think also this season that I was thinking about this today was uh, social media blackout for this season. So Survivor Kageon, that the cast was like all over Twitter being mm. uh, like uh, acting the fool. Uh, Tony and Cass and Spencer were like in Twitter feuds before the season started. We were like, oh, these people must have all gotten into a fight on the pre-jury trip because uh, why are they fighting? Because traditionally, the people who do well in the season don't like aren't messy on Twitter. They they don't want to <laughs> mess up their money. You know, that's for like the first the early uh, <laughs> boots in the season. That's what we mm-hmm. thought at the time. And then Kagian changed everything. But after Kagian, CBS shut down the social media. And so they would not let anybody from the cast be like tweeting about the season. And I kind of think that that hurt it also where I feel like yeah. that people did not get the chance to really like uh, get to hear as much from these people on social media as uh, some of the other people did from uh, Survivor Kagiyan. That makes so much sense. In hindsight, I always thought about it. Like, why is Survivor so quiet? <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. and imagine hearing from a Jeremy um, or Nadia or a Val. Uh, I think it would be so fun to like hear that on social media and be like, "What the hell are these people doing?" And then even yeah. Drew being like, "Look at me, I'm a damn fool." Yeah, yeah, it makes you root <laughs> for the characters if you see <laughs> your characters, uh, like yeah, in real life at least. And I can't speak to the audience, but I feel like uh, like to the people that are watching on TV, but at least the people like in our world, like I think that people did not feel as connected to this cast as some of the other casts uh, that had come before because they weren't so much on uh, social media. I forget there used to be some other stupid show that was on and the contestants would say that they were like tweeting about like a. Uh, something about Laura, the book of Laura, the adventures of Laura. And then they would like use that hashtag instead of uh, survivor. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what, that's what was going on in the, in the wow. fall of 2014. Okay. Um, Shanna Carroll says, uh, we saw both Jeremy and Kelly's true potential when they came back uh, without their loved ones. Is there anybody else who could fall into that category and, or, uh, improve uh, their I can't read uh, uh, likability like Baylor or, or Julie. Yeah. Um, so is there any other all star from this season that should come back besides Kelly? I mean, or Reed that you know, was anybody that didn't come back? Already? Oh, didn't sorry, uh, okay. yeah, Reed for sure, hands down, yeah, Reed, Reed. Baylor. I like Baylor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Baylor. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that Baylor is in the category of like a Julia Sokolowski, who I talked about last week, where they played so young. Um, it'd yeah. be interesting to see what Baylor could do as a twenty-seven-year-old, uh, as opposed to uh, a twenty-year-old. Even though I think that Julia Sokolowski uh, was probably a better player as a nineteen-year-old than Baylor was here in this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I Baylor, think Baylor won the challenge with her feet. That was that was pretty much the only thing she did. <laughs> But I think Baylor, yeah, maybe with like just a little bit more world experience that isn't like mm-hmm. her mom's world experience, I think maybe could have done better. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anybody else uh, who we would have liked to have seen. Uh, Wes, come back. I would like to see Wes back, but I, yes. I think he might be a pre merge boot, but I, I would want to see Wes back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the other interesting ones, I think, are probably like Val or Nadia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would love to see them back. I mean, that would be amazing if they just decided to bring back uh, some of these early boosts that never got the chance to shine. Mm -hmm. Can Val come back? Yeah, without Jeremy. I just want Val. I think Mm -hmm. she'd be really interesting. She was a good character, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Let's look at our survey for this week. Ooh. Of course, we'll be answering more questions on the patron feedback show uh, later on this weekend. All right. So let's get to our survey questions here from Survivor San Juan del Sur every week. Our listeners fill out the survey and tell us uh, what they think. Who is the season's MVP? Natalie. Come on. <laughs> The 80% yeah. for Natalie, <laughs> Keith Nail, 9%, oh. Jeremy, 3%. Oh, uh, no. Which one-time player would you like to see come back and play again? Nadia. Uh, Reed. Uh, it was Josh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Reed, edit. It's only Reed, yeah. Reed got nineteen percent. Jacqueline with a fifteen uh, percent. All right. What name on this season's cast list made you pause and think to yourself, "Wait, who is that?" Julie, so- I was just another call Justina. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Yeah, I'm like Justina. No, Julie, Julie is correct. Fifty eight percent. Drew Christie got ten percent. So Alex that's who Christie I was gonna 8%. vote for. I actually couldn't remember. I remembered the brothers as a whole, yes. like that they were derpy, but I don't know that I remembered derpy. them. Yeah. <laughs> <Separate. laughs> um. <laughs> all right. Most underrated player of the season. Who is it, Sasha? Reed. Reed. Um. I, I think I would agree with you, but the audience says Jacqueline, 30% for Jacqueline. Mm. Reed, 11%. Keith Mail had 10%. I don't know if Keith Mail's no. underrated. Yeah, please. No, he's as rated as he can. He is <laughs> properly <laughs> rated, <laughs> Keith Mail. Yes. Yeah. All right. The Kelly Wentworth Award for Best Pre-Merge Boot. Oh, my Uh-oh. God. <laughs> I want uh, Val who is to it? win. Is that crazy that I want the Val best? to win? Let me think about this. I guess. I mean, you feel like you should yeah. go with Kelly Whitworth, but I. I mean, of course. I'm gonna Besides go with Val. Kelly, I want Val. Yeah. <sighs> the winner of the Kelly Wentworth Award for Best Pre-Merge Boot goes to <laughs> Kelly Wentworth, seventy-one <71%. laughs> percent. Drew Christie at thirteen percent. Uh, Val. Got eight percent. Yeah, I'm kidding. Drew, well, we got eight. this season, people. Mm-hmm. Come on, you mm-hmm. got his right placement. Yeah, <laughs> would be wild if the audience went with Dale Wentworth. Uh, oh the- hell, <laughs> no! All right, so we <laughs> ask the audience every week: rank the winner from one to forty. One is the best. Forty is the worst. Uh, what do you think they kicked out as the average score for Natalie? Oh Seven. my god. Uh. Seven. Six, 16 or something like that. Okay. Uh, well, 16 is where it came in season wise. Uh, now it's going to finish a little bit above that 13.25. Now, uh, that would put her as the fifth highest average of uh, top five baby. So, Kim Spradlin, Yul Kwan, Rob Mariano, Tom Westman, Natalie Anderson. Uh, followed by Earl Cole, Sarah Lucina, John Cochran, Brian Heideck, Wendell. That's the top 10. So fifth best. That's not, not bad. A, not anything to sneeze at. I fifth like best that. for I'm now. At all. She's yeah. number one for me, but I'm t- mm-hmm. thinking like this audience. <laughs> I'm just so, curious. Yes. I, I, I'll ask later. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a very, I mean, very good company uh, to be with, uh, you know, right behind uh, Boston Rob and Tom Westman, uh, and then in between uh, Earl and Sarah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is Sandra place? Sandra, we have not talked not about either yet. of the seasons yeah. that oh. she has won. Oh, okay. So you guys were built. Oh, okay. These are only in the 25 seasons we've talked about so far. Okay. I hope, I'm hoping that she uh, keeps her, her placement. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah, good. I'm trying to think that. Um, I feel like that maybe Natalie's win. Um, wh- where do you think it compares to Sarah Lucina in uh Game Changers? Because I feel like that uh, there are some similarities there in sort of that they are uh, like uh, Sarah wasn't so much a pair, uh, but I feel like that she did. Uh, wh- and while she did have the legacy advantage at six, mm-hmm. I feel like that she wasn't necessarily like winning immunities or necessarily like uh you know uh playing idols or anything like that to get to the end i like natalie better because i think her odds were harder but i Mm -hmm. I do agree that i think that they were a little bit similar and that they were a little more self um Mm -hmm. than the others but i still think that natalie you know was like going against all odds and you know it was like her like watching a hurdle race whereas mm-hmm. i think sarah was a marathon so yeah, i think sarah, was nobody hard. was like looking for like sarah never got like knocked down to the exactly. mat like natalie did in this game yeah mm-hmm. all right do you feel like the season was too high too low or just right we asked the audience yeah i'm trying to think for the audience not for me i think audience is saying too high Oh, yeah. they're wrong. They're wrong, but they are too high. Or maybe just right. Ooh. 
No, I go. think just right, but I think uh, audience. I yeah. think too low, but okay. The audience says it's just right. Thirty-eight uh, percent uh, said just right. Thirty-one uh, percent said too low. Twenty-nine percent said too high. Wow. As far okay. as Ooh. as far as my personal rewatchability rankings go. That the, I I did enjoy my rewatch, but I, I I don't think that this is the best season uh, that I've watched here in mm. in uh, twenty twenty one. Uh, I think actually the the two seasons that I've watched uh, since I've uh, completed my move, I think I would still have ahead of it Palau and Korong. So I, I to me, I feel like that this season and Gabon do have a lot in common. And I think this season is better than Gabon because it has a much better winner. And so while it shares some similar DNA with Gabon, like it's a definitely a better story and a better outcome. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have it ahead of Gabon. And it really comes down to between this and uh, uh, I have Guatemala third. So I, I will slot San Juan del Sur ahead of Guatemala, but behind Palau and Corong, uh, which I watched oh, the last two weeks. So it is number three on my list of seasons that I have watched so far here in 2021. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's coming up next. All right. Prediction time. All right. Josh, before we came on, you said you had a prediction for what's going to be next. I do. What is going to be the 15th best season that I will talk about on Saturday? We're in top 15. There's 40 seasons. Top, top 15. 15. All seasons are great. All, All seasons. seasons are great <laughs> yes. at this point. So what's just better? I feel, for my at least, watching-wise, I did watch this season and assumed that there could be a lot more to this season. But overall, I was still happy, satisfied, and thought it was a great season. And it hasn't been called out yet, so I'm saying winners at war. Winners at war. Okay. Sasha, what is the 15th best season? I cannot believe San Juan del Sur is under this season. I'm really angry, even though the winner is fine of the season two. But Millennials versus Gen X. Millennials Come on Gen X. down. Okay. It's the 15th best season. Okay. The audience said that they think it's going to be Survivor Panama. Oh, my God. Oh, oh interesting. Millennials okay. versus Gen X is just going up, man. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Uh, the fifteenth best season of Survivor. I will be talking about it this Saturday night. A Saturday night uh, <laughs> rewatch. Okay, here we go. The fifteenth best season of Survivor is <laughs> Panama. Yes. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Survivor wow. Exile Island. So. I will be uh, on Saturday night talking about it again. We're in the we're in the hurry up. Only five days from now, I will be talking about another season of Survivor. Uh, Jess Sterling and Lindsay Wilson will be back on the recap to talk about the fifteenth best season of Survivor. Unless Shane Powers uh, comes to my uh, crappy apartment and murders me before then, <laughs> because you voted his season too low. Shane, I'm sorry. I didn't vote. It was a fan vote. The fans voted. I had nothing to do with this. Okay. (laughs) All right. So with that in mind, uh, we'll be back on Saturday to talk about everything else uh, that's going on. Uh, Let me tell you a little bit about what's coming up here on Rob as a podcast. Uh, We mentioned nail mails. Uh, Here we go. Wes and Keith talking with T-Bird. You're going to hear that on Thursday. So be on the lookout for that in the survivor podcast feed uh this weekend we had a uh, great special presentation uh that was put together by matt scott uh we called it the black voices of rhap there were three separate panels that matt scott did talking about the uh past present and future of black representation both uh on screen and in the podcast coverage uh it's a excellent podcast to check out i did a intro uh, with Matt. And then there were also uh, different uh, interstitials along the way of different uh, people who were not featured on the panels. I highly recommend that you check out our Black Voices of RHAP special. And thanks again to Matt Scott, who did an incredible job uh, putting all that together. Very powerful. Thank you, Matt. 
a great yeah. podcast. It was amazing, honestly. honestly. Yes, and 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 yeah, and Sasha, uh, you and uh, Kevin uh, really uh, were the inspiration uh, behind that uh, for the Asian representation panel uh, that uh, you both did uh, last month. Thank you. Yeah, it was just again so beautiful, powerful to be able to do that because. It's crazy, right? There were two of us on that panel and there's so many on this one. Um, so it's just, again, it's powerful and beautiful to see just so many people, uh, black indigenous and people of color, like being up here. Um, so again, thank you, Rob. And, you know, thanks to the listeners, you know, that are just constantly pushing us up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's just, honestly, this is all very important. It's always been important to us as people, as watchers of just listening to voices. So giving us an opportunity to also share our opinions and stories means a lot and it means a lot for our future. So we're keep on moving. Let's keep on pushing you guys. There's so many more voices out there that maybe yes. are shy right now, but join and continue to talk. Your voice is very important. And you're not alone. Like mm -hmm. people that look like you were talking now um, up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Josh, especially to hear your story of uh, that listening to the show from all the way back in, uh, you know, t uh, 2014 when San Juan del Sur is airing. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I hadn't uh, like always gotten feedback from uh, from from different people who like weren't the, the typical people that I was hearing from. Uh, just, you know, really cool to like know you were out there and listening during uh, like all, all, all so far back. Yeah, it's an honor. It's very much an honor just even sitting here talking about it eight years later. I don't know how many years, but so many <laughs> years later. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just so crazy. Yeah. And of course, uh, we have uh, so much more going on over on Rob as a podcast, including our 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. Sasha, are you keeping up with uh Oh, this you know yeah. it. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> These oh, two, it. man. I love oh, it God. so much. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been so much fun. Uh, catch uh, Puya and I talking about uh, what's going on over on 90 Day Fiance. Happily ever after. I talked to the tabulator uh, about who done it. Uh, Chappelle and I uh, got to see. Chappelle had never seen who done it before. Uh, it was a lot of fun <laughs> to get Chappelle to see what was going on over on who done it. With Giles. I thought that's uh, a who donut. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Uh, I was like, who donut? Who donut? Yeah. <laughs> Why is there a knife uh, and a donut? Be, up, be on the lookout on Wednesday uh, when uh, Kirsten McInnes and I are going to talk about the season premiere of Netflix's uh, Too Hot to Handle. Uh, should be a lot of fun to get back talking about the hot dummies on an island who are not allowed to touch each other. Uh, check that out <laughs> on Wednesday. Uh, we'll talk about that. Also, uh, I got the chance to talk with Bryce on the Purple Pants podcast uh, this weekend. And he uh, we talked about the season premiere of Love After Lockup. Wow. Do you watch that one, Sasha? Oh, you know. Come on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, Trash uh, TV yes, is yes. Me. Got it. So be able to look up for that on the Purple Pants podcast. Of course, uh, we've got a ton of stuff going on. We're going to be doing our patron orientation every month. We do a special night where we talk with the patrons who have come on board, whether it was this month or uh, last couple of months. And we're going to walk you through how to access all of your benefits. Head on over. Uh, we're going to send out the invitation Sunday night. We're going to do that Sunday night around, uh, I think, uh, uh, 6 Eastern. Uh, we're going to do a Sunday edition of patron orientation uh, for our newest patrons. Uh, robswebsite.com slash patron to get access to our patron podcast feed. We're going to do our patron cast uh, next week that we do at the end of the month. Uh, robswebsite.com slash patron, of course. You can go to robswebsite.com slash offers to see all of the sponsors of the podcast and all of the promo codes that they have to save you some money and support the podcast. And of course, you could subscribe to our channel on YouTube as you uh, get ready for any other content, Survivor Big Brother, we're dropping on you. You can get notified anytime by clicking the bell on YouTube and be sure to subscribe and check out our social media where you could be seeing Sasha take <laughs> over the RJP Instagram and a day in the life Sasha Joseph. Yes, Sasha. Sasha, tell people what they're going to see. Yeah, you know, you saw me just talk a lot about um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, actually. Don't know how I got so many questions about that. And then we talked a little bit about snacks and Oklahoma football, of course, which is, I feel like, my brand. So we talked a little bit about everything. So go check that out 
on the Instagram. Okay. Oh gosh. All right. Um, Sasha, oh what, do you have, what do you have coming up podcast wise? Yeah, you can find me um, on Twitter at funsize underscore oh four, and uh, I am on Silent Podcast with two other RHAP class of twenty twenty people, and um, I cover uh, after you're done. Obviously, watching Mike and Shannon uh, come over, we're wa- uh, covering Survivor South Africa with actually an RHAP patron, Jason Orch. So we're on there together talking about Survivor South Africa. Okay. I mm-hmm. uh, haven't uh, caught uh, episode three yet. I have to catch up. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. Again, just international reality. Again, coldest take of life, but it's so much better than US ones, Ooh. I feel. Like they're casting, you know, the way they like move. I just, Circle has been amazing. Survivor yeah. South Africa was amazing, like internationally. So, mm-hmm. absolutely. They're bringing it. Okay. All right. Well, Sasha, thank you so much for being back with us here on The Countdown. Thank you so much for having me. My, Believe it or not, um, on my birthday, so June 26th, I submitted my video to you for like class of 2020. And now a year later, here we are. Here we are. It just, it's, I'm so grateful to be here. And, you know, just thank you for selecting me. It's always fun to have you on the podcast, Sasha. So thank you for all the hard work. And uh, Josh, thank you for making your debut on The Countdown. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for especially for this season. This season's meant so much to me watching it up as a kid. It kind of triggered everything for Survivor for me. And to ultimately end up being here where like my journey kind of started just watching uh back then as a kid. It, it, it's almost so surreal to me that I haven't even kind of like sat and realized what just happened. So it's it's awesome. Yeah. Well, this was a fun one. Uh really looking forward to Talking about uh, San Juan del Sur one more time on Friday on the Patreon Feedback Show. And then we will turn the page to the top 15 as we get into Survivor Panama this weekend. So uh, thanks again for uh, listening to all of this. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.